Hello and welcome to the deepest dive on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Part 4. This is the best, most thorough discussion about the game. And in this discussion, we're covering everything in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth from Chapter 9 through Chapter 11. As God is my witness, we will not spoil anything beyond Chapter 11 in this discussion. And we also won't be spoiling anything from the original Final Fantasy VII in this discussion past this section if you've never played the original. Yeah. But my name is Ben Hansen, joined by Ross, the Star Wars Guy Fund. Hey, I got two legs over here. <laughs> we're joined by old Ronnie. <laughs> Hello. And we're joined by the lack of Grant. Uh, okay, here's the full scoop, everybody. The reason... This has been what I was calling a, a black diamond to schedule for this deepest yeah. dive is because we were on a ticking clock because dear old friend Grant uh, is having a rebirth of his own. Uh, he had a baby on the way and the baby said hello early. <laughs> so, a pre-birth. It's a bit of a pre-birth, but yeah. a healthy pre-birth yes. is I guess what we'd call this Final Fantasy VII event. So congratulations uh, to Grant and the whole damn family. A beautiful baby girl. Yeah. And and. Can you get this? He said, no, I don't want to come do it anymore. <laughs> and I said, dude, come on. Chapter yeah. 10, come on, chapter 10. Yeah, you Seto. got pretty pissed. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was outrageous. No, we yeah. knew this was coming up the whole time. So uh, send some love to Grant in the comments. Uh, for the next discussion where we're covering everything else in the game, we're going to be collecting your comments over on Patreon on April 10th. So patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. You jump in at even that $2 tier. You help support uh, these types of long form discussions directly and you can submit your comments for everything else in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the rest of the chapters here. And the point is for that discussion, we're going to rope in a fourth. But because of this one, oh, we yeah. don't want anybody that's already beaten the game because we don't want them to accidentally spoil stuff and we, want to, we love how ignorant we are uh, at this exact moment. Uh, so get ready for a fourth chair, a mystery fourth chair uh, for the next episode of The Deepest Dive. But how you feeling, Ronnie? Good. Do you know who it is, actually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. So it's a mystery to us. Yeah, but yeah, I do, okay, but okay, okay, okay. the one thing I've learned from scheduling and managing MinMax stuff is it could it could things shift around yeah. we will yeah, get somebody in that here. fourth chair yeah, i got it yeah as god is my witness and it's yeah. there's 95 percent chance it's going to be somebody else and if that person drops out five percent chance we go begging to somebody and if that person <laughs> drops out then we go to grant's new baby girl who said, did, you, <laughs> did you play final Fantasy seven yet it's freaking amazing come check it out uh so this is the best most thorough discussion about chapters 9 through 11 of final fantasy 7 rebirth on the internet this conversation is directly brought to you by people who support min max on patreon at patreon.com slash min max with two ends we're going to be reading i would say hundreds of comments um and those are all coming from people on patreon they submitted their comments over Ooh, there boy. on patreon that's where we're getting all this great insight on uh and if you're watching this and you say what are these idiots doing why aren't they talking about this obvious thing uh you can fix that you can write in about any topic you want for the next discussion and on patreon.com slash minmax with two ends april 10th we'll be collecting all those and here's the thing if you're seeing the length of this youtube video and you want to unlock the podcast version of this youtube video and also in that podcast version which is exclusive to five dollar supporters you will get the extended version of this discussion where we're going to unpack the original Final Fantasy VII a little bit. We're going to talk about these chapters through the lens of the original Final Fantasy VII. So if you want that discussion, they're saying, how are they not talking about this? Did they not play the original? These fake-ass gamer boys. We're not. We're just trying to preserve as much as possible for people playing Seven remake and rebirth for the first time so again for that extended spoiler filled conversation on the original final fantasy 7 you can unlock the podcast version of this discussion at the five dollar tier on patreon okay we got a we got a comment yeah. here before we jump into the, a lot of things here um okay uh john writes in and says this game is big um, really big and then says hashtag still in chapter seven nothing wrong with that we support that um this chunk was huge we had a dear friend of the show jacob geller kind of map out our chapters and schedules for the deepest dive and he's done an amazing job yeah chapters 9 through 11 we went into it and be like three chapters only three it's Freaking, gonna be easy this is a piece of cake yeah these are three open world chapters um i don't know about you guys i went from my hour count at the end of chapter eight was 42 hours 
My hour count now is over 83 hours. So okay. almost okay. double the amount of playtime just from chapters 9 through 11 yeah. doing everything in these chapters. Yeah, I went from something like 60 to 99, I believe. 99. Wow. Yeah. Does, it, does it stop? Does it say no more? We're not going to... It says, hey, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went Find from... Find a bench and sit on it. It was like four... <laughs> with a cushion. Yes. With a Find cushion. a bench and sit on it. With a cushion. With a cushion. Yes. I went from forty. <laughs> I went from from forty two, forty four, probably to seventy seven. Okay. So wow. Uh, yeah. There's a lot here. Uh, Part of it is that chapter nine, the first one we do, has two open world areas. In I know. It, essentially, you're still doing stuff. Yeah, in the desert region. Yep. And then it's, it's your like, first opportunity to do all the coral <sighs> desert. Right. Yeah. And then how? What was the feeling like when you cross that stream? in the buggy and yeah. then you're like oh look at all those towers <laughs> i'll be damned yeah uh it was it was excitement for a lot of reasons uh in gaga in gaga because i was very excited to unpack all that stuff but i was more you know in the desert area i was more struck by like god there's still i think two things on the whole intel report card that i haven't filed in what am i missing here am i blowing it turns out you can't complete that region until you move on then you can go back which is a very yeah. weird thing but we still can't by the point of the game that we are at right now correct i think now because it's can two go more back. proto relic yes i think now we can go okay. back hopefully wow. uh because i pop back over there a couple times in the yeah. new chapters and i was like is Chadley gonna let me do this or is he gonna keep gatekeeping me here? Please. Mm. There's a lot of gatekeeping happening in this <laughs> section and that's why we don't want to be gatekeepers here at Min Max. So everybody's welcome even if you haven't played the original Final Fantasy 7 to, to enjoy this game. Um, huge huge damn chunk of world to digest here. I huge. just I kept thinking about it's like god we're so spoiled like all I've wanted being a huge fan of Final Fantasy 7 is to be able to like soak in this world relate to these characters more and more and it's like you want that. Chapters 9 through 11 are for you because you are feeling like you're living with these people. And like having these all back to back, I think structurally we can talk about kind of the specifics of that. But I feel like I could have used a Mithril Mines in there or something because sure. even though I love this and I love just having big sections of like, I'm going to sit back and relax, just check off stuff, stuff in the open world. I'll still be delighted on a regular basis. And I'm still loving the combat. Um, but there was like, I think going from 10 to 11, when I saw like, Hey, here's some open world like dudes. Why don't you go catch a chocobo? It's at Nibelheim. I was like, sweet Jesus. I can't right now. <laughs> I need to beeline some main, main story stuff. Just flush that on my system a little bit before yeah. I get back to now I'll go on a big flying water chocobo and do some of the more, uh, more mindless, uh, open world stuff. I yeah. will say it was very encouraging. You get to the Nibelheim region and, the number of dots you have to fill are yes. less than yes. the other ones. I'm right. like, oh, this is going to be oh, a cinch. I is. can knock that out. Yeah. Okay. There's like uh, three, maybe fewer um, oh, battles you have to fight with, uh, sure. with yeah. the special enemies. And then, yeah. Okay. Maybe a couple less towers. And yeah. You know, at the end of the day, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, guys, I've had to sum it all up. It's kind of about just fiends and friends. You know what I mean? <laughs> Keep your... Can we cut that? Friends close, but your fiends closer? Yeah, we can cut that. Hey, what do you guys think is the most common comment? Patreon.com slash minmax and two ends. People submitted comments about hundreds of things. Everybody had some very wise thoughts. Thank you, everybody, for getting specific, making this conversation much better because of your support. What do you think was the most frequently submitted topic? I've got one. I think it is um, Vincent. Vincent is awesome. Ooh, okay. He's here. He's got a cool boss fight. Okay. That's my right, to, talking about that boss fight. My God, uh, I'm gonna say it was Red Thirteen's voice. Red Thirteen's voice coming in at number two. Ah! Ooh. Let's see a lot, a lot of different comments, but Boogie and Hawkins voice <laughs> <laughs> number one by mouth. Is it Tifa in the live stream? Then Tifa in the live stream was big. Okay. Yeah, good. not number one. Okay. Uh, mm. Number one. Let's see. Uh, I think uh, I'll help you out with a little. Ooh, yeah, it, give me a hint. Number one. Is it? Uh, Walking behind the slow moving black cloaks <laughs> for the proto relic mission. Nope. Uh, okay. Number one, 
Kate Sith boxes. <laughs> People oh, have a lot of okay. thoughts about the Kate Sith box scenario. Uh, Overwhelmingly okay. positive, I would imagine. <laughs> People said, I've never experienced gameplay like this. Good. I yeah. thought that Bungie were the masters of game design, and then I played the Kate Sith boxes section. Look, we'll get to all that later on, but Me thanks too. everybody for submitting a, a ton of comments about all these things. Uh, chapter 9. We're in the buggy, baby. <laughs> Kicks off. It feels like a lifetime ago, right? <laughs> yeah, we're in the buggy. Okay. Yeah. Wheeling and dealing. We got some yeah. sweet guitar playing. Uh, Cloud oh. hops in that buggy. He cranks the CCR immediately every time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's it's such a weird animation of like it's very delicate for Cloud getting into and out of the buggy because he has to like shimmy past seats. Yeah, it's like what? right. Why are they slowing me down for this animation? Because then everyone else just like bram, just like ghost appears yeah, right. in the that's back true, seat. That's true. That's true. That's true. But still, I think it's fun to have like. <laughs> music specific to the vehicles you're in. I love just like the yeah. blast and buggy music. Yes. And then as you're going around here, uh, it starts off with, I understand critics of Rebirth will say this is a very damning way to start out uh, a chapter nine of the game, but just to have all the characters be like, wait, what are we doing? Where are we going? What? <laughs> oh, right. I know. Yes. What is I know, I know, happening I know, right, yes. right now? Yeah. yeah. So after the last four chapters, we talked about this, how it felt a little bit... Um, Meandering? Unfocused? Yes. Meandering. Meandering. Yeah, that's yeah. a good way. To have this one start out with saying, should we just go south? Or what <laughs> yeah. do you guys think? And like the best thing they have to go off is Barrett being like, it's further away from my hometown. Yeah. Sure, let's yeah. go south. And it's like, okay, well, we need something a little more concrete to go yeah, off of than that. Do we? Because <laughs> apparently we don't. And, well, then the and idea was, why don't you just get a fortune from Kate Sith? Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. mushrooms. Oh, I remember. There's a... Mako Reactor by old Mushroom Town Gungaga, which, Ronnie, I don't want to jump the gun too much on Gungaga, but the Mushroom yeah. Gungaga connection. Yeah. That has to be some Crisis Core stuff, because I went back and looked at, like, footage of Ooh, I'm the Gungaga wrong person again. to direct this question towards I know, then. no, but you had no association with Mushrooms and Gungaga before this, Absolutely right? not. No, 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 But no, now no. to have to be, like, the defining characteristic <laughs> of Zach's hometown I had more of an association odd. with Mushrooms and uh, Cosmo Canyon, because the Secret Forest is closer to mm. Cosmo Canyon. Or, yeah, Mog House. I thought well, it was an entire yeah. town, like a Mog Village type situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the mushrooms completely, completely new. Yeah, completely new. So good say, for me. Hey, Gungaga, good enough for me. Here we go. But first, there's some mopping up in Corral Desert if you yes. really want to uh, get out and about and do that. Also, Yuffie getting car sick in the front seat is very impressive. Sometimes That's yeah. some intense car sickness. It's, it's high sensitivity. Yeah. High sensitivity. Yeah. I feel like yeah. if you just run with Yuffie at times, she should she be gets like, a little ah! bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's queasy. I'm moving too fast. Everything that moves yeah. in this freaking game. Yeah. I have a, I have a really dumb question. I know we talked about this game for like 40 hours already or whatever. How are you guys running? Because this is the first section where I'm like, I think holding R2 is actually making my fingers a little bit sore because I'm doing it so much in the game. I switched to a good L3 run. How are you guys Oh, yeah. Hey, double tap R2. Double tap R2. Wait, that's really yeah. a thing? Tell me it's a thing. It's a bit, I, I think it's a I, thing, yeah. Really? I'm I haven't been doing that at all. <laughs> now, I know you can do it on Chocobos. You can go a little bit faster if you double tap parts. Yeah, you yep. get that little speed boost. Now, I there. don't know. But I'm on the Chocobo quite a bit. And I think that's kind of how my traversal has defaulted to on yes. the Chocobos. But in the Corel region, you can only ride the, I want to call it the yeah. Mako or the Mako because that's what it was in Mass Effect, right? Yeah, just the buggy. Yeah. The, yeah, the buggy. Yeah, the buggy is pretty satisfying. It doesn't get hung up on stuff no, a lot. Yeah, it's it, good. It worked. Yeah. It's a lot better than you the Mako it, from yeah. Mass Effect. If Cloud is squeezing by you, you know, he's being careful getting into the buggy. Yeah. Like the one person that you want to be careful getting into a buggy, like that's sliding past you, is the guy with a, a 250-pound sharp sword right right you know so he could move faster but he's trying he could to, move he faster. he's actually like being trim. quite considerate yeah. and everybody else is just like Ugh. Yeah, yeah i yeah. get it so this desert area the first area in the game i believe that we encounter the worms one yeah. of the most obnoxious enemies did you guys have any oh yeah uh frustrations with those guys there's a spe there's like a absolutely monster fighting uh, it's one of those, Intel yeah, Quest, where it's just like, don't get eaten. swallow you. Oh, yeah. And, right. Yeah, to uh, uh, accomplish that checkbox, you have to not get eaten. How right. many, one how of the many tougher, tries? How many tries? Do you have to four or five, Yeah, probably. I was going to say, I was probably about five. Yeah. yeah. I was more frustrated in the desert by, and they were in the last section too, but those like fish that jump out for like brief periods mm. of time. It's like, what am I supposed to be doing? I'm trying just to triple slash time it. Just yeah, like, what's my the fastest ones, move to try and stop those SOBs? It's, it's Barrett. 
Th- yeah, yeah. I, guess I that's mean, it. like, oh, okay. like really, it is. I I do find that the the enemies that like for whatever reason go underground or just like stop the flow of battle, where then you have all of your characters just kind of sitting around, being like, all right, three, two. One. All right, there they are again. Like that's something that f- that really I don't like. I don't like that. <laughs> that's don't make me do that. Uh, Doctor Ock wants to talk about the buggy. They say, "What does the buggy run on? Coal, gas, Mako? It feels extremely odd to roll up to a life spring and hear the gentle piano music paired with the roar of the engine. It's oh, neat to point. drive, but tonally, this gas guzzler feels like something Barrett would blow up on sight." I they mean, said was, something about how say, fuel efficient it was oh, because I felt the like they, they felt they had to justify it. Right. Why these eco terrorists would be riding around in a six wheel uh, SUV. Now, didn't they say that about the gold saucer? They in did. and of itself, like, didn't they say in the gold saucer where it's just like, well, once they realized that the gold saucer was like bleeding the planet ultimately dry, Dio as kind of a good guy had then he's now using less uh mako to run the gold saucer i think it's in one of those yeah, they said those, they like, were lore. cycling between the different Is mini reactors right. in corel because they were like if we have them all on it speeds up the desertification so oh, right. Sure, right. i, I yeah. love yes, that yes, little yes, yes. intel too of talking about the history of dio and this is like the good geeky stuff that he was the one who designed the shinra museum in remake right. in his Shinra HQ yes. and that was like his first big feat of architectural theme park t- style construction and then he moved uh, and built the gold saucer to try and rebuild that region after the Coral uh, Mako reactor exploded Yeah, so it was like an attempt to kind of like jumpstart that economy like let's put a, a stadium over in this rough part of town it's like okay <laughs> right. that's, that's some good backstory for much, Dio but yeah I mean, yeah, helicopters fly over it. Yes. Um, I feel like they just need a good cone of paint on some of those tents, and they might be good. Did you guys go back to that town much in this section? Yeah, I did whatever there was to do there. There was the bird quest, right? The birdhouse yes. one. Yep, we got to go uh, see the birdhouses. I I should have seen it coming. There's so many things here where it's like, okay, I should have known that there's a quest about Cloud Jr. here. Oh, right. But then, you know, every... Every time you've seen Cloud Jr., there's a little bit where, like, it kind of lands on Barrett's head. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, oh, is that, like, a cheeky nod to, like, that character from 13 or something landing on uh, that Saz. guy's head? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Um, but then I was like, oh, no, it's fun because as you go back in that town then, after you do the Cloud Jr. bird quest, like, the birds, like, follow Barrett around as you're running around the town. And, yeah, I mopped up. I think, was there the Chocobo Queen's Blood? competitor there or no i'm thinking of the dog later the, on there was the a chocobo is, you went up against and they said that that chocobo was is gonna going to go on tv against the dog, against yes. the dog. The dog. yeah, yeah very loved. specific i think the biggest thing in this area then is going to be uh the weird cactar houses they're so good <laughs> i love them <laughs> the yeah weird kid g stuff Yep. Uh, and then obviously there's some some bigger things going around. Yeah, uh, you guys notice Kid G's origin story was mentioned in the Gold Saucer. If you were hanging out at the theater, yeah, um, there's a little side area where there's like a holographic. Uh, projector and like a story being told and it's about Kid G. Really? Huh. Yeah. Okay. So like that's origin. actually the origin for that yeah. uh, freak of nature? Uh, yeah, we had a lot of thoughts on this. Uh, Hottie Fish wrote in and said, I fell almost out of my chair when that Sonic wannabe goblin character showed up in the Proto Relic side quest. When they only showed the shoes, I really thought it might be the blue hedgehog and I can't quite <laughs> say yet if I'm happy or sad that it wasn't him. Uh, Mitch writes in, What on earth is Kid G? Is this a goblin turned sentient protector of the planet? Why did we decide to only do part of the Proto Relic quest with this set? It's such a weird one in a game of weird ones. Yeah, Kid G is a goblin. He is yeah. a certified goblin. And that's just, uh, it was the 90s look back in the day. And now this is just like taking that general. Because, Ronnie, that goblin, that is the way they were l- designed in the original yeah, yeah, 97. Yeah, yeah. So goblin punch. Like, yep. yeah. yeah, so here we go. Now we got just one bona fide Kid G who. Like, I was so struck when they go up to the little cactar houses and stuff. And then, like, they're stuck doing, like, the cactar poses. I love that. But, like, Yuffie and Cloud are both, like, acting like it's this horrible thing. It's like, 
It's not doing. It just like freezes them for <laughs> yeah. a little while, just like yeah, enough yeah, to make seconds. a punchline and then moving yes. on. Yeah, yeah. But they're acting like it's this great. Everybody's tragedy. gonna laugh at me. Yeah. yeah, it's just a confusing note uh, to launch this entire thing with. How did that mini game go for you guys? It was a little tricky until I figured out the right ability to use with Yuffie. Yeah, yeah, I liked it as an idea of like changing characters. I overall in this game, I like when they challenge you of like, okay, you're just controlling one character now. We're right. kind of double checking just in case you're not doing a lot of the Shinra VR sequences and training and stuff like that. Let's challenge you to get to know these characters even better. And I feel like even though I use you do lot, appreciate that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I use Aerith a lot, like still doing those yes. little solo challenges. Like, OK, I'm rethinking their abilities in a different way. So, by the way, how do you uh, how do you fill up uh, Aerith's ATB? You just charge? don't actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I got no, serious got about wrong. Aerith after this after the last uh, recording we did. You did. Yeah, okay. Where there are a bunch of people who are like, maybe use her wards, her abil- special yes. ability that she has. So I figured it out yeah you start you, the first atb bar you use radiant ward yes that is the one that turns her little uh wispy battle things into lasers that fills up your atb bars way way faster oh my god okay. so you drop a not the one that's called ward atb ward right that's just for the party members <laughs> don't yeah. be naive dude <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and uh, so after kind of delving into that stuff and figuring it out, she's like in my party forever now because you can do huge damage it, with absurd, double casting. Absurd amount of uh, damage, spells. Yeah. yeah. It's sweet. Yeah, uh, James W. says, thanks to commenters on the previous episode for recommending Radiant Ward on Aerith, Ray, okay, the yeah. one that strengthens her basic attacks. I missed the weapon that taught that for a while. Now I can build her ATB at a functional rate and not dread every time the game makes me use her. Um, I do really appreciate that uh, in every, like every merchant, uh, you can always go back. If you miss a weapon, you can go back and uh, and just buy it. You're never missing out on a weapon. Ever. Well, you you are. Um, oh, like if they're from challenges and stuff. Mm, you know, yes. like I, right. there's, oh, a, there's no, that's, a UV that's weapon yep. with the chocobo flying thing in chapter yes, ten, and, and it's and actually like, very good. The weapon, very yeah. Good. I I just could not do it. I could not do that challenge. I'm like I <laughs> look, I'm doing all this stuff, but and I want are you, that are you playing a weapon with the box <laughs> breaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I I'd be ready to look up a YouTube walkthrough because I did that flying challenge a couple times, and I'm like. I'm literally not seeing any more rings here that I potentially could be hitting, I don't think. Oh, what okay. am I missing here? And out of all of the little mini games, I think those flying chocobos in Chapter 10 are my least favorite. Because really? I hate okay. not being able to like look around. Like I yeah, hate that having is the tough. camera like, that is true. just I did, awkwardly I did, yeah. high. It's yeah. like, oh my god! It's, yeah. just, it's just constraining in the worst feeling <laughs> it's way. It's also, if you are a person like me who always reverses flight controls, it's very Ooh. hard oh, to push right. down to dive instead yeah. of pushing up to dive right. on a flying thing i did uh max those challenges out though after you're kidding a lot me. of trying yeah nice, are you kidding man. i got that's, it i got it. that to me that blows my mind because the 99 first one hours. The, well yeah hours. i guess that's true the first one i, I saw that uv like you know you got a weapon for uv i'm like oh wait i have to do that and i and i did it it probably took me about like five tries to do it and then i saw like oh thank god like the next one was like you get some uh, cosmo canyon or uh, <laughs> cosmetite cosmetite and it's like okay well we're gonna skip past that one might so we interest you in earrings <laughs> I, I don't think so man no <laughs> but i appreciate so, it so yeah i i i was able to bow out of that one guilt-free the I, key with the last one is you gotta like if you're running low on like hang time you gotta turn around back to the uh, fans and blow yourself back up into the air wow yeah I think sometimes the game should blow itself with this type of mini game design. Uh, but uh, so last time we we're talking about prayer and pray, and like yep. I love using pray, and it's like, well, I ha- I use Aerith, and now we can buy it. Yeah, now we can buy it. I yep. can I use Aerith almost a majority of the time. Yeah, basically a majority of the time. I, I love using her, and I tried taking uh, pray and putting it on other characters, and I think it's also because of the way I've kind of boosted and uh, modified Aerith and stuff. But it's like pray just. It doesn't have the same impact if other people are using it. I feel like emotionally and actually I, I numerically, yeah. it's yeah. just like meh. It's the reason why Tifa has chakra, right? That's yep, exactly. exactly. And so, yep. like, I gotta give it back to to Aerith here. So yep. it's just I use prey so much that is my go to. Like, it's so nice. Basically, it's like having constant missed giga potions in your pocket at all times. Sure, you know? it's like it's just yeah. the handiest damn thing. Give this a try because I've I've done 
all of the Chadley VR battles except for two of them. Wow. And they get, Jeez. some oh of them gosh. get really hard. He's, he's getting more and more handsome by the minute. Yeah. I just, <laughs> just remember, 99 hours. <laughs> and Is it worth it for these looks? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so with my era thing, I've got Magnify and Cure with her. Oh, so you okay. can hit everybody wow. with a Cure okay. spell. Yeah, I got that on my class. That's smart. Yeah. Do you not do that, Ryan? Yeah, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have Magnify on? Fire? Lightning? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this guy, everybody! It's a Barrett. So, <laughs> you don't even use me. Magnifying Cure on Aerith. Oh, then, boy. Yeah. Uh, Prey, it took me a long time to move that off of Aerith, but I did. I moved it to Yuffie. Okay. Because once you've got her... Uh, you know, throwing her ninja star, staying far away. It's got the the right uh, element on it to yeah. hurt the enemy I you're fighting. Love that. Yeah. It's, okay. oh, she's the best character in the game. Yeah, yeah I think um, she is. Her actually. ATB yeah. bar just goes, brrr, yeah, and it fills fills up immediately. And you're like, what can I do with all this? Because you do doppelganger, that helps a lot. Yeah, oh my God, you do yeah. the occasional windstorm, yep. which you need in the uh, cactar mini game sure and then you've still got two bars of atv you might as well have prey on her healing everybody every 10 seconds Here, here's oh, an here's another Ross. uh oh, hot tip of, that i just yeah. found out uh <laughs> enemy skill you put enemy skill on her and give her plasma discharge every time that she gains an atv charge she just explodes with lightning as yes. well uh, it's nuts you guys are completely on top of it so Dan H writes in says I won't stand for the prayer slander from last episode always having prayer on Barrett and Yuffie is the reason I was able to finish remake and now rebirth without having to use potions or ethers Barrett and Yuffie are amazing at building ATB very quickly against any foe anywhere on the battlefield Barrett can build two almost instantly with overcharge yeah. and unlike magnified cure Prey benefits from the increased healing provided by the healing uh, Carcanet accessory. Mm-hmm. Who, um, on top who, of this, who wrote hang on, uh, Dan okay. H. On top of this, if Yuffie has a doppelganger out, it will cast a second weaker prayer whenever she does. Oh. Don't sleep on prayer, people. See that? Yep. That sounds like a person that uh, that that is probably going to go on to beat hard mode. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. But uh, not compared to Ryan D though, because they're also barking up the tree. You're interested in here, Ron? They say cool battle tip. Pair HP absorb with enemy skill and use plasma discharge at the beginning of battle. You'll auto gain a- HP every time your ATB bar fills. Ooh, wow. That is a really good idea, especially for some of these one-on-one cloud cool. fights that you run into, like in the, the arena below North Corel. Yeah. That would be very helpful. Because I do have enemy skill on cloud because he's up close and personal fighting. Um, and so it's helpful to have the plasma discharge on him as well as the, the wind one that gives him brave and faith. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm, I'm going to have to try this, this healing trick. There's a lot of, a lot of good combat tips. You want to keep rolling with this? seems oh, like yeah. a weird yeah. way to kick it off, but I like it. Red 13's watchers, uh, respite makes him a great heal slash tank and pairing Yuffie's ATP generating doppelganger with the prime material makes her a great evade slash healer. Yeah, I feel like Red 13, all of his abilities are just getting like better and better. You know, it's like, okay, well, I'll give him my haste yeah. materia. Then like, oh, maybe not. But he not. gives people haste. Yeah, I mean, he that, has that, that just absolutely. Red 13 feels like one of the most uh, like well fleshed out and, and sophisticated uh, uh, man. <laughs> men. <laughs> Boys. <laughs> yes. We'll get to it. <laughs> beasts uh to to control i i love uh uh fighting with red 13 yeah uh daigo umahara my first time doing 9999 damage was with an infinity's <laughs> end to defeat a certain character we'll talk about later while he was staggered um has anyone else gotten uh the the full full impact yet infinity's end that's that's the way it's done and i was yep. going to ask you guys when we were talking about weapons earlier last time you were like why would i get new weapon skills from these weapons i'm just going with the weapon i like are you doing it now because it's become more necessary to have the full it is embarrassing okay. that skills. i wasn't focusing on that as okay. much as yeah, i should have okay, been before yeah. and Grant, i'm not gonna i am not gonna throw myself uh, you know no i absolutely get all of those because they're fun they're, yes. it's it's a lot of fun to do that and yeah, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to just, like, do the skill two or three times. It's no. like, weapon yep. mastered. And it's a nice way to, like, force yourself to use a different party, too. Like, well, I got a new weapon for yeah. Tifa. I don't use Tifa as much as I should based on how cool she is. And then you use her for a little bit again, get that skill up. It's like, oh, I'm that's sorry. right. <laughs> what? Yes. What? what did... I hate to say it, like... Tifa has I fallen out Tifa. of my party as well uh, okay. in favor of Yuffie because Yuffie can just if you put speed on her too she can dodge roll yeah. away from almost anything including the worm uh eat the beloved yeah. worm yes. Are you taking, uh brumal worm brumal worm 
Uh, Bermel? No, I'm just doing like dodge roll. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, with uh, Do you ever use Bermel? Bermel I don't really. I haven't no? had okay. success with it, right. but I know what you're talking about. I've seen it. I, love, I have to scroll past it a lot. I'd love to see like a stat breakdown. I'm trying to think of like what game is a good version of this. I know there's one on the tip of my tongue. I was just like, I want to see percentages of like how often I've used each character. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I want to, what am I thinking of? Does is that it, like a, does it kind of do that on the, uh, party rearrange screen where I, it has the most used people on top and the, the least on the bottom? Does it? If you're re yeah. Reconfiguring, it kind of feels that way to me. Wow. Mm. That'd be kind of interesting to see. God, could, I, could somebody leave a God, comment I wonder for what Kate Sith would be? <laughs> uh, my main party, yeah. Aerith and Kate Seth. Is that that's, true? That's my Are you Is that true? Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, I, I, I would love to get some some tips from you for uh, uh, Kate Seth. Make him good uh, battle because <laughs> holy crap, um, he's funky, but he's a good funk. I love the funk. He, yeah, I feed on the funk. He, you feed on the funk. Yeah, absolutely. I well, we'll we'll get to this when we get to the box throwing. <laughs> Do you have the synergy domain. ability uh, unlocked for Aerith and Kate Sith, where she makes him grow to a giant size, oh, complete no. with like Mario Super Mushroom sound effect? No, oh, yeah. I love it. I ha- how do I not have that yet? Mm-hmm. Jesus. Uh, so Cosby writes in, says, how did they make Kate Sith so dang fun to play as? He was always my least used character back in the original game, but with Rebirth, every little thing about him is delightful. His animations, the options, how his base attack can just juggle weak enemies, the way his Moogle mecha can be used or ignored depending on how you want to go about things. I'm really hoping to let you have all your party members from the beginning in New Game Plus because he just became my favorite guy to use. My only complaint is that they compromised on his name's pronunciation. Also, they added the wrong seven character to Smash Ultimate. They should have added Kate Sith. <laughs> you know, Ryan McGinnis says, uh, Sup, Yuffie and Kate Sith fans. If you would have told me when I was 13 that they remake Final Fantasy VII in the future and you're going to absolutely love Yuffie and Kate Sith, I would have called you a candy-ass jabroni. But it's the truth. I'm a Yuffie now. You can still call me that. I'm a Sith Lord as well. Yuffie's doppelganger skill feels completely broken. Yeah, that is a fun combo as well, the Yuffie-Kate Sith, because if you summon the Moogle, jump off it, and then get the doppelganger in there as Yuffie, you like have a party of five. <laughs> oh, wow, like yeah, yeah. Chaotic yeah, yeah. running yeah. around. So Kate Sith was definitely, he was a bit of a grower, not a bit of a shower, because at first it's just like, well, it's a lot of kind of slow chance-based attacks. But I feel like yeah. as you've gone on with him, just more and more of those abilities are just, they're the most interesting, the strangest, like, hey, Moogle Mine, we're just going to, I love this entire Mine, place, yeah. but mine's ever Moogle Kaboom. Cool. Let's just have this thing when it dies, it's going to detonate and do a huge explosion. Also, Fortune Teller, like right when I got Kate Smith, Kate Smith, like this was still big money numbers for me. Like doing using the Fortune Teller attack, it was like regularly doing like twelve hundred damage. Like Jesus wow. Christ, man! And I think it's cool. I love that overall mm-hmm. for Kate Smith in this game, their approach of it's just it's just the cat, but yeah. you can summon. The, the giant Moogle. Moogle to run around. Like, yeah. I think that's a much cooler idea than having the big guy walk around all this time. And having that yeah. in combat, like, basically having the ability to summon in this guy whenever you want and it completely changes the way you're playing and then you can detach and he's also com- fighting with you. But then also on top of that, I feel like all these moves just get more and more interesting. Like, I love the one um, where you can, if you are riding the Moogle, you can choose to use uh, an ability from your summon that you have equipped, even if the summon isn't out. Mm, that's right. It's, like, it's such a cool oh, So just like, give him your best summon, and he can just be blowing out some, I don't know, Kujata moves at this point or whatever the hell. Like I think he's just really, really fun overall. Yeah, it, that'd be really helpful because summons have some of the most powerful uh, elemental attacks, I think. Yeah. So when you're fighting something that's uh, vulnerable, yeah, it seems like a good... I, I haven't u- been using him very much so I'll what's wrong with you guys you just <laughs> immediately bounced off and said no thanks yeah uh, I don't know it was actually in the Shinra Engine where uh, it was it was again it was I was having a tough time getting the ATB charges up to do a lot of damage I I, I was I found myself going into the abilities and, and using um, uh, Mog Kaboom yeah Kaboom uh, but it wasn't like it wasn't going off very much he has to and die it, I think before it goes off he has off. to die yeah so and, and that's the thing is like I, I just I probably was just not utilizing him very effectively and as a result like I, I just my initial impressions were to be a little bit like underwhelmed particularly because it's just like when we have like Yuffie and Tifa Barrett's Red 13 uh, who I feel like I, I can I can cloud obviously like be very good at in terms of just like atb charges um and just like all out 
damage. By the way, Ben, you, you said 1,200 damage is like big numbers. Well, it Just was use, chapter 9. I yeah, okay, I was going to say, like, check out Braver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, anyway. hey, how, do you, how do you spell that? <laughs> Honestly, I don't use Braver that much. That's okay. Basically, with cloud, it's like I'll triple slash or save up for triple slashes edge. and just sure focus yeah. thrush. Uh, focus. I love a yeah, good focus yeah. thrust. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, is very and helpful braver. when they're pressured. Yep. Uh, I feel like braver is just it takes so long to do the whole thing. You does gotta, a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is such an interesting thing for these games that like also Tifa's dive kick does just as much if not more than uh, Tifa's like still my favorite character. Really? She, oh, absolutely. Like she just obliterate stuff i i would like by the numbers yuffie probably does more damage i find um just using tifa's like unbridled strength and just i i'm, I'm kicking ass with her You're just dive I, kicking everybody just dive kicking everybody are or you using that, the, the star shower is that the name of it yeah um, i use that every once that in a does while. pretty good damage yeah. even when they're not staggered i found yeah it takes I, a while to get going though and and her stagger ability, which I have mapped to like L one circle, I can't remember what it, what it's called, but like where she dodges out of the way, the wind one. Uh, I don't know. I, I think okay. it's like, I think it's like the second one down okay. from dive kick. I can't remember what it's called. But. I feel like this is the section where you know doing all this stuff. I feel like in previous discussions, it was like you know, little little easier than remake. I, I feel like this is the yeah. section where it's like okay. Like starting we'll wrap to, it up here. He's yep. starting to starting to challenge me every once in a while. Like some yep. of these boss fights, like I'm not beating my head against a wall, but there are a couple where it's like, ooh, the right level of like, my characters are dying in the battle a lot, having to revive them, but we're still squeaking through. It's like that's the sweet spot I feel like for these combat. And like, I, I, the summons is where I'm really having a tough time. Like Alexander kicked my ass for mm. a very long time before yeah. I eventually went back. I still haven't beat Odin. Odin you, is one of the hardest battles I've beaten okay wow so sure what is like his three deal? down odin yeah yeah i mean like for me it was down? three yeah. down odin, odin. yeah, yeah I, have, like, I haven't gotten there yet so the idea yes, three down oh yeah he's, he's still really tough he's tough yeah. because the, he's like he's <laughs> the description is like he loves it when you dodge his attacks and you fight well but if you take too many of his hits he doesn't respect you so then he does this okay. instant kill move on the entire party yeah what well, so it, it becomes a uh a battle of you have to hit him with as many ATB moves as possible. And he's really good at dodging too. So like if you're using cloud, he's, you know, he's, you're missing him a lot of the time. What I had to do was use Yuffie. Um, of course the answer is Yuffie. It's everybody, always Yuffie. all the time. Yeah. You get those ATB charges filled up super fast because her ninja star will stick with him no matter where he's dodging or whatever. And then you hit him with whirlwind over and over and over again. Wow. Really? Yeah. Oh and man. You okay. just do that until he's staggered and then try to do as much damage as possible with cloud. Jesus. And, uh, and Aerith was the party I used for it. And, but it was, yeah, it was a skin of the teeth type of victory. Ross, what, what, what level is your party right now? Uh, geez, probably early forties. Early 40s? Okay. Maybe, yeah. maybe 44 yeah. at the okay. end of the chapter. Summer, yeah, that feels about right. I'm for 42 more. right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it makes, levels do make a big difference in this, I, I find. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm kind of noticing. By the way, like, I think that answers my question for you. Who is the most difficult fight that you've had so far? Odin. Yeah, I think Odin, of the ones I've beaten, there yeah. are two, so the two uh, Chadley battles that I have not beaten are... Um, Two of the biological intel ones, which are how you power up the enemy skill materia. Mm. Crap. There's yes. There's one that's called Headcase, where you have to fight a mind flare and two of the little self destructive yes. guys. And you have to kill the mind flare first. So you both have to um not let the self destructy guys wrap around you and blow up, because that fails the battle. And oh. you have to somehow stop your AI companions from hurting them and i haven't <laughs> quite figured out how to do that yet oh can, can you do it if you i, I th very elementary question here yeah. but if you lock onto an enemy does then like do your other companions that you're not controlling they don't okay. no they'll go for whoever is whoever. closest oh. i believe uh -oh. and i've tried to i've tried sleep because um dang you know if you made them fall asleep and then everybody was far enough away i think that would work but they're waking up too fast it's like it's like having a toddler in your house <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luciana wrote in about that exact fight he says it's basically impossible before one of your party members kills one of the smaller enemies yep. and I and I want to beat it but I refuse to bring myself down to Grant's level and put the game on easy mode <laughs> um, also Chadley rules 69 wrote in cool saying <laughs> 
<laughs> this person's got it made yeah. in the shades. Yeah. And, is anyone else getting auto-killed by Odin? I eventually figured it out, uh, but this was the first time I considered dropping the difficulty down to Grant level. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for the record, Grant's not playing on easy. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> I mean, he is by not being here, yeah. choosing to raise a baby instead. That's, That's ultimate right. life easy mode, I think, in some ways. Um, on, the, on the seven front... I haven't seen my kid in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love the again the descriptions for like the summons I'm such a sucker for that in these games talking about like you know Bahamut being partly responsible uh, I think for like you know the, mm. the Cosmo Canyon area but yeah. specifically it was when um, our dear friend Chadley was talking about Odin's sword that can like slice through anything it's like hmm. the sword is known to slice through anything it could even slice the time between seconds it's like that is the That's best cool, yeah. cool yes. fantasy yeah. stuff and then also the one that i loved is when you're first learning about alexander in chapter nine and chadley's like the biggest alexander fan he's like yeah. he's a giant robot and all he cares about is judgment sometimes I just want to meet up so bad because I want to do something a little naughty just so I can be <laughs> judged and get to meet Alexander. Like, what, the, what is going on with this child? Can I tell you a secret? <laughs> I'm a naughty cyborg <laughs> and I think I'm going to hell when I die. Can you guys remember that whole section? Yes. Where yeah. he asked Baron yes. if he's going to go to the live stream? It's like, it's like yeah. a scene out of AI. It's no. Like, <laughs> I felt bad for Chadley at that point. I was like, oh no, we... We can't have this conversation. My, my conclusion was like, absolutely not. You're going not going to that live stream because this planet's up. <laughs> no, you're going to hell. Right? Clearly is. But uh, but then Barry immediately was like, oh yeah, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Of yeah, course, yeah. of course, you're going to be. Isn't welcomed. that? I thought. Isn't that in Cosmo Canyon? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you think Barrett's just lying to him by telling him he's going to? Yes. Oh, big time. <laughs> but Barrett didn't like wink. Or anything. He didn't like take off his sunglasses and wink real quick at Cloud. Like it felt sincere coming from him. Barrett yeah. has a young child. He is accustomed to yeah, a yeah. pleasant life. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you talking about? Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, you want some community questions? Because boy, we got some. Do it up. Oh, you know what? We don't actually. We have even other different ones. He erased of, them all. Here we go. Sincerely, Eric. Yeah. Uh, says glad to be back on the Patreon. Thanks for support, Eric. Um, they say, so in chapter nine, I don't know if you guys got this conversation, but driving around in the buggy, Yuffie says something along the lines of, she's talking about clones. And she says, what if we had a hundred Barrett clones shooting all at once? Yep. And she says, and then Cloud says something, but I blacked it out due to Yuffie's next comment. Quote, unless we had a hundred Tifas, are you thinking about a hundred Tifas now, Cloud, with your dirty mind? Yeah. Or something like that? Uh, yeah. Yuffie calls Cloud a pervert. After well, yeah. Yuffie brings up the idea of there being a hundred Tifas and the yeah. clouds like a little bit quiet about yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really got painted into a corner on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, and his response back, you remember what his retort was? What does he say? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he does it later on when they're walking up and she's like, we can form a special squad. Yeah. And we can fight Shinner later on. He also oh, yeah, like, he's like, you need please to shut, shut up. your mouth, Yuffie. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, sincerely, Eric says, someone alert the Thirst Council. Hundred Tifas? That's way more than three fa. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, maybe I'm not enough of a sexual deviant, but. <laughs> yes, you are. That, hey, 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 <laughs> it was like, that idea of like, oh, you into this hot chick? How about 100, 100, 100, 100 of them? them. Like, uh, <laughs> they could that, all be not interested is, in is you. That yeah. sexier? <laughs> like, it's such a yeah, sexier exactly, note. Yeah. <laughs> but again, hey, you, internet. Teach me why that's sexier to have a hundred hot <laughs> chicks at once. Because it seems more terrifying. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Scott. <laughs> it's Scott, more terrifying. Scott Ballard. It's basically the end of Inside at that point. Oh, yeah. Scott Ballard wrote in, says, hey, Ronnie, I, too, have a small complaint about the gold saucer. Good. Overall, it looks awesome. I'm glad it's not gold. But in the original, <laughs> okay. they made it seem as though it towered above the region. It's obviously yeah. huge, but in some cutscenes and images from the original, it looked like it was like above the cloud line. And on the world wow. map, there was nothing around it, making it loom even larger. In Rebirth, I think the mountains encircling it on one side diminish its presence just a bit. I think just making the stem taller would change the feel a lot. Again, totally. small complaint. Gold Saucer still looks amazing. Yeah. I had that same thought, too. Of like, having that mountain right behind it, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's big. It just, yeah, yeah, it just looks like a... Another building, like like a uh, like an amusement park. I, I, I one always thing I thought, appreciate about it, yeah, is that I think it takes up the exact space it literally needs to in the game world. It's mm. not like you go to the gold saucer and you're right. in a pocket dimension where it's as big as it can be. Like right. it takes up the real estate on the map that it literally needs for all the different that's, areas. That's 
that's totally fair. I also think that you could you could do the same thing and make it just absolutely huge and just say like, oh, well, that's extra housing. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Right, right. Like, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot about this part. I'm talking about uh, silly moments with Yuffie. When Kid G is talking to you and he takes out his phone, he's like, hey, let me take down your contact info. It cuts to Yuffie Fun. and like with a flat face, she just goes, what? Oh, also... It's so bizarre when you go back to uh, Johnny's Inn. I think this is after like the Tonberry King fight when you return mm-hmm. that stuff. Yeah. And then he's renovating the inn and now it's called Johnny's Seaside Inn colon remake. Yes. Ah, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. This is good Ideal. stuff. The, they're nail on the tone. I love that you go back there and you you bring the crown to him. That's what he needs, right? Yeah. yeah. From, from the Tonberry King battle. And he's like, we're going to fix this up. They, you know, they do, they fix it up. And the clones are like, well, Johnny, we fixed up the hotel. Now we're ready to die. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like, no. I thought you were going to hang out here forever. But, yeah. I yeah. feel like this entire section is just, it's literally a series of characters just going, no, I guess like we got Barrett doing that. We have Cloud doing that. We have Red doing that. We got Johnny doing that. Like everyone's just screaming no yes. and screaming towards the heavens here. And if we want to talk about this Johnny Seaside Hotel a little bit, so the collecting all the little things you collect yeah. for beating the mini games to their I maximum yeah. degree give you a little tchotchke that you can keep in this museum Jesus and it's its own quest to help the hotel raise in star level this yeah. is really dangerous for me i'm like it is really dangerous. i need to help johnny i gotta i gotta finish all these things <sighs> I I it's, for johnny. It's, yeah. it's it's really dangerous and then they have that chest that's right there yeah. that is the most Red diabolical that is the most yes yeah exactly. it's like uh hey like, do you, you want to open this thing uh, there's only one way to do it. Uh, we have, I mean, the biggest thing, the coolest thing. Uh, Garrett Hullfish says, The comedic genius in this game continues to impress. I'm wandering the desert when a Sandman wannabe emerges from the ground. Before I have a moment to feel intimidated by his presence, he falls apart taking a single step. <laughs> After yeah. that initial scene, you periodically see him emerge in the distance only to fall apart yet again. <laughs> I love that. That cutscene where, yes. again, it's like, that is the coolest thing. Have It's my favorite thing in games, big thing roaming around an open world. Like, mm. it's not done all the time, but just because I love Shadow of the Colossus. Like, that is my favorite thing. Metal Gear Solid Five had it. It was a mm-hmm. if you remember that. Like, mm, it's, yeah. it's few and far between, but it's my favorite thing. And I love that you get this awesome, impressive, giant sand creature, but then, like, the first cutscene when he crumbles, you see I'm going down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hold it. <laughs> if you guys could just not look at me for a little bit, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gilgamesh... So is that, is that the idea? Is that's kind of Gilgamesh's yeah, spirit? That right. That's it later he's on. Lo- where, why he's or how he is looking around in the desert for the proto relic pieces. Okay. Yeah, which we now know because he's like the Gen, and he gets cut off or whatever, and it's obviously the Genji armor, uh, like classic Final Fantasy item slash oh. armor oh, across all these okay. games, like super powerful uh, items. So I still love all the weird Gilgamesh sequences. It feels like yeah. it's happening all the time now. It's like, oh yeah, and then we just go to that other dimension and fight Gilgamesh. But yeah. I do love too that it's like, I think it's Chadley that explains like, okay, this is this is happening in another universe. That's where you're going to. And they're all just like, okay, got it. Like, yep. This seems like Sounds a very good. important thing to comprehend in the world of Final Fantasy VII. Yes. Instead of just like, here's a weird transition screen, jump it back and forth. But I do love it too, that time that you went uh, to the other universe and Chadley like pops are like, I want to research you. And Gilgamesh is like, imposter. <laughs> it's like tries to kill Chadley. Just, Chadley just immediately annoys the hell out of Gilgamesh. <laughs> but every time, special power. Every time you fight him. him and every time you hear that big bridge music from Final Fantasy V, it's like, yep. this, is, this is the best version of that music that exists out here now. And it's one of the best Final Fantasy songs. Oh, yeah. It's so crazy to hear like a full fledged version of that when you're fighting him in Nibelheim. Uh, cause they had kind of a little backgroundy, you know, hinting at it type thing. Yeah. And then it comes in in full when you're fighting him and he's, and he's tough, you know, a little tougher in that battle. And I, I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. So is our assumption that whatever is, I mean, if, I guess if it's just multiple universes, it's multiple universes, right? Yeah. Um, or multiple dimensions, but do you guys put any stock in that idea that like there's a connection between Zach and what's happening with Gilgamesh? Not that they're literally bonded in some way, but just like, oh, if there are other dimensions, that's the same concept for both of those entities. I see what you're saying, but I think it's more of a coincidence in that Gilgamesh is kind of already established to be maybe the same character showing up in all these different games through, yeah. through like, you know, not important 
uh, dimensional travel, but like comedic dimensional travel and and the zach stuff it's is in important, the books right? they explain yeah. that it's very serious dimensional travel and goofy super dimensional travel uh-huh. uh as far as key wrote in they said upon killing the ton how would you pronounce that i should have in one second yeah, just run sverky yeah upon <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a villager in age of mythology. <laughs> Upon killing the Tonberry King, Chadley explains that by examining the king's biometrics, we can get a better understanding of Tonberry culture. He also just happens to have Tonberry, a Tonberry costume ready when we meet him in Dust Bowl. Did we just help Chadley usurp, usurp the Tonberry throne? And what will he use the power for? Look for the last times for her. We're not talking about Chadley on the deepest dive, please. I did like the little bit of lore, though. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I'm insulted that you're supporting us on Patreon. Is a bit of that. Um, no, but I did like a little bit of lore about how, like, this entire desert region used to be the Tonberry's kingdom. Yes, and right. Now yeah, we've yeah. kind of just taken it over. But way back in the day, who knows? Post Setra, pre Setra, this was the Tonberry's world, and now there's just like one king that we kill and give their throne to Johnny or their crown. Like it's so sad. Did you guys have a hard time getting that crown? Because I, I got the crappy one, and I was oh, like, okay. I hope this is good enough. I don't care. Take okay. It. What do you mean that you get the crappy one? Did you not see that as an option? There's a crappy one that he can drop, correct? Yes, but yeah. you steal the other one? You steal yeah. the other... Well, yeah, you like have to... I think you have to pressure him, maybe, and that knocks his crown off. And then you steal the crown. And then it's laying on the ground, and I kept running over it with Cloud, trying to pick it up like a piece of sage. Oh, sure. You, oh, that's right. not how it works. Yeah. You literally... <laughs> <laughs> you have to steal it. I was it. like, oh, it says steal. That means I probably have to yeah. literally use the command steal. I don't think I have steel equipped anybody i had Yuffie. to try it a couple yeah. times put steel on yuffie with luck up materia and stuff like that right and then i then i stole it when it was on the ground and yeah what do you think that gives you just a different thing on the shelf i'm trying to remember i bet it uh judging by our past failure to get the correct condor photo with tifa um <laughs> i bet it gives you more relationship points with Yuffie to get the oh, correct crown. Sure. Yeah. Because some of these Probably. side quests, when you finish them, if you don't do it fully, it doesn't give you the little gold icon. It's uh, like a less satisfying icon. Okay. Yeah. So that's really oh, I funny. I wish I didn't know that. In all these chunks, like what characters are responding positively to? Like is that yeah. whole section where <laughs> Red 13's like, hey, which mushroom's which, huh? <laughs> like uh this one is like ah good job and yeah like, yeah, wait, yeah he oh. cared like that boost yeah. our relationship with red because right. i can identify a mushroom yeah what the hell uh so heading over to gungaga yeah here we go uh i, I thought it was a smart idea to have like well you got the buddy hey, you can go anywhere hang on let me finish this brilliant thought okay um and then it's like well there's gonna be so much verticality and kind of a labyrinthian right set up here like it, you got to drop the buggy we need to give you a reason to get out of the buggy and so that yeah. design certainly makes sense now what's your hot thought what do you think about chadley <laughs> <laughs> let's relitigate let's, chadley let's just let's mm. let's let's burst the bubble here i feel like we have enough time um on our side here yeah uh to to formulate a thought on just like where we are with Chadley. And I know like it was like two podcasts ago. I said like, what if we just not talk about Chadley? Yeah. But and now then, I'm just like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of up. interested about where you guys are at with Chadley. Now, is it because of events in chapter 11 that made you suddenly interested in Chadley? I just want to know when Chadley's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I, Mr. Barrett, sir, I'm not going to die. You're going to go to hell, boy. Uh, first of all, I, I like the evolution of the relationship of my and Chadley and him looking down on my so much and my's like stop ignoring me yeah um but at the same time i i do think it is uncanny like i'm i'm grabbing every morsel of lore in rebirth but every mm. time my's talking for those fiend fights i could not be ignoring her harder you could quiz me on any one of those things and i could not tell you something every once in a while like i also think the game doesn't do her any favors in terms no, of just like no. giving her screen time yeah no 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 no. it's it's basically a zero unless chadley's going to be down for the count and then Maya has to come in and save Ooh, him that could be good i do think chadley's character <laughs> arc is that he learns to appreciate my unlike how so? hojo is uh dismissive of chadley yeah that's oh, true. I think I think that could be for sure. Uh, we did have somebody who wrote in about Chadley. Would you like no, to hear? No, you just hang on. You want what do you think thought? about? Yeah, what do you think about Chadley? Because you didn't I, answer the question of well, what people, you thought. People wrote in. <laughs> people have this, um, honestly, I yeah, like I gotta say, like just like where are your thoughts with with Chadley? What do you want from me? Um, 
don't love him. Okay. Don't hate him. Yeah. I get the vibe that he's the go-to punching bag for this game, where it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. I think it's, at times, this was the main thought I had, if I may, that I had about Chadley during this section, is I don't know why he has to be a physical boy if he's a if he's a <laughs> oh, like an ai like, why, like why, why why isn't he just a hologram the entire time that's a very good point yeah you know it, yeah. i think it would make more sense but it's it's final fantasy 7 nothing makes sense kid g is hanging out around here you know so it's like the idea kid g that, makes more sense the idea that like oh there's a perfectly recreated or created cyborg entity it's like whatever sure yeah. i guess it's fine but it was just during this, this section where there's so many like i'm a hologram that's also an ai and i'm perfect yeah. that feels like the right role for chadley over like I'm a little Pinocchio boy who came out of pod number seven over here. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think it's so that he can be in physical danger at some point. Right. And Ooh, that's exactly little, it. Yeah. Ronnie, do you want to know how I feel about Chadley? Yes, I do. I have Stockholm syndrome now. He's been holding me captive for a so, hundred hours. Yeah. And right. I've grown <laughs> just, to love my captor. Just red eyed and yeah. just like, uh, well, Sheck from New Zealand jumps ahead a little bit <laughs> for chapter 11 and says, The moment when Hojo infects Chadley really took me aback and made me reflect on all the stuff Chadley's actually done for the party. If something was to happen to him, the group would be stuffed. We'd lose world intel, combat trial materia, summons, proto relics, my. Let's not. Uh, uh, Sheck says, Let's not run the risk of taking Chadley for granted. That was a Grant and Ronnie reference. There. I like it. Uh, Say that again. There. Let's not run. Let's the not run the risk of taking Chadley for granted. Uh, sorry, you weren't in there, Ross. Uh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> uh, no, Who I wrote that? Uh, that's Shaq. Um, Shaq, we've run the risk of realizing <laughs> we've been taking Chadley for granted. That's exactly. It. I was confused about that cutscene. I I think it's fascinating. To have Hojo be like, oh, wait, I made this little freak that's helping out these guys. And now we just, he has a way, at least the implication from that cutscene is he can just look through the eyes of Chadley for everything. Like, he, they don't need no spy. Like, they're worried about Kaseth being a spy, but good lord. Like, it's just a camera cutting out of this little robot boy's head. And so that idea of him like, okay, well now I can inject is he injecting the physical body of like Chadley number six and that's affecting Chadley number seven? Is that what's happening there? I was like, is he like activating <laughs> a, a, a nega Chadley that's going to replace our Chadley at some oh, point? But I feel like Chadley's attitude changed. Crap, guys, did I bit. miss a chapter? <laughs> <laughs> I am. That's a side quest in 11. It, it's a, okay, chapter it's a side quest for in 11. Chadley. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw your fear. Oh, it makes you feel it's better. It's a proto relic uh, quest, right? Yes, okay, okay, okay. I did not do all of the proto relic. I, I did not do all of the side quests. guys are walking quests. so slowly. You, yeah. couldn't, you couldn't handle it. <laughs> Um, I get okay. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. My yeah. big takeaway from those cutscenes with Hojo realizing the Chadley and stuff is that Hojo is one of those maniacs <laughs> that mounts his screens at the very top of the mm. wall wherever he's at. <laughs> yeah. Totally yeah, yeah, yeah. psycho behavior. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. probably got motion smoothing on too. <laughs> <laughs> Chat is just convinced, and I think they're right that we will be fighting a Chadley at some point. It's going to be giant Mecha Robo Chadley. There's going to be some. Chadley build up encounter happening here. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty confident about that. As as okay, sure. Yeah. It's funny true. that you said Robo Chadley in because we already do have a Robo Chad, correct? We do, yeah. Which was so funny to have the thing of like, okay, here's a little Wally style robot here yeah. to introduce another mini game. And Chadley sees it for like four seconds, like, that's mine. Uh calling it Robo Chad. Like, he didn't design it, he didn't do anything. Yeah, he just like, named it. it. You're totally right. He just did a software update. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he did. I was like, Robo Chad, mine now. The iPhone, it's called the iHands now. Uh, come at me, Steve Jobs. Come at me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, White Max says, I'm still currently in the Gangaga jungle, and I can say that I've never been so pro deforestation in my life. <laughs> all kidding aside, this section is so rough to traverse that Chadley might yeah. have to eat my butt and not have all his data. Uh, Some of those things fair. are real hard to get to. Like you're like, yeah. I'm trying to make my way around to them, but you should have been going and finding a mushroom over the opposite direction. Yeah, did you like it because the really mushrooms tough. were kind of like springs in Sonic, and you're such a Sonic fiend? I love Sonic. You're like a Kid G level Sonic uh, fan, big, big time, big time. So bouncing off those <laughs> mushrooms is it pretty sweet to have in Final Fantasy VII now? Finally, um, it is one of those things where like I okay. Look, 
<laughs> you, you get to Cosmo Canyon, yeah, and you're gonna have a, a, a somewhat similar experience. But so they have introduced now verticality, yes, into uh, the world maps, and and sometimes it is a little bit frustrating. I find myself most frustrated by it when I'm trying to <laughs> when I'm trying to get from point A to point B, and and I think this. It's like a great reminder that like I'm enjoying this game most when I'm just adventuring. Yes, and I'm not trying to like progress and and get as much as I can done. Yeah, like when I'm you're just, when you're trying to hit those specific yeah. points on the map because there's so many things of like I'm looking at this map. This is right here. I don't know what elevation that's at. How I'm supposed to get to it. And exactly. what I, what I need, I think, is like Ubisoft style 3D map. If I could just see a 3D version of the terrain, I think like a more advanced version of like the Metroid Prime map. Yeah. And I could just see like, how is this actually connect? Okay, there's a cave going in through there. Yeah. Um, you because- need a Jedi Survivor map. Right, but I well, do- Jedi Survivor or either um, Tears, of the, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Just the, the shade in 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 oh, the, yeah. the, the landscape tells you what the altitude is. Yeah, and I think I was thinking about Zelda a lot in this section. Like I'm, I think we'd be complaining more if it was like, Okay, three more open world regions, and it's just run here, collect the thing. Like I like that they're kind of initiating a little bit more. Like okay, some verticality, some differentiation yep. for the different regions. And I thought of Zelda for the section too, of just like even chapter, yeah, chapter nine here for some of the other regions or the towers specifically. It's like okay, you can't just walk up to the tower anymore and be like okay, buttons on the bottom, buttons on the middle, buttons on the top. Now it's like little Zelda esque when you, Zelda esque when you got a tower. It's like okay, okay, this is. No way to get to that middle platform. How can I look around to try and find a way to get there? I think that's a yes. fun idea. It is a fun when idea. When you're checking off everything in Gagaga, I understand why we had a lot of people write it and be like, this Gagaga, sucked. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. I'm, I yeah. can't 100% this I stuff anymore. I understand it for sure. And it yeah. makes it makes the area more, area more beautiful. But, you know, I'm, I assume other people did things similar to what I did, which is not see that there is a rope hanging down from the tower uh, yeah, that yeah. I need to just climb up and get there yep. easily. Instead, I'm trying to get on a ridge and drop down. Yep. Or yep. I think overall, there are probably yep. like three different points on the map throughout this entire section of the game. Like these chapters where I had to look up like, how do I get to World Intel 5? Like, what am I missing here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but I did. I did like exploring the Gangaga region before I was trying to get everything checked off my list. But just like the basic idea of like just trying to get to the town, it's going to be not exactly a Metroid Rain or anything, but it's a little bit of like a puzzle area to navigate. And I actually thought that was cool. I really liked it. Um, but then ultimately it can be frustrating. I totally get it. Yeah. It really helps the, uh, you know, the idea that Gangaga is a remote area. Yeah, right. That's a very good point. Untouched right. by Shinra mostly. Yeah. And, they, they can't handle the mushroom rides. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just too much for Can't them. get there. Um, by the way, can Gaga have no memory of this in the original game? It's an optional side, boring, nothing town. Okay. You go there and Zach's parents are like, you heard of him? No. Okay. <laughs> that, that's pretty much it. You could go to the reactor in the original and um, Scarlet's there for like a beat. Mm. And that's really it. There's okay. not really much going on there. And it's funny to go back and look at like what they did for the reactor here, which is just incredible. Yeah. And go back and look at like that one frame of the reactor in the original and Scarlet walks up a path and walks back down it basically. That's <laughs> all that happens in the original. But you can completely skip the that's town a if you very want. Good, you have a very good memory. Bro. I went back and looked at the footage again. Because Grant okay. and I also just played that again. It's like, I just okay. need to double check this. Yeah. Is, there's a, it was like a, it's like a, uh, a cemetery, a very small cemetery. Yeah. A couple of, uh, uh, a couple of houses and just like as yeah, ex-parents oh, like wow. come back <laughs> no <laughs> is Cisne in the original at all great question so she is from crisis core i was gonna say me, i was like no uh yeah. but okay so okay. she she is, was cool i think yeah. she's got an awesome character design i, really? I might I, like, Ross, those, like i'm gonna tell you you're wrong <laughs> look i know crisis core fans tell me specifically what's me. wrong with Cisne's. i just felt like her design was a little flat. I was like, she looks kind of generic. I think she has cool, like the weird Turk backstory stuff I think is really cool. Yeah. But about like the design, like I need some more pizzazz, I need some pop here. It's not, but anyways, uh, you're talking it's about her arms. It's funny because yeah, she's like halfway between Final Fantasy seven and Jill from 16, where she's got like those poofy sleeves. Okay. Sort oh, of sure, on her yeah. arms. Yeah. Don't mention it, Jill. Cause Ronnie, he gets pretty hot and bothered. Just remembering just, that hot love relationship. Jill. <laughs> you, you and like Claude. a taciturn lady. Don't get him started. When he, honestly, if you saw his dating profile, taciturn, taciturn, taciturn. <laughs> 
<laughs> if your if your speech bubble is three dots, that's right. what I'm interested. Gender preference, taciturn. <laughs> Political <laughs> reference, taciturn. Google define taciturn. <laughs> <laughs> so Anthony L writes in and says, "It was so great to see Cisne. For those unfamiliar with Crisis Court, Ronnie, she was a Turk <laughs> and a close friend of Zach. The last time Cisne and Zach saw each other was in Gungaga, where Zach asked her to keep his parents' company, which she agreed to. Since she's not in the OG, many people wondered if and how she would be included in the remake trilogy. Mm. It seems she's fully embraced life in Gungaga and left her life as a Turk behind." <laughs> Despite starting a new life, her lingering connection to Zach and the fact that she never got closure on what happened to him uh, appears to really weigh on her. Mm. I do love the kind of the Zach adjacent elements happening in Gungaga. Like there's that side quest later where you're like training up Zach's childhood friend to be a fighter and stuff and like teaching him how to right. do like the, the, At the whole secret squat gym. move. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And Cloud's like, it's all in the glutes. You got to focus on the glutes when you're doing the Zach squat. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's really cute. Uh, but Cisne is back going to the jungle. I mean, the most important thing here, Thickeroni with cheese says the Gungaga jungle theme is fantastic. Isn't it? It's a it's Celtic so African fusion mm -hmm. theme with Irish bagpipes known as Yulian pipes, which is really cool as a wind instrument. And it gets all the air from a little bag that is pressed with the elbow. Oh, it's one cool. of the few wind instruments that don't require the player to blow into it with their mouth. Wow. Wow. Uh, th that's really cool this is that track of like the dun 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 like, I went back and listened to that so many times as I was going through questions just had it on loop I was blasting in the living room for my kid to pretend to dance to like <laughs> that track kills me it yep. just it, it has like a Baba Yetu feel from Civ yeah, 4 yeah yeah you know okay, what I mean good, yes okay. exactly it's a real high point for the soundtrack in this game yeah uh and the Cosmo Canyon theme, a real low point for me. Ooh. It really, I got so tired of it Ooh, in we'll a way that it. I have not of any other of the world <coughs> themes. Oh, I thought Ryan was going to take a swing at you. Um, uh, <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> now, hang on. Well, here's the thing. I actually, with, with the Gangaga um, music, I did like it. I, it was, I, I think I even sent you a text where just like, I can't wait for you to get there. Mm, yeah. Just like, have, you know, like, like, tell me what you think about, about the music. And I do find that, like, it just, like, happens every once in a while with, with some type of music where if it has, like, a, a, like a, a significant hook that my brain just kind of, like, latches onto every time that it's on, I pay attention to it. And it's that, that like, hey, yeah, uh, yeah, that part. <laughs> and now I've heard that 750 times. <laughs> and agree, after a while, enough. <laughs> I have to, like, at some point, I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're. I don't think it's that. I think it's you running around in circles. Like, how do I get on that? Yeah, and yeah. yeah. with this, hey, yeah, day. yeah. You know. <laughs> Aren't you having fun now? Hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. It Stop is. chanting it's, and point me in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew Valla says this is probably my own head cannon, but the Gangaga vocal track is what I imagine Aerith hears when she listens to the planet. The Gangaga <laughs> region's teeming with life and was once a Cetra settlement. The pure positivity and joy conveyed in that song is what I imagine the natural state of the planet would be without all this Shinra and Sephiroth nonsense mucking it up. No, I think they established pretty clearly in the original that the voice of the planet is... Hey, yeah, uh, yeah. Is Bugenhagen listening scream. patiently? <laughs> Screams. <laughs> it, it's like, don't you hear the planet cloud? It's crying out to you. And it just sounds like if you lit a man on fire as he's running down the street. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, put the seashell up to your ear, cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to save the planet. I don't like the planet. Uh, oh, man. Should we talk about this uh, scene with Zach's parents? Because I found that pretty interesting. Can we slow our roll? Let's slow it. Because we're going to enter this town gracefully one step at a time yeah all right alan d wants to talk about what we encounter before we get to the town which of course is dear friend Izzo. uh barrett, the chicken lady no we'll get to that alan d says barrett is gifted a new upgrade gun arm by the wonderful right, Izzo, yeah. but he doesn't even try it before awkwardly shuffling out the door what a jerk i i did like meeting that weird guy who's like my goal in life is to create the ultimate weapon. Yeah. Gotta do it. Um, <laughs> I felt like, I was kind of confused by that because I felt like Barrett was a little bit standoffish to this guy that was clearly passionate about like what he did. And every time, like just Barrett, everyone's almost just like, you're being kind of 
cavalier about all this <laughs> weapon stuff. <laughs> you know, he's like, well, it's my passion. I was like, well, okay. He, he just had this, you know what I mean? This, he like, should have been quality. like, great, you can help out my arm. You care about my gun arm? Yeah, Wonderful. exactly. And he even acknowledges that like, later on to Cloud. Like, like, usually people just like turn the other way when <laughs> they see my gun arm. And this guy s- seems clearly interested in helping me. Yet still, Barrett is just like a little bit standoffish and just kind of like, what's your, uh, what's your vibe there? Yeah, he is a little too familiar with him, with Barrett. I mean, I can see it? that if, if you are yeah. a person who has a disability and somebody's like, let me get a look at that thing. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I got kind of got that energy. From well, I wonder if it was also his opening gambit was like, what do you mean you're punching stuff with your arm? Like oh, you're right. hurting the beautiful construction of everything that's going on in this beautiful arm. Who made this? Tell me everything about it. And it I think it reminds him of Dine, so I think he's a little bit bummed mm, out because of that. Yeah. You know? sure. It did yep. make me wonder how those things are attached. Do they screw in? Or is it like a magnet? Yeah. You want it to be no, like it's hook's like a, hook from hook. No, like yeah, a little it's kind like, of... Yeah, it's... You took it in and then... In. Remember that scene in Hook? Yeah. When the... Yeah, it's just like... Just pirate like lady like puts the hook on hook and she's like uh, orgasming as yeah. she's doing did not have an impact on anybody remember that watching it hook. <laughs> yeah right could it go home and watch hook now that i think about it that tinder bio i think at the bottom it did say <laughs> i want somebody who looks at me the way hook servant lady <laughs> looks at him after hooking a hook on him and taciturn yes those were the two things <laughs> kyle d wrote in also moons bro wrote in about the same thing saying the section in gagaga is home to my biggest disappointment from the game where the heck is the heavy tank enemy from the OG game? A big missed opportunity for a Hell House style fight against a freaking dinosaur mounted on top of a tank. There's an enemy in the original in this section in Gagaga that's I literally don't that. it's a tank with a triceratops. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Riding on it? No, it's like fused it? with it. No, fused it's like it. it's a creature from hell. And they must be saving it. They must be saving it for part three. Because, like, if, yeah, if they're Could going be. above and beyond with Hell House and they don't just have heavy tank as a <laughs> random That's enemy a in here. good point. And I, I just remember, though, also, the motorcycle guys. Do you remember the motorcycle guys? Mm. They're right outside of Costa del Sol, too. No. Yeah. Oh, 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 yes, 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 I do. Yeah, I do, yeah, do, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It was, it's still fun to see. Like those enemies pop up in here, like oh the the, the turtle shell guys, like outside of yep. Cosmo Canyon. Like yep. I know those guys well, those SOBs. Or like I went back to look at the footage of the original. It's like oh even that flower that like grows over time, like has a different phases as it evolves. Yeah, it's like weak right. to ice. Like oh I forgot that that's in the original too. Like it's all it's I can't all remember that man. one actually. Yeah, no one remembers the flower, but they're there all right. Um, ooh, penguins. Wow, well, there's the penguins. There's the penguins. I do love the little penguin boys and the 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 ones that open up. That's Make right. little oh. ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Zach's parents. Yes. Yeah. Zach's parents. What would you think about that whole sequence? Yeah. So not remembering this, you know, area from the original game, I yeah. was like, what is Aerith doing? Who, who are these people? <laughs> and right. She goes to talk to them. They're very concerned about Zach's whereabouts, of course. And she's like, I'm sure I wasn't the only girl he loved or whatever. I was like, right. do you think Zach is like a ladies man of some sort? I was really confused by that entire exchange i think Aerith just felt bad about like oh i'm going in i'm reminding them about their dead son yeah yep and so i'm gonna play dumb because they're like oh are you the one woman who we always raved about and we see zach later on in this section being the one woman that Aerith that he you know right he was raving about was Aerith. yep and so that's so odd for her to be like, oh, no, I, he, he hoard around town. Okay, no, I, I, no, absolutely not. I, I think what she was just, she saw an opportunity. I, I feel like Aerith has very good social skills. And what she did was just like saw an opportunity to say, like, your son is very charming. That's what she said. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah. she was pivoting that. Yeah. But then she I, just yes, exactly. left. I was, yeah. I was surprised by like, certainly... At this point in the game, like plenty of glitch moments, like, you know, over 80 hours into this game, I feel like it is just scene after scene of Cloud being like, zzz, 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 and then right. yeah. or Sephiroth coming in saying one whispering thing to Cloud and leaving or showing robes. It's just that they get in again, again. That all being said, I was surprised that going into Zack's house that it was like, it just feels like an average side quest. You just kind of like walk in and Aerith is just like talking to Zack's parents. And like, yeah. eventually there is a little bit more of like, weird cloud stuff happening after uh, mm-hmm. that house but it feels like just like a casual side quest at first the way Aerith is talking it's, it's such a fascinating yeah. thing yeah and there there are a few humanizing moments for Aerith in this 
set of chapters that we did. And this is one because she talks about it afterwards. She was like, oh, you know, it was really hard to do, but, you know, I kind of wanted to uh, give them whatever I could sort of uh, is the impression I got from her. Give those parents like something. Right. And yeah. And that's, that was a nice moment. I did love cloud barging in there. And then one of the, the options you get to respond to them is forget about that loser. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're just, they're shocked. Uh, if you say they're like, <laughs> okay. what is going on? And cloud's like, Oh, they're dead. Forget about it. And then he's like, Argh. he has a little bit oh, of a, wow. a glitch about the whole thing, but yep, I didn't dare choose it. Okay. I, I did. I, just, I was just curious to see okay. how the whole thing would go. Um, and somebody wrote in about that exact thing. Um, Jonathan G says, by this point in the game, I'd been on a handful of dates with Aerith. Well, I'm a Tifa guy, so I knew I needed to course correct. This basically <laughs> resulted in me telling Aerith that she should feel guilty for talking to her dead boyfriend's parents. Jesus. And on top of that, her dead boyfriend is a loser. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I've won, but at what cost, says Jonathan G. <laughs> very cruel. Very, very yeah, yeah. cruel. Uh, another interesting point is that after that, after Cloud's like, I gotta go lie down or whatever he says to leave the situation. <laughs> yeah. Eric and Tifa. <laughs> what he typically says. Yeah. Exactly. Half down. the game, like, I gotta migrate, I gotta lay down, guys. Yeah. That's why I love him. Uh, <laughs> that Aerith and Tifa get together and it's like, it's clear that they've been chatting about this privately Yeah, because absolutely. they're like, Oh, so he doesn't know Zach then. Well, they're like, this I, confirms it. I love like how, while they're like playing up the relationship between Aerith and Tifa and right. just like how much they talk and how good friends they are. And, and Tifa is even like consoling Aerith, like as clouds, like, I gotta go like glitching his way down the street <laughs> that you can actually see Tifa like come up to, to Aerith and like hold her a little bit like it's yeah. really it's, it's true it's really sweet I gotta um, go but it is interesting that you know <laughs> <laughs> that Aerith is talking to to Cloud and she's like you remember me talking about my old boyfriend Zach and yeah. it was so prime for Cloud to be like who are you talking about no but yeah. he's like yeah I remember that mm -hmm. Whereas, but in remake when she is talking about Zach like she doesn't you don't actually get to hear her say Zach it like glitches oh, really? out and it mutes her but you can oh. see her mouth say Zach yeah um, oh. in that moment so it's just that Zach's like yeah yeah I remember Zach yeah yeah, yeah. it's like oh okay wow um and then did, did yeah, you so, go so, back and look at that footage what's from the original or yeah. from remake yeah no no I remember that that scene in the Dang. Okay. Oh, I, yeah, I, I've yeah. been thinking about the no. game for four years. Yeah. But uh, yes, but Ross, you're <laughs> right. Game. So so Aerith and Tifa are talking about it, and Aerith is like, yeah, cleared it up. He doesn't know who Zach is. I'm like, okay, that's all right. Yeah. Moving ahead. Like, mm -hmm. but I love that they're they're running they're both running experiments on Cloud very It'll, patiently. Yes, and I think it's a yes. really fun idea of like Tifa pushing and be like, okay, well, I'm just checking. And then it's fun and it it's also like, I don't know, it's like it's a little bit spooky in a way. Yeah, I don't like there's just this weird like they're looking at Cloud as obviously like a, a pretty broken human being. And I, I just part of me wonders if like, is there going to be a moment where Cloud's just gonna be like, I get now how you guys have been treating me or how you guys have been looking at me as like something other than just like another like a friend or just like a part of this this party. Like if he's gonna going to become wise to the fact that both Tifa and Aerith have not been totally transparent with him. Yeah. I think he knows that. It definitely feels I that I don't know way. if he has. But I think it ties into it later. And just to jump ahead for, just for this one check, section, but then in chapter 11, you get a little bit more of that with Tifa where Cloud's like, oh, I remember Zach. Zach was my friend. Like, he was on that mission going yeah. to the reactor And here. part of the reason why I, I, I bring that up specifically is when I... That's kind of the moment where you start to see Tifa a little bit more almost, like, actively... It, it It's not that she's Messing being... Messing with him? Not, like, just a little bit more actively deceptive and just, like... Yeah on what she knows versus like how she wants something to go and you just start to get the sense that like no 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 like she she's but pulling a but, little bit more but you know it's for clouds exactly yes, good. Absolutely. It's, yes. Just, it's just a weird but how you is kind of cloud see her here's the thing is like in that moment i feel like she's like oh no right exactly but here's the thing is like how is cloud going to interpret that given how paranoid he has been with sephiroth being in in, in his mind Right. That's my question. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so in that chapter 11 scene, 
Cloud's just like, wait, Zach, of course. Like, yeah, Zach, yep. I talked to him and he was talking about Aerith. Like, absolutely. He was talking about his hot girl from Midgar. Um, and then he's like, oh, yeah, I went on that mission with Zach. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sexy. Beautiful. Wonderful. No, you're pretty. Pretty. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep. There it is. Talkative. To sexy. To taciturn. And so, <laughs> and then he's like, oh, wait, yeah, Zach was the other soldier that was washed on the river. And Tifa's like, uh-huh. Yeah, that's great. And he's like, we got to tell Aerith. And she's yeah. like, how about I talk oh, to Aerith? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Big guy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs> I did like for one shining moment, someone else in the game was as concerned about the second soldier swept down the river as we were. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Finally. Uh, well, Sephiroth cared. That guy loved him. Uh, Sean Mills writes in and says, we have to talk about the brewing romance in this section. Oh, by the way, here's a thought. This game's long, right? It's down to get the friction on. Um, yeah. Is this the biggest game about a love triangle that exists? Oh, big time. I haven't played your personas. Uh, I was I just going to say, I was gonna say persona might trump this, but in mass effect, it's not really a love triangle. It's kind of no. like a love octagon. Um, orgy on the Normandy I suppose orgy on the Normandy <laughs> welcome to the new DLC for Mass Effect 3 we call it orgy on the Normandy it's forty nine ninety nine, and no one will complain ESRB A S S <laughs> for you so you gotta be right on that because there are just not many story focused games that are this long right. when you combine it with remake and uh, Re three, the whatever the third one is going to be, it's <laughs> Re three Kings. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. It is just bizarre to think about the big picture stuff happening here. Um, I have a a take on this game because I I hear the people and I hear you, Jacob Geller, listening to this because there was his first discussion about this game on the podcast where he's like, "It's good. I just I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's trying to say. It's just a lot of." side stuff and some of it truly 1, sucks 1000% the, the more it. that I play this game the more yes. that I, I I listen back or I can hear back like where Jeffrey Geller was how lonely it must have been for him <laughs> to just be like I need somebody to unpack this with yes. me yes. because like a al- like alone trying to communicate this like I do not envy his position on that on that min max episode where he's just and, like I'm trying to communicate like yeah these very complicated feelings I have about this video game and I have nobody to like turn to. And the worst part is I, I keep having him in my head. Maybe there are in sections we'll talk about pretty soon here. Does your We're, vision go a little staticky and then Jacob shows up? It does, yeah, he's exactly. telling you to bring him the black materia? Yeah, I remember uh, <laughs> Jacob flying down the river. Um, no, but uh, when Jacob on the podcast, he said like, there are sections in this game where I was screaming at my TV how could anybody think this was fun? <laughs> and like, I hear Mod that. House. Yes. <laughs> I think that's a big thing. Kate said stuff. We'll get to as well. But yeah. there's so many sections like that. And so I hear that. I want to unpack all that stuff. I think it's interesting. My take about this game so far is there's been so many little comments of like, there are gigantic things we need to unpack as a group. Yep. And we're not doing it. And we're okay. instead talking about, hey, T5, I mean to ask you... Um, why did you name your cat Fluffy? And it's like, dude, <laughs> talk about the elephant yeah. in the room. Yeah. And I think there's, I'm not saying this is some uh, 4D chess from the developers, but I think an interesting read on this game is this game is about the banal stuff you fill your life with other than tackling the big, interesting discussion points with the people that mean a lot around you. Do you think that this is why that's it an- resonates so much with us as Minnesotans? <laughs> yes, I think that's exactly it. Yeah. I think that that's, that, that's fascinating. If, I would believe that I think there needs to be a few more nods that these conversations are taking place. And you do get that every once in a while with like Tifa and Aerith in terms of just like the, 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 like those kind of like side conversations that are happening that you, you, that you kind of like spy into. I don't get the sense that like, I, I don't get the sense that the game is is trying to communicate that as a theme. I don't think it is. I think it's a read, but that's I think separate it is. From I think it's an interesting. Intent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I will say I felt the what is this all for? What is this all about? Strong strongest at the start of this chapter where they're like, let's go south, yeah. like we discussed. Right. However, we start getting 
actual plot things this happening is, yes. in this yes. chapter, yeah. and it was just a breath, breath of fresh air for me. When it starts to pick up, it is yeah. like, oh my god. It was god. a soothing breeze for and me. And it's such a fascinating idea, because like, okay, didn't you hear that crazy roar by the Mako reactor? Yuffie's all excited to go on this big adventure, right? right. Run down there, and they have the music, the dun 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 <laughs> dun dun <laughs> like the weapon theme. And it's such a uh, fascinating... But, but also medleyed into... Was it Sephiroth's? Or I think like, there's some... Yeah, I think or, there's or, some. Or Shinra's. Like one, some other theme that was going on in there that they were just like pushing together and it sounded fantastic. Yeah. And it is, it's a fascinating design challenge and it's just like... It sums up a lot of the feelings in this game because it's like, oh my God, oh my God, stuff's happening. Yep. And then, by the way, real quick, I, I'm going to get finished this point, but I loved earlier on when you're looking at the reactor for the first time and there's like the memory for the deaths and all that stuff and everybody's like praying and Yuffie's the only one that's like what are you guys doing like we like, don't pray right, like yeah, that yeah, in yeah, yeah. I just love that yeah. weird cultural disconnect but anyways it was such a fascinating uh, dichotomy of like having the music finally having it felt like forward plot progression happening here charging to the reactor and then there's like a chocobo chick like this way blah, blah, and just like it has all the open world stuff on the way to the reactor but it has that intense music playing and it's like get out of my way nonsense open world stuff like I'm right. seeing the plot and it's driving me here and such a fascinating idea to have you like ignore literally they're putting, they're putting like chocobo stops in your path and all this stuff and just be like Which not I now still, game not yeah. now but here's the thing that's fu that's funny to say because I did it was like one of those moments where like well I'm gonna have to do this sooner rather than later so might as well hit it on the way right kind of in a yeah. way I did that and then Obviously, like when you go back and you're um, controlling Tifa at that at that point, yeah, I loved that because this is like, okay, now you need to get there, but we're gonna give you a different way. Yeah, of, we're gonna give you a this. leaping chocobo, and yeah, also which was like, okay, and it's like, all right, fantastic, yes, yeah. rocking through it. Yep. I feel like there was a voice line from Cloud at some point where he's like, "This can wait" or something like that. If you're kind of straying from the main path towards, oh, the really? Okay, maybe yeah. I didn't even dabble in it enough because I was just gunning for it. Yeah, and I went back it's and popped it all yeah. up later. You know. Yeah. One one thing before we st make the trip to that reactor. Yeah. Uh, Red Thirteen has a moment where he lays out exactly what the whispers are, and he he says they appear to prev to try to prevent fate from being altered. So he like right. says it. Like in On the Main clearest Street. possible terms, I feel like. There's a couple yeah. sections in this game where it's like, oh, okay, they're just flat out saying it. Where at a certain point when Kate Sith, which I love, where he's like, what are you guys talking about Sephiroth? Sephiroth is dead. I love that yeah. even Kate Sith is right. just confused. We're like, what are you guys talking about? Yes. And then Kate Sith is like, what does Sephiroth want? Um, and Cloud's like, he wants to save the planet, which is one of those like odd beats that is just in chapter two of remake as far as i can remember i don't think at the end of remake he really hits on that theme again so i love yeah. that cloud just like reiterating that kind of less clear b like he wants to save the planet but we don't trust how he's going to do it <laughs> yes yeah at the cost of everything like, yeah, yeah. right right it's complicated yes we think the other thing red says mm. in relation to the whispers is he says that cisne shouldn't be able to see them and only the party should be able to see them why is that Red 13. Oh. Why does he say that? Why should only the party be able to see the whispers? Because it's like through touch is how they're able to see it, right? Like Cloud and Aerith touches Cloud, then he can see the whispers oh, wow. in remake in the streets, I believe. I think that's how it worked. Oh, okay. yeah, because you just see Aerith like, bah! like it looks like she's like attacking mosquitoes. And sure, then yeah. Touches Cloud and it's like, bah! and then it, oh. it is like I think it might be past. And then he goes. Wow. Oh, oh, don't. wow. Well, look at that. Well, um, okay. So thank you because I did not remember that I thing think from that's four what's years going ago. On that's now. an interesting so, thing. So, okay. so did Sis, did Aerith, it's just silly to say, did Aerith touch Cisne at some point? He, he didn't do that side quest? <laughs> Touching Cisne? <laughs> it was the most common comment. Uh, speaking of Yuffie, um, Ryan from North Carolina wrote in, saying um in gaga -ga, by the way you can find yuffie and cisne's hut touching her no singing lyrics <laughs> singing lyrics yes. of her original theme music then in the cosmo region she has lyrics of the chocobo theme twice what um the game continues to have such fun fun moments sprinkled throughout um and then rooster says yuffie the bard of gangago is one of the highlights of the chapter my yeah. daughter and i have been singing her song ever since about being Which, bored yeah, yeah. yeah. i am yeah. bored yeah. so bored bored right out of my brain yeah yeah um I just, this is because uh, I'm a cynical, broken human being, but it's like lovely, cute, loved it. I, I like Yuffie a fair bit in this game. But then my first thought was like, 
Oh, that poor voice actor. The rest of her life, like every Comic Con signing thing, she's gonna have to sing "Bored, so bored, <laughs> bored right out of She's gonna have to yeah. sing like all these versions. People are gonna ask her for that her entire life now. Yeah, it's it's a gift to have that career, but you know, it'll break her brain. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, also, before we get fully into the reactor, uh, where I was gonna say earlier is Sean Mills writes in and says we have to talk about the brewing romance in this section in Gungaga. After resting in Cisne's house, um, Kate Sith mentions that Barrett was snuggling with him during the night, oh, that's to which terrible. Barrett loudly screams, I only did it because I thought you were Marlene. Stop making it weird. <laughs> <laughs> Sean says, clearly this is build up, building up to a multi-part date between these two later in the game. God, I'd pay money for that. There's a lot of good incidental dialogue between those two characters, too, when you're like driving around, I think, or running, and Barrett will be like... Uh, you know, haranguing Kate Sith about being a Shinra bootlicker yeah, or whatever. Yeah, He's yeah. like, you're sure your name ain't Stamp? Right. Yeah, stuff right, like right. that. Yeah. Which I forgot to mention, in the first cutscene in chapter nine, they touch on what I would argue is a pretty important thing of what is Kate Sith? I was hoping for more <laughs> what or how is Kate Sith? So I am so fascinated with this idea. All that he says is like, I think Aerith calls him a robot. Because yeah. it's clear that like the Moogle part's a robot, right? Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, "Oh, I'm just a Shinra office nine to fiver in a boring job." Yeah. And Barrett's like, "Oh, god damn it, Shinra!" Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there isn't, there hasn't really been a reckoning of like what is going on here. Like I love that it's like touched on a couple times throughout this, like the Gi, which boy we can get to that. You know, he calls him like a soulless or something. Yeah, like, like hollow like, soul hollow, or yeah. something. Yeah, and there's a yep. couple references like that, or like, mm. you know, there's a certain point in this section too where Kate says is like, well, luckily I'm not actually a real cat. Like he references things a couple times, but it's just like, and what? there are a couple times where he's kind of like almost like shut down, right? Right. right. So because I was like, obviously somebody is operating this. Okay. Yep. And. Is but does it run on autopilot? Because obviously a person has to sleep yeah. and whatever else. Do you want to talk doing? about this in the spoiler discussion uh, at the end sure. of the show for Patreon supporters? Yeah. Do you remember the full case? Of the I story? do. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Yep. There's a, there's a lot to unpack, but it's like it's all right there. They just haven't been like this is happening. Right. <laughs> but it's yeah. like it. I don't. There's a lot of stuff in this game that if you haven't played the original, I'm like is this is this working as a tease? Like at this point, if it's an interesting tease to make for sure. But it, after this long of a game, and even like thinking about yeah, just, you that's know. True cloud glitching for uh, now uh, you know yes. ultimately i mean if you're uh, 300 I mean, hours i yeah. mean at this point like 120 hours mm-hmm. of content of cloud mm-hmm. being like i don't know who i am it's <laughs> yeah. like uh, i don't care anymore like i, I just <laughs> i worry about people playing it for the first time because it's a lot it's a little bit of a mystery to stretch out a very long time yeah. yeah i bet there is enough there for people to make guesses which i think is one of the most important things True. when you've got a long running element like this yeah is if there's enough where people can create their own theories about it and that's a good point the next thing that happens either confirms or denies what they're thinking that is exciting in and of itself but Mm -hmm. obviously i can't speak to that yeah yeah situation um it it is fun to have the big gungaga sequence blown out at the reactor i think it's a really smart idea and you know they they touch on it too but it's a smart idea to like have a better thread from Gungaga to Cosmo Canyon by connecting things back to planetary stakes. Yes. You know, instead of just being like, we got to find Sephiroth. You know, now it's like, okay, there's some big planetary weirdness going on. Now let's go to Cosmo Canyon to to get it all squared away. I think it's a smart idea, but boy, do they go for it and they squeeze stuff in. And, you know, like (laughs) there's a lot going on here, but I was a little bit frustrated thinking about this. You know, as Cloud is slashing Tifa into the live stream I was like at that point it's like people say nothing happens in this game like this is crazy stuff people say nothing happens in this game before they get to that <laughs> yeah. part I right? think that's and maybe after the, the, <laughs> five, the five chapters before that where very little happens uh, well other than that part plot centric yeah yeah, yeah um one thing to say about the dungeon part of yeah. the the reactor, I I was like, I think was it you, Ronnie, that said last time that you don't like being forced into a specific party in a no, game like this? Uh, no, that was Brent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, I I do, li- I, I do I like I do like it because it gives yes. you a chance. For... It gives me an opportunity to like. I wouldn't know if I liked or disliked Kate Sith unless yeah. the the game says like. 
give Kate Smith a shot. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, so I really appreciate that. What I also really appreciate about it is, as you said uh, last time, Ben, is like it gives the game the opportunity to have more curated scenes yeah. nice. of those characters. Yep. And I really like that. Yep. Same here. And so I did, I did like that idea of like focusing on, you know, it is a little bit odd when Barrett's like, all right, women, you stay behind in the town. The men are going out. But it's like, well, then it's kind of cool ca- to have like an all women party charging in there after. Yeah, the fight, I, you know? I really appreciated that. <laughs> and initially, I was just waiting for uh, like a deeper earth to be like, um, no. What? Yeah. But yeah. the fact that they were like, okay, yeah, that's cool. It's like, <laughs> all right, that's kind of weird. And then later on, it's just like, oh, yeah, because they save them. Like, right, that's right, right. what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you get the grappling gun in this area yeah. as well. And, you know, we we kind of ragged on the Mithril Mines for a while because it's just straight point A to point B, Final Fantasy 13 style. Yeah. the Having the grapple gun just adds a little bit of dynamic... Yeah, ness something to, there to, to right? the level where you're like, oh, I'm going up here now. Oh, I'm going down here. I'm going all around and whatever. It just it makes it more interesting. To it go makes through it a it makes it so much more interesting. It, ben, it, this is something that y- you have been you know talking about through the past couple of, of podcasts. It's just like, well, how do we how do we just like change things up so that the gameplay just feels like a little bit more dynamic, a little right. bit more interesting, and then you get. You get a, 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 a ultimately a hook shot. And it's just like, yeah. okay, well, this is this is fantastic. But you're still plugging things in. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you just gotta wonder, like, like what's why why are we doubling down? Why are we doubling down on two things? Chadley and plugging things in. I don't yeah. I don't really get it. Now Alex L says, I was hit with a horrific flashback to everyone's favorite Mako vacuums from earlier in the game when we had to plug in those generators to power the doors in Gongaga Reactor. Yeah. A mechanic so nice they put it in twice. But story wise, <laughs> everything at yeah. the reactor is my favorite of the game so far, and I'm so excited to see where it goes. I think I might be with you. Yeah, it's like the whole thing about okay, you gotta change the water level. It's a lot of yep. I remember on Darksiders 2 visiting that studio. Uh, they had a phrase for a thing in a game that I can't unsee now where they said like in designing Darksiders 2 in dungeons like you just need to put in nuzzles which are not quite a puzzle oh, oh, just, here's a thing just that you just that, like, do slow it's you not going to stump you but that equivalent of like okay run around this way get the cord put it over here I think there's a lot of nuzzles in remake and rebirth here yeah. like, change the water level that's a good way you're not going to get stuck yeah. with it it'll just be a distraction for a couple minutes and then you yeah. move on you know yeah and how do you make that like that's the thing is like I don't think that 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 like philosophy is wrong. I I think it can be done very well, and I, I I don't know if this game is doing it particularly well, and I don't know how you do it well. It, it goes back to the Mako reactor stuff, and later on turning the valves. There's just a lot of those little little things coming back. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh. Lorenzo M writes in and says, "I couldn't shake off how much whiplash I got from Cloud's crew fighting Specimen H1024." versus Tifa's crew fighting the Scarlet Mare. The second phase boss fight theme used for Specimen H1024, previously used for Midgar Swarmer's final phase, makes everything feel so much more engaging opposed to Scarlet's fight, which left me feeling uh, incredibly underwhelmed in an already slog of a boss fight, still enjoying my, with my time with the game tremendously. And then Nick from Atlanta says, Oh, contraire, I love the remix version of Fight On in Scarlet's Fight and how it plays with the classic triplet meter and the duplet version that debuted in the Arsenal Fight and Remake. Thank God for you, yep. Nick. In that fight in Scarlet's and in Intermission, it swapped the duplet version halfway to musically signify a different phase. Here we get three phases. Phase one is the OG triplet. Phase three is the fully duplet with a rock and drum set but in between we get phase two where it swaps between them and even does three over two polyrhythms it's such a cool way of musically ref- reflecting the increasing difficulty Incredible. of the battle nick from atlanta everybody nick from atlanta that's great that comment. is amazing i Using love that kind of stuff we don't know the, how yeah music music theory in games always fun every time yeah uh, i did i did like scarlet dropping and basically it just a uh, Xeno gear at that point. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. Like, yeah. This huge mech thing. And I, I think metal gear, but also just not giving the party enough respect. The fact that she has this thing that could looks like it could destroy a city and yeah. still the party like d- destroys it. And, yeah. and Jesus like, ah, stupid machine. <laughs> <laughs> this is really where you need to have mastered Yuffie's uh, uh, shuriken throw mm, with the uh, elemental yeah, yeah. Electri- electrical yeah. yeah thing. One nice little detail I loved in this boss fight is that if you assess uh, Scarlet, it will say 
the uh, the machine will get staggered once you destroy its arms. Yeah. But when you destroy the arms, it goes and gets another pair. It does. And then yes. you destroy those arms and it goes and gets the third pair. And so it's a nice way of like um, setting up your expectations with that text to be like, oh, yes, I'll, I'll be in great shape as soon as I can just destroy these arms. And then you do it and it's like, oh, no, she got another pair. <laughs> She's it's so like, crafty. Yeah. It's like a, a cool way to uh, ratchet up the tension in the fight. Yeah. It is a cool way to fight. <laughs> Is the way that my brain works is like, I must have read it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stupid. I'm so stu- what am I doing wrong? Like you felt like you didn't For destroy him fast inside, enough or something know, yeah, like that? Like I was doing something that that was indicating that I was not doing something right. <laughs> I liked in the beginning of chapter nine, there's a moment where Yuffie, when you're in the buggy and Yuffie talks to Barrett and she's like, by the way, like I'm the one that gets to kill Scarlet. Like I, I, oh, I love that. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't kill her without me. So if you look at the first chance, it's like, oh, they're all in the room and Scarlet is technically there, even though she's getting away. Um, I thought the specimen boss fight was like, ooh, this is this is the one I was talking about with like that right level of challenge. So, like he was kicking my butt. I didn't get a game over from him, but like it was one of the situations of like just Phoenix down, Phoenix down, just like everyone yes. trying to just keep you up at all times. I'm having a hard level. time remembering this one. It, yeah. It was but, the first time I got the backline synergy command. Yes. Yep. Where it's like, hey, we'll actually come in and help you out if you need this. What's which is, that? Which is nice. That's so no, future. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I've had that three times. Um, yeah, it's happened a couple times. <laughs> one being, yes. Uh, still, a, still a, a fight to come that uh, just I didn't get I didn't die but <laughs> boy I got close uh, uh, have you died yet no really well, I, I, okay oh, I no I, I've died uh, one time from the uh Mind Flare, because the Mind Flare has this one move where I didn't, like, understand, like, what was going on. It was, like, I think it was an instant kill if you don't know what you're doing, uh, whereas you have to, like, hide behind something. So, at this point, you're seeing the Whispers again, and they're like, hey, it's the Whispers, but not as we've known them, is kind of the vague... Uh, way With of describing orb. them. Yeah, they got the purpley face glow, right? Yeah. Yep. Jordan Brown writes in and says, Is anyone else bummed out that the whispers are back? The last 60 hours of this game shows how strong the original story can be without interference or huge changes, only to throw what was probably by far the worst change from Remake back at us only now. There are white ones too? Still an A-plus game, but I don't like seeing whispers make a return. I... I had that feeling too of just like I, I think we told the story and I kind of like being done with it but I yeah. think then where it goes is like okay it's not just the whispers protecting fate this time and I, I like that idea of there's a larger battle happening yeah. in the live stream that we're seeing with the white blood cells and black blood cells in they, the live stream at this they, point they have a different significance now yeah right so you've got the white whispers fighting the black whispers now yes which you know, I was not entirely sure if the Black Whispers were evil or if they were just like a thing. Like, mm. you know, like if you fall in a river and you're being swept away, the river doesn't have ill intent, right? It's just the one sure. in clouds passed it. It did not like <laughs> that soldier. Yeah, exactly. But you know what I mean? Is it just a function? Are the whispers just a function of the planet, or are they evil? And I feel like what we are shown here confirms that they are evil. Is, mm. is that they say that they're with Sephiroth? Yes. But then the interesting part is, I mean, this is jumping ahead. There's a lot to unpack. But you know, when Tifa's talking about this, she's like, "There's there's a battle waging in the live stream, but we're winning." <laughs> the good guy, which is like, that's such a. You the, think at this point in the story they'd be like we're getting our butt kicked. But it's weird for Tifa to be like, I we're saw winning, the actually. white whispers fight the black whispers and we're kicking their ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what I took away from so what I saw. So we can go back to Costa del Sol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are Hojo's chicks? <laughs> uh, Villas writes in and says, the live stream sequence with Tifa and the white gray robed folks and the very darker black robed folks has confirmed what I thought earlier. They're definitely using the live stream white and live stream black lore. They might explain it in the game itself, but if you want answers now, you can pick up the copy of the book On the Way to a Smile, available at Barnes & Noble, uh, which has those several has those and several other short stories. I'm personally glad they're doing this, because if not, then when would they incorporate all this lore? So this is probably leading towards, if you read the books, uh, Livestream White and uh, Livestream Black, which is at some point. At some point, we'll read those books. At some point, we'll be cool real fans, I swear. And what was the name of the person who left that comment? Well, Barney Nobles? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, get up! Uh, I mean, big picture, Ron, what do you think about this whole freaking wild sequence? Uh, wild sequence being like Tifa in the live stream? Cloud snapping, slicing Tifa, and then a weapon swallowing Tifa like she's Jonah. I was bored. No. <laughs> <laughs> was, it would, I mean, this to me was 
and I, I think this like kind of this whole chunk of the game represents like a the most significant departure from the original story that we've seen so far and just like yeah. how how far off the path that they're willing to go and this was like so far off the path that it's just like oh this is a brand new game now like i i, I can't rest on previous knowledge of final fantasy 7 to understand like like what is exactly going on here so I was very excited throughout this whole thing um, to kind of see just like, okay, so now like like we are from the perspective of Tifa and Tifa's like revisiting like like significant parts of her past. Um, it's, I it's, just freaking it's, loved it. It's and, my and, favorite stuff from the original Final Fantasy VII is the more psychological, weird, trippy stuff. And to get it like this in this section is like, yeah, what are you guys yeah, yeah. doing? It's a wild choice. It's It's a wild choice. And then also Sephiroth just like, takes a stab at Tifa. At yes. And she like barely <laughs> dodges. Like, oh my God. Because she's in the womb of the weapon. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. But then There's he's also so much slicing up the weapon to release the the robe guys. Sorry, the robe guys. The, the whispers. Is that what's that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The whispers. I um, found it so, so like, interesting that, sh- that he, I don't know why, like it just, I found it kind of interesting that Sephiroth like had a little trouble slicing it open. Yeah. Like, he had this moment where he's just like, ah, and he's just like, this is harder than I anticipated. Man. I don't know what that means, but like, it just, it's kind of interesting that the game like put that in there. Nope. Kelsey yeah. Sims is right there with you. Kelsey wrote in saying, given the fact that Sephiroth can slice through people and buildings like they're hot butter, yeah. I think it was an incredible touch to show that he even struggled to cut through a weapon. Yes. It was a great and subtle way of showing just how powerful they were. That's exactly. Great, we were yeah. establishing how tough even this size of weapon is if there are other sizes you know? right right yeah. for sure um oh, i, I that's love smart yes yeah. okay, i yeah. love just the weird tone even before this of sephiroth appearing to cloud making him snap right um making him then just slaughter all of uh the shinra soldiers get the, but the, also the mess the what the Masamune? Oh, the Masamune, the stance? The stance? Doing the full stance. Oh, I love stance. that. Yeah. yeah. And then people, Tifa had to be like, like, how many people they've murdered in this game? Yeah. And, no, they're but, all asleep. They but they're all remake. Asleep. They're, they're all asleep. asleep. Yeah. But yeah, Tifa was just like, that is enough. Right. Well, Stop murdering. When he, it, you know, he's always too far in anime when he has little blood little splattered blood, yeah. on him and like yes. having the blood on his face. It was like full, you know, Anakin slicing up the Tuscan Raiders scene yeah, of just like, right. he is yeah. just snapping. And, Thanks I love for putting it in terms I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Russ, I was going to ask you a Star Wars yeah. question. I think it's interesting, and I'll get back to the most interesting part of this game, I swear. But I'm always interested in legacy sequels, legacy content, when the music is now canon within the world of the game. You know, yeah. and this, like, them singing the victory theme and all that stuff. And the fact that, like, Yuffie knows her own theme, mm-hmm. Tifa can play her own theme on the piano, all this fun stuff. And I was trying to think, like, of all the legacy sequels that have done that, and it's like, oh, Star Wars did that with, like, at the Emperor's March or whatever, is that like a chime in Solo? And the is there some? Yeah, Solo uses the uh, Imperial March. Imperial March. Yeah, Emperor's as like March, a, a like a a uh, major key version of it, I believe, as like oh, a wow. recruiting theme on the recruiting what it was. video. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that'd but be interesting. I, I, I but also, just, uh, Phantom Menace has uh, the Emperor's theme as a major key like the parade theme at the end for the victory you know like his that's evil good, that's like, good but not exactly what i want i want okay. like diegetic music like, they, they know it like i yeah. would love just a compilation of all the times that the legacy what was the word there diegetic. diegetic versus non-diegetic it, what is that music that characters can hear in a movie versus can't if they're listening to a song oh. on the radio and bobbing oh. their heads like wayne's that's world diegetic yes yep. oh, and then okay. non-diegetic is most oh, that's other things. Okay. anyways the point is the craziest sequence ever um of cloud snapping uh killing snapping. all those people the blood speaking everywhere. of star wars this is the first time that sephiroth has really been like use your anger it, cloud. It's, it's, yeah. it all feels so star wars for sure yeah and um, i'm like and was anger ever in the mix here before or is this just another way that sephiroth is like ah see i'm proving that i i've got cloud's ear by yeah, it making is weird. It's do not like, something it, yeah i like that read i don't know if it's there but that idea of like cloud is struggling just to suppress all of his you know I, I, soldier training point. and anger issues but like i don't think it's really I there don't think it, yeah it's not it doesn't it doesn't feel like like there's an emotional output that triggers then sephiroth's presence mm-hmm. in cloud's consciousness like it it seems to be more more closely related to either being close to like mako or like the live stream or um the the the, the clones yeah yeah so uh when then Sephiroth is like hey you know 
Might I remind you, Genova can take many shapes, Cloud. Don't trust her. She doesn't even have the scar. And I love, like, as Cloud is a feral beast coming at her with a sword, she's, like, trying to show the scar again. Yeah, and like, then, we've like, been through this before. Right? Yeah. It's such an interesting cut, too. And as he tries to, like, cut, and he's, like, going for the slice, and it's, like, right at her boobs as she's, like, leaning back, and then it cuts to a wide shot, and, like, the sword's way over her. So, like, it doesn't show the sword, like, barely missing her, but it's complied, it barely missed her, and then... As she falls back. In yeah, because it felt like she, like in hindsight, she j just, I guess, jumped off. Like launch, kind of launch herself back. Right, right. To yeah. avoid, so obviously. The getting, only way to avoid, yeah. Getting sword. cut. Andrew B says, I cannot tell you how much I cramp my face from how much my brow furrowed in both astonishment and confusion when Tifa fell into the live stream and had her vision quest. Yeah. I assumed it couldn't get more complicated in regards to the whispers function of the story, but lo and behold, here I am even more confounded about how this will all come together. That said, it was a beautiful sequence. Um, yeah, that, that's a good point. I also like when thinking about like the <sighs> whisper stuff, the whisper, whisper stuff. stuff, like if somebody would like explain that to me, I'd be like, I have, coming up with zero it's just fate I, it's just trying well, to, it's, trying it's to keep fate. it on the I feel the like it's game. two different fates colliding like that's like my my guess is like oh it's 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 the fate of like I don't know either the party or just like this timeline versus the other timeline are they coming together like is there something happening there I think it's the fate of the events of original Final Fantasy 7 but why are those still think. there though you know what I mean yeah, um, that's a good question. I think this is where the whispers being evil comes into it because, like, if yeah. it was just fate, then you know, fate is evil because the whispers are evil, basically, right? Because they're malicious and or which just we find different out than later the, in the yeah Bugenhagen side quest. Yeah, he's like, there is malicious intent here with these whispers. Oh, so maybe okay. it's just the whispers with the purple orb thing. Maybe those are the Sephiroth whispers or something like that. Yeah. But so okay. Well, that's also helpful. they talk about it in that Bugenhagen se sequence where Tifa asks, like, you know, can Mako, um, could the used energy from Mako be returned to the planet in a different form? Are those the whispers? And that's when Bugenhagen's like, get the hell out of here. I know. And so that's like, it's an interesting another idea you need of to leave. floating that idea of like, is if you use Mako, is that polluting the planet, and then that pollutant stuff is returning to the planet and that's the core of the whispers here mm, uh yeah. there's a lot going on here uh no hang on a second yeah so presumably the party gets front row tickets to uh seeing cloud snap right and take a slice at tifa yeah. tifa then falls down gets swallowed by a monster <laughs> right go on <laughs> When Cloud's walking back to the party. <laughs> well, no, I like it because he's like, I love what it because he's happening? actually, he's distraught and like laying down. And then there's a moment where Barrett actually oh, like guys, slaps him. Oh, guys, they messed him. up. <laughs> oh, I sliced up my girlfriend real bad. Made a huge mistake. No, but I, and then he's like, girlfriend? I love that Cloud, he's basically just like, he's so out of it and not like in a Sephiroth kind of way. I think he's just like, oh, Christ, what am I at this point? That I do like, Barrett actually slaps him and he's like, hey man, get your shit together. Yeah, I do like that. Like, yeah. There's a couple sequences throughout this game so far of Barrett being like, get your together and vice it, versa and I feel like it is very interesting then to think about just like from the party's perspective of just like how, okay cloud <laughs> who is he how dangerous is he he's yes given that like this is his childhood friend just try to murder her and and everybody's just kind of like they're they're still his friend like they're still being very supportive to him and I think that that says a lot and also like there's a part of me that, like I want the game to honor the other side of this, which is the fear or the worry about just yeah. like, what is happening with cloud? Yeah. Are we actually safe? And I'm not seeing a lot of that so far. And I'm not saying that it's not going to come, but I, I just, it, it makes me kind of wonder just like, like how many conversations does Yuffie have and be like, why are you guys hanging out with them? You yeah, know what I mean? No, like there should be, there should be like group meeting, group meeting. Yeah. Like we cannot, <laughs> this guy. Yeah. Immediately. After, sword? Yeah, yeah. Immediately yes. after the scene, like, okay, Tifa and cloud are now going to talk in the bedroom for a while. It's like, you cannot, leave her alone with him at this point exactly right yeah you can't leave anybody alone with cloud. there needs to be like a buddy system if you're yeah. anywhere near, near cloud. cloud yeah if, if we're being realistic about what's going on here yeah yeah, yeah. um ultima 786 says it was haunting to hear tifa say am i dying during that sequence yeah. that was so good and she's yeah. like hearing her parents talk and all that stuff and right. you know it touches on this idea a little bit later but a lot of it was her reliving her memories of like the kids in the town 
going over the mountains to find Tifa's mom. And there's the lore of Mount Nebel, the idea that like souls cross over Mount Nebel when they die. And so then when Mm -hmm. Tifa's mom died, that's when she was trying to go there. And it was a lot about like seeing how Cloud was not engaged with that group and yeah. stuff through reliving these memories is what she's talking with him yeah. later about. But I love it. It's so cool. We get to like to choose these weird fragments of like the water tower here, this part over here, you choose what yeah. you're actually going to dissect here in a little way. Yeah. Are we ready to talk about that bedroom conversation? I think there's a couple things. A couple okay. things. Uh, uh, we, okay. Yes. There's birds and there's bees, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, Gooseberry uh, writes in and says, the moment when Tifa tells Cloud now it's her turn to save him was truly warming and makes yeah. even Tifa more lovable. Uh, that said, he just pushed her into the Mako juice. Yes. <laughs> Cloud does not deserve Tifa. Mako juice. <laughs> Yikes. At least how about Tifa hangs onto that sword for a while, huh, Cloud? Yeah, no kidding. Sorry, that's basically the bedroom conversation, Ross. There we go. Yeah. I accidentally stumbled into it. Also, how concerned were we about Tifa being in the Mako? We keep talking about how dangerous it is to be uh-huh. so close to it. Yeah. And yeah. she seems to have gotten out of there with a few with little effects. And it apparently just like breathed it in the tummy of the weapon, which had like the liquid yeah. in its womb. It's, it's such a funny shot when it like came back out to like drop Tifa back off. Yep. Yeah. And it's just like, eh, just like floating there and the rest of the party is like looking at it. It's uh-huh. such a weird design for that freaky thing. Um, I thought, mm. I always imagined the live stream to be a little goopier. It's basically just like green water. Water, yeah. You know, but like I thought it was a little bit thicker. Uh, not quite honey, but something closer to honey. No, yeah, halfway to no, honey. no, no. It's, it's, it's got the same viscosity as water. <laughs> <laughs> it clearly does. Otherwise, when uh, Guy Natai, is that the guy's name, takes That's him right. on the boat ride, yep, right. he'd be having a real tough time <laughs> paddling <laughs> through that. <laughs> uh, the bedroom conversation, Ross. Okay, so love this scene. Yeah. Um, Tifa is not wearing her punching gloves. Which mm. uh, signifies not vulnerability. Guess. Sure. Ah. Cloud like stares at her hands for a while, and I'm like, why is he like staring at the? I mean, I get being awkward, but like, <laughs> oh, she's just like barehanded, which she never is. Um, and wow. she connects with him, as we know, she's been like kind of quizzing him a little bit here and yeah. there about their past. She connects with him this time by not by like quizzing him again, but by. Like relating a time where she read a situation wrong in the past or she saw something incorrectly where she was like, assume that, you know, she like listened to the other kids, what they were saying about cloud or whatever. Right. 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 Yeah. And that is like, I thought it was really nice that that's kind of how she reaches him here, because this is, I think, the first time that he really admits he's like, man, my head is real messed up. Yep. Yes. And I think that's what does it is she's like, hey, not everything was right in my brain in you know some like small way clean yeah in exactly some way, yeah and he's like yeah there's there's this big problem yeah he says sometimes i don't even know who i am it's like there's different people inside of me the worst part is i can't tell where they end and i begin Terrifying. and yep. he's just scared that he's he's falling apart exactly as a person. and he chalks it up to the the degradation yeah. right. of uh of soldiers and the mako and all of that yeah but yeah i thought it was a great scene and then of course they they uh start leaning closer to do a little smoochy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, Yuffie busts through the door. Well, first they're, they're chanting kiss, kiss. Yes. I, just, I thought that was busts so funny. Through. Yeah, it's like, and you notice in the framed in the door in the background, Aerith is standing back there. Yeah. Like, and there's like the weird muted Aerith line here too. So that again leads it to just like there is this, this other aspect that we're not privy to like Tifa and Aerith like having... Like just the their their extremely close friendship because yeah. it looked like Aerith mouthed something to Tifa and Tifa's like gotta go like in a way like just kind of like excused herself and I don't know like what what did she say do we know like I think it was probably something supportive because as we see in uh, chapter eleven Nibelheim. Aerith has this thing about like not having a close friend when she was a kid and it really bothers her. So like she, I think, you know, she loves her friends, but she's also like, you know, it, uh, it's depressing when she's like, Oh, I wish I had that thing. Yeah. Yeah, She, she kind of like acknowledges some anger, Mm -hmm. you know, surrounding just like not having anybody and like the jealousy that she 
ultimately like I think kind of like has towards people that have like childhood friends and like having those moments where they can say like do you remember that time that this happened and like how we shouldn't take that for granted and I, I thought that was just like it's a very cool moment um it just a very insightful thing for this game to have it's just like Aerith's relationship to the fact that like Cloud and Tifa know each other for a long time and how that impacts her right and the fact that they know each other for a long time but they're still even they're still distant and they acknowledge like, we don't really know each other that well. And so it's such a fascinating they perspective. They didn't hang from, out. Right. And so for Aerith, yeah. they see they're like, well, you guys are best friends. And they're like, not, not really. really. We, we, no. we were together our entire lives. We just didn't really talk to each other that much. Just like, Aerith's like, I can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thing, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had to befriend this stupid dog. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about me? <laughs> Aerith, let's play. <laughs> By the way, how cool is it that no, we can wait. For we can wait. Oh, there's we a can lot. wait. On, uh, on we had uh, one uh, Jacob write in. They said, hi, Jacob Geller here, MinMax contributor. You're a cohort now. Remember, Jacob, we changed your title. Um, my question is, does the... Cohort this, master. <laughs> does the scene where Cloud is talking to Tifa after she recovers from the live stream feature the single horniest camera shot in a game? Tifa says, when the rest of them ran, you were there for me. And the camera cuts to Cloud's perspective, who slowly looks from Tifa's thighs to her chest. <laughs> it's not lewd, but good lord, man. Woo! Woof, 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 woof. Didn't says, even notice it. Says Jacob Keller. Classic YouTube essays extraordinaire for <laughs> submitting a comment that says woof, 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 woof. Yes. There's also He's not shot, wrong. It's maybe the second horniest shot in this sequence, because also when uh, Scarlet's helicopter is getting rocked, or her gear thing, there's like a pretty obnoxious like cleavage shot of her like whoa shaky <laughs> boobies she looked down at her own boobies and she yelled shaky boobies if i you remember recall. that yeah this thing that jacob is mentioning i wonder if that's the one where you're supposed to be looking at her hands it could be but, <laughs> but obviously <laughs> geller style say, yeah. yeah we know how it goes uh, jackson v writes in says i've always liked tifa but this game and particularly these three chapters solidified her as my favorite character in the game like she's that. not a super soldier a guy with a gun arm an ancient mage or a talking cat she's just a normal person with lots of trauma trying her best to help everyone out and save the world yeah the live stream sequence here really helped expand her view into her psyche and there are a few moments in the later chapters where we see her try so hard to make sure cloud and the others are okay that level of concern and empathy yeah. are so sweet and endearing and speak to the overall genuine nature of all of these party members yeah i agree 100 percent. except yes. it's normal person slash karate master Mm, yeah, that's true. That's, that's right, true. Yeah. Which yeah. makes it even better for me. But no, I, I, like ten thousand percent. I I feel like Tifa is so she's so well realized. Uh, I, I think like yes, she she's extremely strong, but also like very vulnerable, and uh, has incredible like caring t towards just like everybody around her. Um, she's keeping the party. There will be a point where it feels like she's just gonna like. It's going to be on her to keep the party together. That's yeah. what it feels like. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And I said this last time too, but incredibly well cast as well. Britt Baron. Oh, I think like, she's my favorite actor in the game. Yeah. Uh, everybody is uh, really good, but she like ever, every yeah. interaction she has has so much subtext. That, yeah. yeah that's and true. you can, yeah. you can feel it. Yeah. You're going Barrett around. They're having so much fun with Barrett's character, and yeah. like the fact that like Barrett has like a like a side fun uh, relationship with Kate Sith, and also has a side fun uh, uh, relationship with with Yuffie as well. Yeah. Like, and it's just like so much fun. Like, as the camera is like focusing on something else, like you can just see Barrett and Yuffie just like like just like roughhousing together. Yeah. No, that's the best part of this game so far. It's just yeah. like those little. Getting those snapshots of just like the side stuff, like Aerith and uh, Red Thirteen, or just like all those things, like they're nailing this. I know we said this up, no, like the tone time is and time perfect. again, but the tone is absolutely perfect here. Yes, I, I just I couldn't be more thrilled with how well realized this like party is coming together. Yep, and we're getting more uh, characters in, and they're it's going to be become like. There's going to be so much more weird dynamics, weird dynamics yeah. that have already like started to show, particularly like like with Sid that I'm just like, oh, I can't wait. No, I it, can't wait to see this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm so with you. It's just like we're already a weird hodgepodge of freaks, which yes. is what I want. But like everyone 100%. is so odd. And I love that just there's certain moments that kind of put things in a different perspective. Like, you know, later on, just seeing Yuffie, you know, be fully devoted to Wutai when she kind of has her breakdown about like, yeah. I didn't get a message. What, what is my mission at this point? Is my mission squad? And she's just realizing like, Oh, I just think of it as a party, but everybody has their own 
priorities and the fact that Yuffie's part of your party, but like she's Wu Tai commitment up here, party commitment way down here at this phase. You know, and it's at this phase, right? Yeah, and and also like I would say that that is true for. I, I would say, like, two of the characters so far, which are also two, like, in the original Final Fantasy VII, like, are the two characters that you can miss. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Like, that their allegiance they have, is questionable. They, like they, yes, their allegiance is, is for, well, for something else. Well, was a little bit confusing, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's Remember true. when he works for Shinra, but he just kind of hangs around all this? <laughs> and they're like, come on, yeah. hang out with us. <laughs> Before I forget, my favorite little moment of you talking about the relationship of Yuffie and, and uh, Barrett. Barrett is... And we'll get to this part later. But when they're getting in the boat, they're all in the boat, and Barrett's just like, right, "Come on, like, yeah, 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 like you be the hell out of my He's like, that level of animation is just so smart. Just yeah. not a big scene, <laughs> just a little thing. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, pretty hate machine, aka Aunt Baru, friend of yours, Ross. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baru crew for life. <laughs> life. <laughs> How scarring was it, Ronnie, when you first saw? Uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru all burned up in New Hope. Oh, I loved it. Did you? Yeah. It was, yeah, put it on just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no. It was... Anyways, uh, so... Uh, <laughs> pretty image. <laughs> so... so <laughs> Taciturn. <laughs> must... Must know the scene with Burning. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> I'm 1,000% sure when Aerith saw Cloud and Tifa about to kiss, she shot that look to Tifa and mouthed, girl, that's my man. Yeah, it, it'd be interesting if you were like prioritizing Aerith for all dialogue conversations, you know, and then that scene still happens. It's like, what the hell, man? We're right here. Yeah. Come on, it, man. Yeah, this, this kind of goes back to something, you know, that we said, I think, last time, where it just feels like the game is is kind of like, like a little bit more just like pulling you towards like the relationship between Tifa and Cloud. Yep. Uh, more so in this game as opposed to remake. Yeah. Uh, Hurley Tank writes in, who needs a heavy tank when you have a Hurley Tank? Said, I was losing steam for side content, but then in Gangaga, you have to retrieve chickens. <laughs> <laughs> By the third bird, I'm absolutely losing it. I'm getting stuck on Barrett. I can't turn. Bird four is outside of town. Well, I'm pot committed now and got to continue. Yeah. I get 10 feet and I'm fighting. I'm now furious. Oh, Not yeah. only am I doing this awful thing, but they made it worse. Yeah. Halfway through this battle and I'm certain I'll be mainlining the rest of the game and avoiding all side content. I return bird number four. Then chicken lady feeds you the birds you rescued and red has a crisis about completing the quest. Complete 180 on my part. Now I'm certain I'll do every side quest in the game. They're perfect. <laughs> it is one of those things. I hated that side quest. I hated it was it so much. unbelievable. Backing was, up and running into people I, that are like, get out of my the way. Worst, you see, I'm the, doing chicken business here. It yeah. truly makes no sense. Like it, everyone knows that if you have a clanger out and a chicken touches it, it's no good anymore. Like <laughs> then what the is clang, it? Yes, what exactly. is it? It's yeah. unbelievable. And I do, I do think it, it was almost worth it for that moment then with the fourth chicken where you run way outside of town and it's like you're starting to do it it's like are they is this gonna be the next this is the where I realized that, that like I've I, like I've I've gone the wrong direction in my life specifically if I'm willing to spend 25 minutes walking backwards <laughs> to this town and the fact that like the game almost did this thing where like were you really going to do that? Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did you know, you know how hard this game? stuff sucks? <laughs> 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 that was there was something there. It's all in service of setting you up for uh, the old lady saying now are you ready for some of grandma's grilled chicken? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then the music goes sour and like the screen sort of like both starts it's darkening like the game over and music. Yeah. Yeah. The game over music. Yeah. Oh yeah. My God. Uh, Dom Reese wrote about that. Um, yeah. And I love the idea of like <laughs> even you know Red's just like I don't want to eat these chickens and Cloud's like hey man well, gotta, gotta, eat. gotta eat up man like gotta <laughs> eat something yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, a circle of life my friend Red goes outside and has the a whole like, oh! and, like a full <laughs> yeah. pullback camera as yeah. he just howls it's yeah. so absurd Patrick G says that chicken quest push and pull literally sums up all of Rebirth perfectly yeah yeah a lot of nonsense and then pitch Pay perfect yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 they completely nail it in the ending I suppose um Hunter B did y'all of you do the mushroom gathering side quest in Gangaga? You know it. The haptic trigger integration was a lot of fun and felt fresh compared to its other uses. Plus mm. Cloud's expressionless victory arm pump after pulling each mushroom crack map. I gotta say, I did it. I didn't do that one. I didn't really understand. I felt like I was failing it a lot and the the mushrooms were not ideal that I brought back to Cisne, but I did like when you first go in there and Cisne is like cooking 
and Cloud's just being like, it's a war zone. Like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> like, I feel like that engagement. But just like, you know, it's that classic thing of like, we're, how many hours in this game are we? And we're learning a new mini game for slowly gyrating a mushroom to pick it. <laughs> sure, it's just yeah, the most yeah, absurd yeah. little I could stuff. not make many distinctions between how far a no, mushroom that's could a problem. go in one yeah, direction. I, yeah. I had no idea what was going on. Um, on but the, Deadpan Cloud is a true highlight of this game. It's always excellent. Yeah. Like when the, the, the training side quest in this area where like, can you, the guy's like, can you train us? And yeah. he's like, we're just passing through. And then somebody follows up at the end of that and is like, okay, can you spare a hundred hours or so? And he's like, we're really just passing through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Patrick H says best random piece of NPC side chatter so far. The woman in Gangaga is saying the creepy old reactor is being creepy again. Shocker. <laughs> she's just so over all of it. Well, she's had to pray for that reactor so many times. I yeah. guess that makes sense. Uh, do you think side quest minigame stuff in Rebirth, it, it's as kind of wonky and crappy in spots as some of those minigames were in the original seven, right? Like, it's charming, but yeah. it's not like those minigames in Gold Saucer and Beyond were like good back in the days. Like, here's a, something different and it's kind of a wonky thing. I feel like it's almost like that same level of quality just from 1997 now to twenty. Yeah, when I wanted you know? to play like a snowboarding game, um, <laughs> I'd play right. Cool Borders too. I wouldn't put on Final Fantasy VII. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm having a fun time with most of them. Still. Yeah, I, I am too. I like, yeah. The sit-ups was too much for me. Yes, it was. Um, Flying Chocobos was my limit. <laughs> yes. Absolutely my limit. I hated that so much. You, you gotta master the dive and then pull up and that's the key to the <laughs> flying sugar bows. But yeah, uh, you, you also, you got to get that weapon for Yuffie. You do have to get really that. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the, the Mog House, I think, okay. as a Mog similar, House, similar journey. I stand corrected. <laughs> you brought up Mog House. I Very like that obnoxious. eventually it's like, hey, we'll give you an easy mode. You can take four hits here. Have at it. Um, that helps out yeah. a, a big way for getting through that stuff. And but, I like it's easy mode will still get reward or yes, whatever it yeah, says. That, yeah, 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 yeah. That, thank that you, is, and thank you. Absolutely, way. thank you for putting that. And it, it's like throughout all of this, it's kind of a similar journey of the chicken clanger of going through it. I'm like, you guys, this mod cast, you need more because it's just like the little moogles outside afterwards being like, and then Mog and Mag, wow. They got together and we'll leave the rest to your imagination. I'm like, look, I'm the biggest fan of the original Mog House, but <laughs> you just going on to vaguely describe the Moogles from the original game, getting yeah. it on, like that's yeah. our reward for this. And hey, the shop, I'm trying to think if there's anything that like blew my mind the, the shop shop's so far. A, no, I mean, it was just because it's you fine. got, you got, well, you got the arts. Like you they, got, yes, yeah, yes, I guess that's, that's important. what you get, yeah. which is fantastic. Right. But then it's just like, do you want Emerald There's something that's sapphires? obviously going like, to be a quest item in a later part of the game. Like it shows up in a key item. It's like underground that? vibrations or something like that. Oh, sure, sure, I haven't sure. used it yeah. yet. Yeah. No, I don't know. Okay. I, um, bought, I I know what you mean. I bought it, but I don't I remember ever everything. using it. Yeah, yeah, I got everything. Um, So I was on that same journey with Mog House. And then, and Ronnie, I don't know if you did this, so I apologize, but mm. you finished the last Mog House. And yes, I did. <laughs> and suddenly it's like all is right with the world because Kubo. <laughs> Cloud turns into a Moogle and then he recreates the scene from the original Mog House of trying to learn to fly by yep. jumping off that. And then they all hoot and holler yep. as Cloud flies around as a Moogle with a bandana that says Cloud on it. And he says, Koopo Koopo. Koopo. <laughs> and then he becomes a human again, and then there's a close up of his mouth going, Koopo. <laughs> Check this. 10 yeah. out of 10. Yeah. Could and not be better. And that's Could the thing. Be it's just like, oh, Cloud is awesome, yep. actually. But then you just remember all the sequences of dodging bananas. No, I didn't. See, here's the thing is, I didn't remember that. Damn it, Malala. And like, they're running along the fence, and they're kind of going in the water, but not quite. Oh, it's just go in it. Get the water out of there. Like, yeah. But it was beautiful. There's no doubt. Um, ben R. writes in and says, when talking to Barrett in Gangaga, he fantasizes about living off the land. Yeah. And he asks Cloud what he'd end up growing. One of the options Cloud can say is, well, one of them, I chose like onions or something. Well, it was mushrooms. Okay, but well, one of the options was like onions well, and yeah. Barrett's like, are you calling me stinky or something? <laughs> um, huh? uh, I think actually Cloud says that he smells. I think is what goes on there actually. Huh? Anyways, but they say one of the options Cloud can say is black millie, red shelly. If you choose that, Barrett immediately calls out Cloud saying, those ingredients are used in love potions, which Cloud is surprised to hear. The only other time those ingredients have been mentioned was in chapter four of Remake when Jessie lists the ingredients of the pizza she plans on making for Cloud. 
Are you oh, kidding come on. me? Isn't that good? Ben R wrote in about them. Uh, I thought this was a very fun that. little detail, and it gives that scene and remake a whole new meaning. Wow. Okay, that that comment makes me like now makes me like want to. I have a suggestion. Yeah, just the best comment. Oh, <laughs> the, the best comment Ben R. Because yeah. that was fucking amazing. It is very good. Yeah, there's no doubt it's good. Um, MVP at this moment. Show me one better. How about this? The ENS, music one was good. ENS writes. Yeah, oh, hang that's, on. That's true. That's um, true. Yeah. I'll get one. I'll get one for you. Um, Aaron T writes in and says, "This one's for you, Ross. The camera the NPC uses during the Condor quest way back in the Junon region looks just like a Polaroid Spectra or a 1200 SI, <laughs> and the photo they print is actually the correct size for that camera. The long discontinued Polaroid 1990 film. Wow. <sighs> I appreciate this kind of stuff. That every is very time. good. Thank yep. you for the comment. That is very yeah. good. Best comment." Whoa, wait, wait just, a minute. Just starting away like that? No. Uh, ENS writes in, says, how about the fact that the Turk proto-relic quest was basically a summary of Before Crisis? Best comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, Before Crisis, which is a Turk-centric Japanese phone game, you can you can find a way to play it online. I started it. There's a Turk named Shotgun, which I always thought was kind of fun. Um, but... Uh, that apparently is what is being summarized in that Turk proto relic okay. quest of like them training for the potential assassination on President Shinra, which I thought was like, oh, is this like them training for the Junon sequence? But maybe oh. it's different than that if it's doing the before crisis stuff, which I thought came quite a bit before. Um, but where I, I loved that sequence of like working with the weird AIs of the Turks and stuff and them going through the training. And there's one section where it's like, okay, we have this. Uh, hologram hostage cloud what are you gonna do and then cloud's like you can choose and one of the options is like interrogate him and they're like nope and there's like shoot the hostage in the head wow. it's like seeing sung like be that much of a cutthroat killer it's like well yeah. that's a hologram but i think that's is that just all an ai it doesn't mean anything or is that actually like footage i, I guess it's sure. just an ai it so feel, it doesn't matter well but. it feels like a training sequence based off of something that really happened yeah right okay so which makes sense if it is from the before crisis is that what right, you said right i guess so yeah um and then i love that at the end it's like okay you have to fight rude and elena and it's preparing for the possibility that Turks would turn on themselves. Yes. It's like, that is such a smart, cool idea and a reason to have you fight the Turks. And that's kind of a fun fight overall as well. But just to have that extra dynamic of like, yeah, what, what would happen? One of our, we have to prepare for every threat. And one of these Turks. Could be us. Yeah. Turning could be on Cisne each other. someday. Could be Cisne. Yeah. I, I like when she comes in and Chad is trying to be like, oh, you're a Turk. She's like, don't know what you're talking about. Moving on, Chad. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. I, I love that kind of stuff where you, you know, like there are more Turks than the three or four that we see. Yes. You know what I mean? It makes the world bigger. Yep, for sure. Um, I also, I like that every region has its own proto relic quest. Yeah. That yeah. they're really shaking it up on that front. I think it's a smart idea to, to yeah. completely have it. It's a definitely my favorite ongoing quest for the variety. And then, yeah. And then also, of course, the fun Gilgamesh scenes afterwards. Yeah, for sure. Oh, also, I like in that section, um, they talk more about. Uh, the nature of Shinra and it's it's interesting stuff where Aerith is talking about like uh, the problem is that not everybody in Shinra is bad like that's why we can't just hate them as an overall company and every employee that works there and you know they get into this stuff a little bit in remake as well but I love that and then Yuffie's coming back and like yeah but the rest of them are enablers like you gotta yeah, factor that's that, what like, lets them off the hook is that people are like well they're not all bad you know right so right. We, we gotta let them all do whatever they want yeah it's it's interesting just this game overall I know we've saying we've said it's a lot of glitches and black robes and stuff but it is wild that like it's been 120 hours of by and large yeah they're worried about Sephiroth and what they're doing to the planet but by and large the overwhelming theme is this freaking company is hurting this planet and it sucks. I mean, you do something about it. It's like, to have that much time in a game dedicated just like this. Yes. This planet's being harmed by this greedy company. We really got to do something. Yes. And it plays into the Cosmo Canyon region in a really interesting way, too. Yes. Um, that I can't wait to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. If we ever get to Chapter 10. Oh, are we not to Chapter 10? I was so excited in Chapter 9. Where they're like, how? We should not be talking about Chapter 9 still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but once I mention what we're going to talk about, you're going to be like, oh, crap. Of All course right. we're going to yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. I was so excited in Chapter 9 when they're like, oh, my God, how are we going to get to Cosmo Canyon? There's no way. It's like, well, there are these kind of like freelancer pilots that I guess we could take. And it was like, oh, my. Like, yeah. this game gets 
everything right when it comes to town introductions and character introductions, I feel like. And so yeah. the idea of like Sid, who's my favorite character from Seven, yeah. like really? Yeah. Yeah. Finally, yeah, yeah, finally yeah. they're getting to Sid. I was giddy about like, oh my God, I get to actually see him land the tiny Bronco. Yeah. Get out. They're playing his theme. Oh. It's a version of it. Camera pans up. Here yep. we go. Hot Sid reveal. Ronnie, hot thoughts. Where are you going, baby? I'm just <sighs> I, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm loving how much they've, <laughs> they've like kind of tweaked Sid and just nailed him. Like, oh, really? Okay. I loved it. I, I, I don't, I, I, like, I, he's got like this, just like, he's still a little bit unhinged, which I kind of like, you know, he's just like, and he kind of leans, too cocky. Well, like, he, he leans into it too. It's just like, you know, he's just like, ah, I'm the best pilot there is. And, but also he's got this just like now. I was it, yeah, I like that uh, where they're talking about like, yeah, technically Shinra doesn't allow you to fly, uh, but and he right. goes, he's like, heads couldn't stop me if they tried. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, Barrett yeah. just goes, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You've Perfect. never heard of the tiny Bronco? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly that pop. I mean, obviously, yeah. But yeah, they also just like worked in, and I, I don't know if you ever like got this from his, um, just like how he talked in. Uh, the original Final Fantasy VII, but just like this kind of, I don't know, like Southern charm. Is that how you would say it? It was just charm. In Advent Children's first time I was like, eh, Southern accent. It's an Advent Children. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's kind okay. of where it came from. I, I was surprised um, how young he looked in this. Like, I, here, here's my hot What is his stated take. age again? It's a little, because he knows Ilfalna. Yeah. <laughs> 40, he's 47. 45 he's looking i bet he's listed young. as 29 or no no yeah. he's he's like when i was a kid sid was ancient felt impossibly old i got bad news guys he's 32 years old 32 that he's 30 that's the problem sid is, because he's he needs to be grizzled yeah hard drinking hard smoking you look at you look at at people from the 50s yeah at 32 they look like like today they're b55 <laughs> so it works so that's the take yeah i i just look i'm not trying to be debbie down right here um but i i i think something about sid's design like i wanted a little more grizzled i wanted his voice a little Mm-mm. little more raspy nope. i he just looked a little too young and hot and kind nope. of laying on kind of a fake southern accent i was like i i'm not feeling as much as i want to feel it mm-hmm. on the yeah, costume yeah he looks like he is a person in uniform running a small business that's what yeah. i take on the costume he's which is he's what he's like is. yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah yep he's like i am an air taxi for you um doesn't get a lot of customers no he doesn't <laughs> but but he's looking the part that's that's what i think yeah and he gets to land on the cosmo canyon airstrip yeah. which is such a funny combination yes. of yeah. words actually put also in here. apparently the He's like, well, I don't know if I can handle all you guys. I'll make it work, but yeah. we got to work on uh, the seating arrangement. Yeah. And then he puts the heaviest guy in the c- back corner. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no one else would think of this. That's why I'm the best pilot ever. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. absurd. I was surprised. It's like, uh, the Tiny Marco's controllable as you fly it. Like, yeah. kind of, sort of. Yeah. I guess when is the best I was, way to put it. When we were, um, like, on the way here, when I was saying, I think about, like, ah, oh, what's going to be, like, the most common content, uh, comment? Yeah. That was one that I thought, like, oh, man, is that going to be one of them? It's just, like, this, in a way, it's it's sort of simulating the old game of, of flying over the world map. Yeah. I, well, I, I'm surprised that there's so many spots where it's like, oh, you get to see just, like, low poly versions of the map and like these big mountainous environments that we don't get to run across. Like, okay, that's how they're going to structure this. It's like, there's the pockets you can land in. Then just a lot of like, ah, here's some generic. Barren wasteland. Yeah. 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 Barrett's barren wasteland. (laughs) Come on down. Cosmo Canyon is maybe for me, the area that has benefited the most from the modern scale of the areas. Like this is a whole giant Canyon that That you are playing around in. It's just, I'm Incredible. so with you. It's such a stupid take, but as I was playing through chapter 10, I was like, thanks. It no, 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 so no, 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 no. My no, stupid take is I was like, oh, it's like a big canyon. Like that's yeah. what I was like, yeah. realizing. That's, that's why they call it yeah. Cosmo yeah. Canyon. Yeah. I had that yeah. feeling too. Yeah, I like understand you, that. Now. You can kind of see it before, but like actually feeling it in this game feels completely different. But Rots, for the last time, we can't talk about chapter 10 yet because we're still in chapter nine. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> because there's the most important scene in the entire game. 
You just said this five minutes ago when we were talking no, about No, this yeah. was actually the most important thing. Jumpo submits the comment that says, Zephyr Roche? Uh, we see Hojo operating on our boy Roche at the end Oof. of chapter nine. Yeah. Is that the end? It's at the end of chapter nine. And there's this something about like, oh, you want to be a hero, huh? Yeah. Here's a treatment to make you a hero, which is... It's interesting that Hojo also had that line to the women, like, you want to give birth to a hero? And yeah. I guess that's all you have to say to anybody. And people are like, sign me up, Doc. I was bummed out to see our dear boy. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it it's, like, what is, it it's like, what is he getting out of this? What yeah. is, like, is, is he so worried about degeneration that he, that's the goal? It's that, not like, make me super powered to be cloud. It's like, Doc, just well, give me an update because I know what's going on yeah. here. I think it's both, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing it, Roche do this is like, you know, as a kid when I learned that all my favorite wrestlers did steroids. You're like, come on, man, you so didn't need sorry. that. <laughs> Just yes, your they... prayers and your vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, Roche, you uh-huh. don't have to do the Hojo. I mean, he'd be dead within a week if he didn't, but yeah. still it is a bummer to see him. Cause it's like, man, I feel like I need another scene just of him. Like realizing it. I maybe need to go back and rewatch that. The end of the arena scene again. If there is just some somber note to it, but just seeing him basically be like, all right, Doc. Look, no. I, I'm thrown in the towel here no, completely. not at it's, all. It's a bummer. Yeah, but there is no somber tone. Like, it was it was, this, it was the tone of just, like, mutual respect that they had. Yeah. And I thought, to the point where I thought to myself, like, oh, I can't wait to, to see, like, where Roche goes now. Because it feels like he was turning a leaf in terms of just, like, or at least to how he was facing from the party is, like, I respect you, at least, Cloud. So, therefore, like, does that give him a different role to play in the future? And yeah. uh, and the answer is yes. Not what I was thinking. No. Which is to just be like, oh, Joe. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That well, sucked. Well, 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 but maybe it'll all be good. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, more Roche. What um, are we talking about? Okay, sure. Chapter 10. Cosmo Canyon, Ross. Cosmo We're Canyon. finally here. We have talked a lot about Cosmo Canyon in bits and pieces. But yeah. yeah, we have. Yeah. It is a great chapter. Uh, this, one of my favorites so far. Uh, yes. It has so much packed into it. A lot of yeah, people were extremely uh, emotional about finally getting to Cosmo Canyon and finally hearing that music uh, in, a, in a big way here. Uh, just landing in there, exploring... Pinguini writes in, says, I cannot describe the emotions when Cosmo Canyon, the OST, started playing. Mm. You can f- you can hear it first. You can hear it first in Red 13's combat simulator, but it's only the first seven notes looping. That's right. Oh, the that's camera then yeah. shifts behind Cloud after like, you know, a little introductory thing. And right when you get control of Cloud again in Cosmo Canyon, that's when like the full thing really kicks in. Yeah. Uh, yep. And I think I think it's like oh, it has the, like the do, 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 before that, but then like when you get control of Cloud, then it's the dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. Uh, Pinguini says it's the most beautiful rendition of the town theme that one could possibly imagine. Uh, Ross, you're saying here, here. You, you hated the theme. It became grating and you hate all that uh, Cosmo Canyon stands for. No, I'm talking about the world theme in mm. the Cosmo Canyon area, not the Cosmo Canyon. The kind of I southwestern version yeah. of the overworld yep. theme that it plays. Just, it got too old. It, and it, has, it just feels. It was a I nice mean, novelty. But yeah. after my 30th Chocobo float attempt. I was too tired of it. Yes, yeah. I hear it. And like, especially in combat, it just feels like I get what they're going for. I think it works, but it does kind of feel like it's two disjointed layers of music kind of stacked on top of each other for this entire thing. Um, it I, kind of feels like the, the like there's two Cosmo Canyons. One being like the more like almost like in a weird way, like the advertised like tourist trap. And yes, then like the more spiritual yes, aspect yes, to it. Yes, 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 yes. And okay. so like those are like the two kind of like different themes that I hear. Yeah, that's right. a great, that's a great point. And you said the phrase that I was going to see if you guys felt the same way, tourist trap. Yeah. Totally yeah. felt like yeah, a tourist yeah. trap. Yes. And it ties into like the attitude of Bowie and Hagen and the other sages or planeteers. Uh, fellows, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I feel like you couldn't nail Cosmo Canyon more for like 
hitting the nostalgia, everything that's cool about Cosmo Canyon, it's here. But also but scoping it out. like a, It's so much more interesting yeah. than I could have imagined. The deal of like, yeah. okay, it's kind of, I mean, Ramen Doodles writes in and says, I love the Joshua Tree, Santa Fe vibes of Cosmo Canyon, hmm. especially right before the night scene, the sunset light across the town, all the cool hippie ornaments, sick natural looking archways, maybe want to do ayahuasca in a $25 Walmart cloud costume. <laughs> uh, no doubt about that. But I think it's that vibe of like, spiritual place interesting place also the end is like a little bit too fancy a lot of the yeah. conversations the npcs are having i'm like this it kind of feels like burning man you know it's just like everything well, i've never yeah, been to absolutely. sedona and i don't know if this is it but i think it's sedona <laughs> right yeah. right yeah. where it's like it's the fun thing of like okay i mean ronnie i feel this ties into our parents in some ways right but it's like yeah. don't you feel uh-huh. that like that we're very happy Snowbirds. in kind of well Oh, interesting. I was going more like the hippy dippy vibe. No, absolutely, absolutely. You know, but I, I guess this, I yeah. guess snowbirds in yeah. the southwest. I guess it, it very bit. much it kind of hits for where our parents are at. Yeah, but you no, know, it is very much that idea of just like this feels like my emotional home base is hippy dippy parents, hippy dippy stuff, spiritualism that I'm always going to be one toe into, one yep. toe out of. Yeah, the other ten toes. I don't know where they're eight toes. How many toes do I have? The point of this Seven. conversation is I love, and it's such an interesting, detailed way of looking at Cosmo Canyon of like, it's it's kind of sold out in some ways. And so yes. much of that is coming through Bugenhagen, yep. Hagen, however you want to pronounce it, who's always been... And also Tifa. What do you mean? I, I, so I think it's such an interesting thing where like, in a way, Tifa had a like a spiritual experience. Yes. And, and they don't she, care. And she communicates <laughs> yep. that and they don't care. Yes. yes. And I yes. think that says a lot about where Cosmo Canyon is. You yes. think of any town, any NPCs we've come across in this entire game, the Cosmo Canyon um, say, uh, people would be the most in tune with the party's mission. The planet is in danger. Right. We need to save it. But they are like... The planet is all powerful. It will heal itself. You do the the photography mission for the yes. ill omens. Yes. Their conclusion is that, see, oh, the planet as powerful as ever. Nothing right. to worry about, everybody. And, and even like Tifa's confession, like around the fire where she's talking yeah. about this and yep. trying to unpack, like, uh, I fell into the live stream, everybody. And I don't know how much I can blame just kind of the animation, and the production of the game, but like people aren't like, what? You know, it's just it's like, it's, it's, a little it's, it's bit a li- of that. It's a tiny they little, did like, like, oh, 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 one of those. Yeah. But even when Aerith later on says, I'm an ancient, they're like, okay. It's well, like, what what <laughs> is going on here, yes. you guys? Yeah. They're but too <laughs> comfortable where they are. I guess so. The, yeah. And it's just buying a, a hotel in and doing some drugs and being like, oh, I, I yeah. had a profound experience. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you haven't gone on a retreat with Ramdas? I don't know what you're doing with your life. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's that type of vibe, you know? Ramdas is cool, though. Uh, <laughs> look, I'm down with Ramdas. <laughs> So I was not expecting this angle on it at all. I don't know if it's present at all in the original no. game. But I, oh, I'd have to double check. I okay. don't think so. I don't think so. No. But I loved it. I was yeah. like, this is incredible. These stupid people living in denial. Yep. Yeah. And so, yes. And it all even it ties into Red's quest here. Nanaki's quest like is about having the courage to look at a situation from a new angle like right. is your dad a coward or could he have been doing the best he could yep. uh, mm-hmm. at the time yep. red has to be open to seeing things a different way the people of cosmo canyon are not that's a very interesting yeah uh yeah. contrast there and i think by the end like also like bugenhagen is in that space of just like i think i've like it seems to me that I've grown complacent in the way that I am thinking about right. things. Yes. So I don't want you to make that same mistake. Get out of here. Which is fascinating. I feel like that pivot came a little bit quick and out of a weird place. Sure. But I love where it opens. Drake writes in saying, Bugenhagen's kind of a dick, right? A little uh, bit. And RJ also yeah. says, does anyone hate Bugenhagen? Yeah. Um, he admits that his thinking was wrong eventually, but he never actually apologizes for anything. And then Travis Manick says, I love that... <laughs> Can we take back the best comment from the other person? Because Tra- Travis Mannix says, I feel like Booger Toboggan is a bit... 
<laughs> All right, we got him. Yeah, we got, got him, guys. Yeah. We got him. <laughs> is a bit more of a religious nut this time around. He remarks multiple times on how the team just needs more education or are ignorant as opposed right. to a source of truth about the plan of the live stream. The awkward clapping, the rituals, the attendance. I don't care what anyone says. It gives me creepy vibes. Yep. Um, that it's, it is unbelievable. And this was like, this was where I stand up and applaud playing this game is having the first encounter with Bugenhagen, who's like the wise man is going to teach you the ways of the world. That's how his role, it's how it's always been. Yeah. And immediately, well, it's like, I think you're listening to the phonograph and he's like, it's the sound of the planet. And it should be like the stupid screaming from the original game, but uh, it's the sound of the weapon. And Tifa's like, it's actually the weapons. I was actually, I just found the live stream. I was actually just carried by one. It's a whole big thing. And he's like, no, can we get her to the classes? <laughs> yeah. can, we actually, can we get her out of here? I was like, this See, is she's her. She's challenging my beliefs. Yeah. That's yeah. not allowed. Yeah. It yeah. is yeah. such an awesome angle to have for him yeah. of just so stuck in his ways. And mm -hmm. also it's just a little bit of like, okay, all right, that's nice. We're not going to accept it. And this is, Ross, I know this is a can of worms. I'm very aware of it, but evoking Last Jedi. Relax, comments. Relax. <laughs> but obviously, there's a thousand reasons to not like Last Jedi. I get it. I like yeah. the movie. Uh, but Check out our commentary on it. That's right. Commentary track available on the Patreon Game exclusive feed. podcast feed. That's true. Um, including the spoiler-filled version of this podcast. But um, I, one of the interesting things is like, oh, is Last Jedi, is Last Jedi just getting crap because ultimately it's a movie where every... Every sequence is about a woman telling a man that they're wrong. <laughs> and people hate it because of that. It's like, well, that's an interesting read on Last Jedi. I think that's accurate, but it's not obviously the overwhelming reason people hate it. But I thought of that with this because it's such a fascinating angle of just Tifa being like, no, actually, Bogenhagen, you're completely wrong. He's like, nope, like, I cannot accept <laughs> yeah. this information. Yeah. Get her out of here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, we have an ancient here and it's still like, not interested. It's yeah. such a fascinating angle. Yeah. So I'm sure that is the reason some people hate Last Jedi. Easy. Um, Easy. <laughs> Ronnie, you uh, ever talked about Last Jedi on the internet? You want to know what it's like to be thrown into Inferno? I never saw it. Are you serious? No, I Incredible. did, but I'm just going to say that. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I that is a that's a, that's an interesting comparison between the two stories. Mm. And there is definitely that um that vibe in Cosmo Canyon of you know, the gatekeeper, the old guy Guggenhagen being like, I am wise. Who's this young person coming and telling me something that I don't know? Right. No, thank you. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I disagree. And, and again, I, I didn't quite get his pivot by the end where suddenly he's like, actually, you guys are right. Maybe I should be open minded. I, I don't know where that's think, exactly coming from. I think but. he took his own medicine because I think, you know, that's yeah. the whole reason that he brings um, Nanaki, which is just Anakin with the N, move to the front of it. Oh my Had to God. say it. Uh, that's the reason. <laughs> this is all I could think about in 97. I'm sorry. Uh, that's the reason he sends him on the quest is he's like, you are stuck in your ways thinking that your dad was a good for nothing coward. So he sends him on the journey to like, right, right. to discover the truth. Yeah. And I think the process of doing that makes him realize, oh, maybe I should also be open-minded about things and consider what these people have to say. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I, I didn't think of, of his turnaround to be that, I guess, completely unfounded. And, and I also see like where that kind of comes from, but it just kind of seems like, like, yeah, his just like his knee jerk reaction is to be like that, like that does not fit within anything that I know about the planet. Right. Just, that seems weird. You you just need to learn a little bit more. But then, like, as he gets to, like, oh, wait a second. Like, these are people that are, like, have been with uh, Nanaki. And, like, the more that I, I spend time with them, like, oh, maybe they do have more insight and wisdom based on their travels than I've had because I've been here for, you know, so long. So, like, he, he just seems like a kind of, like, a critical thinker. It wouldn't take him to me like that long to realize like, Oh, am I just having this like kind of like shitty knee jerk response? Maybe I am. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you guys ever met an old person that changed their mind? Oh, crap. I'm sure it's happened. <laughs> 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 um, but just with the general attitude of Cosmo Canyon. Yeah. I, there's a Queens, but blood player there. Um, I don't remember what her name is, but you I know fight exactly her kind of on, on the main deck. She sucked. Yeah. And she she is like, Queen's blood is of the planet. Right, she is given right, right. it given to us. Like playing Queen's yeah. blood is like communing with the planet. And yeah. then when you beat her, she's like, 
You're this is a evil. dark portent. <laughs> <laughs> Queen's blood is he actually evil because you beat me? <laughs> also, I think it's actually a haunted game. I keep having these visions of yeah. this weird thing. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a great representation of just yes. like like the, the the duality of the it all, you know. Yeah, the of, fakeness. Yeah, it was just yeah. like, oh, this is actually evil. Oh, You're evil. So good. Yeah. Bobby Corwin says, uh, "There's an Bobby NPC. Corwin. Nice. There's an NPC that says, uh, you heard of Phoenix feces? Supposedly they're great for your health, but it looks like they're sold out." Is what somebody Perfect. next to the item store says. Yeah. yeah. I love. By the way, they still have um, uh, Lily. Oh, what is it? The the weapon shop. Is it like Tiger Lily or Tiger something? Tiger Lily's weapon yeah. shop. Like a yep. It's a questionable Peter Pan thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder if they're going to cut that. It's like, but oh, that, they left it in there. Yeah. That fits with the fakeness of That's exactly it. this and they're, you know, appropriating, you know, yep. indigenous mm. culture probably there. Geek culture? So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, Beto's Burrito writes in and says, Cosmo Canyon blew my socks off. In a game filled with best of all time video game towns, Cosmo Canyon might take the cake. An underrated part of the video game... An underrated part of video games is the sightseeing on a disc aspect of just checking out cool environments. And Cosmo yeah. Canyon is like an Arizona National Park tourist trap on JRPG steroids. There it is. Yep. Yeah. Nailed it. It's if I could just have a five hour documentary just about them designing Cosmo Canyon, like, don't you want to know where this tone comes from? Yeah. Like, yes, exactly. Is, is it the I thought about that writers? Well. Like, like who is actually on that team that's like this it's should be a be sold a, out American Southwest hippy dippy vibe. That's such a specific yeah. take. It works so yeah. well that, you know, it has to be intentional. I'm sure there's no accidents like this yeah. in this game. Brace Gilbert says earlier we had the crow's nest area, which was a nonviolent commune where people sat around, got high, said Queen's blood would heal the world, etc. You remember crow's nest, that whole area? Loved it. Um, Cosmo Canyon is a more establishment version of that. Our heroes come expecting to be ex- accepted, in particular Tifa and Barrett. Barrett thinks his cause is just, yeah. but uh, Cosmo Canyon is full of granola activists who criticize his radical actions. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Tifa has doubted it. their tactics since the first game, so she is primed to find common cause, but instead she finds them lacking in rising to the severity of the moment. I love the complex, complex writing here. Nojima, yeah. I see you. Who's a Fantastic comment. Yeah. And, yeah, and we'll get to this soon, I'm sure, but the conversations that you have around the the pyre at night Mm -hmm. are some of my favorite in the whole game yeah and i think it starts getting at some of the big themes of the game well we can we can talk about that now yeah because i think the tifa stuff is interesting where she's like she's trying to be really delicate of like we came here for answers like i'm frustrated i I don't i don't think you have the answers i'm not trying to insult planetology yeah i understand the Folio books got their start here. That's kind of cool. <laughs> but <laughs> we let's be those. real here. Um, yeah. And then Yuffie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You opened the can of beer. <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like picking up, oh, you're picking up the wax. Are you criticizing Uta Pills' canning process? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, Uta Pills. Yeah, just, anytime that there's like, you know, like that glue that's on cans every once in a while. They call it Uta Pills. <laughs> <laughs> glue to pills it's like glue pills eat a pill, sorry Roz I'm sorry this man interrupted you <laughs> I'm glad you got that thing open man thank you uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you talk to Yuffie you can talk to everybody around the fire right Mike, so, by the way okay, let me just interrupt you again Ross yeah. let me cut you off um, can we talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark no uh, you, you it's, sure can it's like my favorite stuff in this game the best part about Rebirth why is, are we why no it's every part no because he's going to get to his point but Every part in the game where it's just kind of like, we're in a new area, blah, and it's just, and you have to go find what every character is doing in the new environment. I feel like that's yeah. my sweet spot. It's like, because mm-hmm. everyone is going to have a little bit of character really moments. Yeah. You, know, you were saying, so yes. you find that area. So Yuffie is like, by the way, thank you, Ben. <laughs> did that add something? <laughs> yeah. Do you think it did? It was a four out of 10, but. Let's say best comment. <laughs> Okay, so Yuffie, you talk to her briefly. (laughs) She's like, what is all this nonsense? She's like a total fatalist, which makes sense when you think about her horrific backstory. Yeah. Not that everyone else doesn't also have a horrific backstory. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That's true. But also just like from her perspective, this would be the place where you'd be like, this sucks. Yeah. You know? She's like, when you die, you're dead. That's it. This is all we got. Yeah. And um, Barrett. Barrett is the one that really got me here because you talk to him. And he, they, they like gave him the um, everything happens for a reason mm-hmm. spiel. Yes. You know, yep. like 
nothing matters. The planet is so too big to fail. Yeah. It's it's so powerful, it'll heal itself. Their their whole thing here. And he is like, No. I I view Barrett as the kind of the conscience of the party a lot of times in this mm. game. Yeah. Like his his ethics are kind, dead yeah. on most of the time, I think. Yeah, they uh, yes, I think as the party as a whole, like mm-hmm. they have kind of embraced like he is the spirit oftentimes of like what they're doing. Like the driving factor moving forward oftentimes comes from like his passion for saving the planet. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was the big thing is like going into this area, I'm like, I can't wait to see what Barrett says about it. And yeah. then him just being yeah. like, I don't freaking know about this guy. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, so he instantly sees through the nonsense yes. of Cosmo Canyon. And he, his quote is, we got to fight or nothing will change. Yeah. Right. This, I think this is one of the big themes of the game you, right you, right you have to you have yep. to try you have to yeah uh, you know you have mm-hmm. to try to change things or you'll fail right and it that means a lot when we're talking about a game where we already know or you can already know what's to come yeah a game where the idea of narrative inevitability is literal that's, mm-hmm. that's the point of yeah what we're doing here yeah and so this is the start of where tons of things happen and it, it happens in the Zack interlude soon too yeah. where I'm like they are talking about changing the events of the right. game for the better whatever those might be and we can get into that in the spoiler cast afterwards for more specifics Yeah, but I'm like this is I, I'm fully on board with the message this game is like you can change things I'm fully on board with it and also the the fact that they they saw it so clearly as like, well, Cosmo Canyon in this way represents almost like a passive, like pacifism as yeah. the route forward, which is not avalanche. Right. And right. how would they react to that being told like, and, and he even, he even says this, like, as I was talking to somebody, like somebody had called him, I think like presumptuous or something like that. Do you remember? Like there was something where they said that it was presumptuous of you to think that you can save the planet because the planet doesn't right, need saving. Yeah, right. Yeah. And he was like, that's bullshit. Um, and I, I like, I applaud, <laughs> I applaud Cosmo Canyon for creating that moment where Barrett like has then renewed resolve for what he needs to do moving forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ross, you, you said something that I can't stop thinking about and maybe it's the most obvious stuff in the world, but when you talk about like, tragic backstory of Yuffie every character in the party has a big death real trauma they're trying to work through and I'm trying to think of how specific to seven that is you know it's such an interesting idea of like it's such a troubled weird group and it's just everybody has big deaths or trauma that they're trying to work through and I think that's pretty well Kate says whatever but (laughs) Kate Sith is in a stressful position, is I guess is his trauma, right? Yeah. Um, Kate Sith you can't build your relationship with either. So it's like Did you notice that? Almost uh, just no. a little a little cat face shows up when you look at everybody's a, uh relationship with you. It's a grayed out cat face. Like it that's has no inter- yeah. I, that's cool. I like mm-hmm. that. Um But no, I, that's a good point. Like Yeah. It I mean it is to some extent a JRPG thing. Yeah. Like, you know, Final Fantasy VI has a lot of that. Everybody's got a tragedy in their past that they that they have to work through. Right. And I'd imagine that like it, it, it almost becomes necessary if you're going to have a, either like a, a story sh- side shoot or just like a, a side story of just like, how are we going to develop more of this character? Well, we have to resolve something that happened in their past oftentimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I, I still want to say it's a little bit unique on that front, but it, yeah, I hear you. I think part of it, part of where you're coming from is that we have, gotten to spend so much more time with these characters in this yeah. game than you do with a lot of characters in a lot so, of yeah. other games. Yeah. And so you get more, they feel more human. Like, yeah. you know, the era thing that we'll just talk, we're, yeah. we're, we're just about to talk about with her speech at the fire. Yeah. Humanizes her incredibly well. And I think it makes tragic backstories uh, hit a lot harder when yeah. that's the case. Yeah. Bonnie, if I put a gun to your head right now, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to do it. Do I it. might. But... <laughs> Ross is <laughs> Both back in you heat. <laughs> Taciturn, comma, oh, carries pistol. Um, <laughs> Book fetish. Uh, burning. <laughs> but 
<laughs> or is it, what does your party level do in Final Fantasy VII Reaper? That's my question to you. Uh, it, it, um, it unlocks new abilities. Does it? Yep. Abilities. On the license board. Uh, or whatever. Oh, is that okay. right? Mm-hmm. I don't yep. think I registered. I didn't clock that. I just yep. see everyone's going, party leveled up. I'm like, now cool. put that gun down. <laughs> and then it puts a line to like, you know, the new limit breaks or the new. Yep. You get to see. Uh, and they're like, wait, I got to spend 20 points on this? Oh, no. Okay, a lot. When we're talking about the phoniness of Cosmo Canyon, uh, Hugo P. Arts, great artist, writes in. Yeah. They say, is it me or is Bugenhagen's giant materia fake? After the Gi and Atak boss fight, but before the Seto sequence, when there's no music playing, when old Bugen moves, you can clearly hear the same sound effects as the wheelies from Costa del Sol. Come on. Is that giant materia just what? a modified wheelie? That's it, hilarious. I actually noticed that of like, what is that? It's like, <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> what is it? And the fact that there's he not. He has to start it up with like a pole start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> But the fact that this is gonna choke it. <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Stuck in my way, Jim. Wait, 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 let's do this bad boy. Just, just Mako Fuse is going up the back. <laughs> but the fact that they didn't have a moment of of Yuffie being like. What? Big right. material? <laughs> like, good, there's yeah. not a millisecond of that. And missed opportunity, you're right? I feel like this is Yuffie. I'm enjoying her in this game, but I feel like for so much uh, of this game, she's she's turning into Scooby with Scooby snacks. Yeah, her, her jaw is dropping, her yeah. eyes are popping yeah, out. Yeah, it's like, I don't. Awooga. Especially like, yeah. hey, Yuffie, I've got seven empowerment materials just sitting in my inventory that are doing I'll, I'll give you two of them. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. I don't, there's a lot of just weird words for this material that uh, I can swap yeah. my magic and attack. I don't know what that is. Just take all this crap I'm not using. If it's Do you not, want breach? <laughs> last call for breach? <laughs> It's just, it's, yeah. That's the one note. We're like, also, dumb question. You call me idiotic. Why does she want materia <laughs> to help win the war? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's like crap. A child's view of how to get stronger. You got, you just get more of the powerful thing, right? I guess. So. And also, I mean, like, it is a part of her mission, right? From, yeah, she from, does. She does mention that, I guess. And and I guess we don't really know too much, but w- at least we know. That there, I mean, there are other people in the world that can corroborate that she is on a mission. <laughs> so, so we're that, treating her like cloud at this point. Like, uh, <laughs> there's a part of me. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we haven't mentioned. I mean, the big question. I mean, ever since we played this game in 1997. Yep. What is Bugenhagen going to sound like? Nailed it. Yeah, they did. Like, yes. You know, Grant was saying, "Is it going to sound like George from Seinfeld?" Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Bugenhagen's getting upset. And it's it's not it's perfect. It, it feels like it's a hard line delivery because in the original, yeah. if you never played it, it's a lot of ho 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 ho. Yeah. And just to have an old man like ho ho ho, like yeah. he, 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 it's his opening line. And right when I heard, it, I was like ten out of ten. It's yeah, like exactly. They got it. They got it. I didn't think he was going to be blind. It is. I weird. think that was kind of an interesting because in the original, like he does have these like really really dark sunglasses. Yeah. So. Cool. Cool sunglasses, obviously. Yeah. Um, also, before we get to uh, kind of some some meteor stuff, because I want to talk about not meteor, but I want to talk about the the sitting around the campfire and stuff. Yeah. But uh, Jiren writes in and says the choir in Cosmo Canyon's Inn is singing the opening hymn from Advent Children, which is called Promised Land. Oh. An, an instrumental re- rendition of this is used again in side quests after the events in this town. Um, also, it's in the beginning of remake. They play Promised Land. Awesome. Uh, oh, wow. To have music okay. from Advent Children, the fact that it's in the inn. People people are a big fan of that choir from yeah. Advent Children. Did you guys uh, get the song, the piano song in this yes. and try to play it? The, yes. The it two legs so or whatever. Hard. Yep. I, I did not. I completely not, yeah. with you. Um, yep. I feel like I've been nailing that piano sequence. Yep. Um, and Crap. then that was the one that I was like, I can't do it. You know, how, uh, many, how many times were the Chocobo one? You know... I Somebody else was tough. complaining about that. Um, oh, and stuff. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, not that many. I don't think. Wow. All right. Yeah, I don't know if I had to do any of them more than one until this one, which yeah. I had to do a dozen times. Yeah, two wow. legs, nothing to it. And it's one yep. of those songs where it's like I liked it um, because it's like, oh, it kind of makes me appreciate that song. Yeah. Because in my mind, it's like, oh, that's like the goofy song that you know. But then I forgot it has that whole sequence later on, like. 
feel like I always forget how cool this song is yeah. in seven. That's true. Th- this part right here. That'd be really tough, yeah. It's okay. so good, but yeah, this song kicked my butt. It's also really frustrating because it feels like if you miss one note, you miss the next three notes automatically right, in this mini sure. game. Right. Um, I got bad news for you, Ross. What's that? Uh, somebody wrote in with a very important note about this exact thing. Oh. Um, Mick Dozewell writes in about Cinco de Chocchio. Chocobo. They say, please tell me I'm not the only one who just noticed that when doing the Cinco de Chocobo theme on the piano, you can actually change the speed of the notes and make the minigame much easier. If you go one notch forward, it becomes one e- much easier, I think. Wait, I haven't done that. So when yep. you're choosing, you're like setting up the song. Yep. You can choose note speed, kind of like how you what? can in Rock Band. Um, I it- always thought it was like started off as the easiest, but it's not. No. Oh, wow. No, okay. it's just the speed with which the notes come down the thing. Oh, and I found the wow. sweet spot was the just the second position because they got too fast for me. But it helped a lot with the parts where you have notes um, in succession on both thumbs. It helped a lot determining which order they should be played in. Okay, so, sure. So that helped a lot for me. Sure. I kind of think if you're going to have a mini game or rhythm mini game that is this tricky that you you should be required to have a rock band style calibration auto calibration setting in your game a little bit to match your audio and visual because i'm sure that's part of the problem for a lot of people could be yeah Yeah. because i could only beat this one when i muted the tv and just did it by sight oh really Really? okay well that's that's and then i beat it easily yeah wow of course i'd done it a dozen times by sure so that helped too i'm sure but yeah uh, no, another thing that made me angry at Cosmo Canyon. I'm like, <laughs> oh. Uh, Seth Palmer. By the way, quick detour. You know at the beginning of this episode where we're like, shout out to Grant's baby girl? Yeah. Um, and we talked about that was the secret black diamond of mapping out this entire deepest dive and all yep. that stuff was trying to map out a uh, birth schedule for rebirth. Shout out to Ronnie here. The mm. other secret part that I don't think we've talked about on air. Oh, right. Is Ronnie's moved? <laughs> so the reason Ronnie hasn't played some of these side quests is he literally was moving yeah. to a town thirty minutes away, yeah, and yeah. trying to juggle moving yeah. while getting through thirty hours of rebirth content. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. thank you, That's thank awesome. you, thank you. Jesus yeah. Christ, man. Yeah. yeah. The chocobo well. overturned the cart with all his possessions <laughs> a dozen times. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was yeah, it was it was pretty rough. Uh there was there, <laughs> there, there was a week in there that I think I got about an hour of gameplay in there. Oh. Uh uh so I I yeah, got through as much as I could. Um things have, have finally kind of settled down and You just to do some side con- content. Yeah, and so I, like I'm I like I got through quite a bit, but there's still you know, I I think a lot kind of still on there. Uh and what I'm kind of excited about though is like I don't know if I have just this assumption in my 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 brain that we're not going to any other like big open world locations. It's a great question. There's still one misty region in the north of the continent. It's like I guess they Could, save that. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. So I don't know, but I like, don't know either. It feels like there's no more of it. To I me agree. After Nibelheim. I think you're right. So yeah, and there's there's those like little indications. I mean, one. I like concluded that after doing all the mog houses and then like you're done mm-hmm. and it's like okay fantastic so but so yeah, now that I, is yeah you can judge a lot of your life by by the mog, mog houses house. yeah mm-hmm. Kupopo right. <laughs> nailed it so <laughs> so anyways uh, yeah I, I'm kind of like looking forward to the, uh, the next stream that we're doing is in 12 days yeah what was you, there's, you know there's more we have to talk about here though right <laughs> So I gotta go to bed. <laughs> no, uh, and then there was two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go back and and do some of the side content, and I'm I'm kind of excited. Oh, Judging yeah, yeah. by the empty trophy spots at Johnny's oh, Seaside oh, Via, yeah. lot, um, there's gonna be new content in all the Gold Saucer side games and stuff like that. Okay, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, like yeah. there's a spot for a new box breaking trophy from the Dust Bowl. <laughs> Perfect. There's yeah, there's a bunch of Queen's Blood spots, stuff like that. Perfect. Yeah. MTV Laguna Beach, great screen name on Twitch. They say Ronnie isn't playing life on easy mode. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh Seth Palmer writes in, Thank you, "Have you ever way. played Life on Easy Mode?" Me? Yeah. 
<laughs> what do you think was the easiest part of your life? I think it's called being a white man. Hey. <laughs> hey. You played a new South Park game, by the way? No. Have you? Yeah, it's not good. But... <laughs> that's, but what, remember, I, that's, that's what I've heard. We were just talking about in Fractured Butthole. Remember, that was the difficulty slider is you change your oh, race. There... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, so was, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Randy, stop talking about your life. I'm trying to write in. <laughs> Seth Palmer submits a comment on Patreon. They say, Chapter 10 wrecked me. The River of Lights is one of the most beautiful and emotional moments I've ever experienced in a game. Being able to encourage Aerith during her speech as Cloud and seeing her face light up and say, yeah. and for once, I think I'm okay. Happy even. It melted my soul. The music, visuals, and presentation of this section are next level and perfectly encapsulates what makes this remake trilogy so special. That's not even getting into Nanaki's arc. The chapter is perfect from start to finish. Yes. Yeah. What did you guys do when you can react to Aerith before she starts her speech? I chose to smile at her and Cloud trying to smile <laughs> is one of my favorite moments of the game so far. I, He's like... How does it, you know, it's like, you <laughs> yeah, can see on his face, a, he's he like, can how does this work? He does something cool physically. Yes. That's the only thing that he'll smirk at. Yeah. But him trying to encourage a loved one through but, smirking, not, not possible. <laughs> but what did he, I, I did the one, it was like encourage or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Like it wasn't smile, I, yeah. but it was like encourage. And he says something. It doesn't he say is like, encourage. <laughs> he says, encourage. I'm, uh, I'm no, he, he, he says, it. he says like, it's all right or it's okay or something like that. Yeah. And, and yep. she, you know, smiles back and yeah. yeah. Moments of cloud being a good friend are like the fireworks display of this game. Like for, we talked about Barrett last time when he's like, we're here for you, man. Right. I mean, it. yes. <laughs> You're yep. like, yes, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. It's perfect. Doing so good. I like even there's a, I think it's in combat, but earlier in chapter nine, do you guys remember chapter nine? Kate Seth and Barrett are fighting to each other. And just like, there's some exchange between them where I was like, God, this melts my heart where Barrett and Kate Seth are just talking. And there's something like, it's like, you got me. And the case is like, I got your back. It's like that type of, it's like the little like affirmations mm -hmm. between the party. It's like, that is what this yeah. game is. If, that, yep. if you are not into that, I get why you're not into this game. Yeah. Um, so uh, EJC writes in and says, I was worried about, I was worried my bond with Aerith was too high. A lot of people are worried about this. I was worried my bond with Aerith was too high as I'm hoping I'll get more romance stuff with Cloud and Tifa. Uh, so during Aerith's big speech during the Cosmo Canyon light ceremony, I went with what seemed like the most negative dialogue prompt. Wow. So after her heartfelt admission of being an ancient, how traumatic her life has been, Cloud basically says, hey, stop talking. <laughs> That's it felt so messed up, but also since it was such a tonal spiking of the football compared to Aerith pouring her heart out, it cracked me up. Makes me kind of <laughs> curious to see a run where Cloud is just as awful as he can be to everybody in these moments. <laughs> wow. That's... Hey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's embarrassed of you. <laughs> like, can you imagine? No, it's like, horrible. <laughs> just in the most heartfelt speech in the entire game. Yeah, yeah. Just... yeah but her, the core of the speech is like, you know, this was a real curse. I feel like I was cursed with this ancient blood and now I realize like, it, but it has led to me making some good friends along yeah. the way. So yeah. it's all she's like it. trying to come to terms with her life and you know, it explains why she's so enthusiastic about everything in the entire game. Every activity there is to do everything else. Right. Yeah. Is that she just, she's like, I'm trying to make the most of what I've been given. Yeah. And that phrase for me, I was like, ah, Aerith, she's great. And I think yes. it, it did renew for me about like how, because I have been so in Camp Tifa for a long time where it's just like... Hello, Mudda. <laughs> and and Aerith is... This <laughs> Hello, Fada. <laughs> Here I am at... Camp 3? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, oh, wait, no, I freaking love Aerith. Like, as, as well. And how well they've nailed her personality and yeah. just like her heart and spirit in this in this game is just incredible and especially thinking about her being <laughs> i feel like all these games so far has just been Aerith being like i was so lonely <laughs> yes <laughs> and so they i think mean, get me in a cage but at, that adds so much extra oomph and the fun part is that adds the oomph to her relationship with zach if she's the loneliest person in the world yeah. then she meets somebody that falls in love with her and she's in love with him yeah like how impactful that would be for her to lose him, how devastating then to have would be. Cloud come along and be like, yeah. he kind of feels like Zach. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. like it's it very just, true. It all fuels the same stuff, you know. Yeah, which is smart and fun. It's smart and fun. Also, 
we should be we should be thrown into the live stream and not the good one the one with a bunch of Ooh, evil no. whispers coming at you Uh-oh. for Ooh. not talking about the freaking the the bell of the ball here ron the whole sequence in the what's that called <laughs> cantina no come on Roz. live stream what is it called when you're give me a chapter <laughs> first of all you need to back off <laughs> No, we're gonna get through this. No. What are we doing? Here? The <laughs> the observatory. The observatory. That's what I'm looking for. Of having Boogan pass. And- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the coolest cutscenes in the original, and the fact yep. that they recreate it all. Oh crap! Through yeah, such exquisite no. detail, the it fact was so that, good. I mean, the weird black oh, hole yeah. that absorbs it, like that level of recreation of like having the people sprout out out of the ground as Bugenhagen is walking through this whole thing and. It's awesome that in the first one, it's just like, wow, this is incredible. And then in this one, it looks great. The characters are literally like, what? Like, Cloud is blown away by that whole thing. But there's also an underlying, like, this guy's kind of full of it. Like, and that we know, <laughs> yeah. like, as the player, because there's interaction with Tifa going into the section. But seeing that observatory sequence and that uh, fidelity was awesome. Yeah, I even wrote on, in my notes, make sure to talk about this. Uh- <laughs> It was, it was, I, I, I don't really have anything else to add other than that was, that felt like, you were digging through your notes to say talk about the observatory. Uh, that felt planetarium's like. Planetarium's a better word for it. Yeah. The planetarium. And planetarium. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it felt like that was the scene how, you, you remember in remake how you were so enamored by the Cetra Oh my just god! Like, We're getting to it. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. It. yeah. Like that's what this, like this little that was, that was that, f- that was that for me in this game. <laughs> Slow that down. That sounds awful. Wait, but you see what I'm saying? Is like in in remake that scene with in, the flashback of the Cetra. That was as impactful that was as so the planetarium impact, scene. That was so impactful for you. In the original, like, yeah. yes. And and the, the planetarium scene just was like, I, like with the music. Yeah. And just like, yeah, it's yeah. incredible. And seeing the entire solar system, and I'm just nobody else is like, what are the other planets? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's just so much. There's so much to unpack. Oh, you know, is, Gi Mars? They yeah. call it. Is this where he explains <laughs> that the Gi are basically aliens? No, I think that's kind of coming that later. later. You okay. think he would have mentioned that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's not that interested. Uh, we have buried the lead, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, Red Thirteen. <laughs> he's actually a kid he's actually a goddamn kid not only that I mean we yeah. talked about in the last episode of like hey I think he's the one with that uh, that little baby voice what, what do you think Ron how's that how's that feel to Red 13's journey here mm. Ooh. Um, I don't know like it's this kitty has claws <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I just I <sighs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm having a little bit of a tough time. Yeah. Um, it, it mo- more so, it's like, this feels just like crappy to say, but like, I'm just like not as enamored by the performance. Yeah. I guess. Yep. And, and, yep. and so like that just kind of like, I don't know, it just kind of like, it starts taking me out of it a little bit. I was just like, oh yeah, there's a, there's a guy behind this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and don't, I don't you like my puppet yeah, yeah that's that's the thing that like I, I i find my brain kind of like doing that and, and i don't know if that's that could be less about the performance and more about just like the, the like the the choice to change his voice yes. so f- f- like so far down the line yeah um so it, but I, I i almost kind of feel like then the performance gets the brunt of that decision um and i don't know if that's fair yeah yeah it's it's an interesting idea we talked about it before like that's a fascinating idea of like he is playing a role trying to seem like the wise old yeah lab rat dog i think that's really cool and i had forgotten all about this when like we, i brought up in the chapter two through four discussion about yeah. him talking, trying to sound smart when he's talking about there's only two ways off this continent. Right. By oh, air yeah. or by water. Right. Yeah. You know, right. and he's yeah. like trying to be a smart it's like guy. like really playing it up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like it's, a it's wise. Apart. Yeah. I, I, I like the idea of it. I like almost everything about it. I like the twist. I like everything. I just feel like it's the same voice actor that's doing both, which is, it is helps. it really? It is. Yeah. The and the weirdest thing, and this is like, it feels like it's a spoiler, but 
you know, when I was at that preview event and all the voice actors were there, I talked a little bit to the voice actor for Red 13. He, he signed something which we're going to be auctioning off during our Give to the Max awesome. charity stream. Yeah, okay. Um, come and play this here at Min Max. Look, look forward to it. But um, he had a really... He, his default voice was a lot closer to the young Nanaki voice. I won. Okay. I mean, and so I was like, because I was like, this is weird to have Red's voice be that. Um, and so the fact that like when they cast him, did they factor that in for remake then? But here's here's I overall. Is, I, I'm on board to. for the idea. I just wish, you know, it's a range from about a nine to a two. And I wish it was a range in vocal for performance from a seven to a four. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. just wish it was like, him just acting he should uh, be a yes. mature 16 year old or 15 year old or whatever <laughs> yeah, and it sounds yeah. like instead he's, of golly gee whiz yeah, Mr. Yes. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds like mickey mouse that. at times you know yeah uh, 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 it's it's a lot to swallow here's here's something for you ronnie yeah um tim kim writes in and says the switch in red's character is more clearly conveyed in rebirth which is something that's lost in translation in the original in the original game after the events of cosmo canyon red in Japanese, changes his personal pronoun from Watashi to Oira. Sorry, I'm blowing it. Um, which, according to Tim Rogers, who did a whole video about translating Final Fantasy yeah. VII, the original, is what a cute little happy, tiny, chubby baby boy child would use. <laughs> really? So in the original, that's, so they they it's indicate there. it in, in some way. Okay, that that makes me feel a little bit better. I, I think in terms of just like like where it came from, and that that's, that was that's the that idea. was again lost in translation. By the way, have you watched that series by? Tim Tim Rogers Tim Rogers I've, I've watched some of it it's so good you've, you've I've watched it all not did you Let's really Mosey. yeah whoa so Let's okay yeah. yeah it's so good wow yeah. um yeah so I wish he did more actually because he, he didn't well, he does a lot of other videos you know oh okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so one of the things I appreciate with the voice switch is that I think he recorded all his he battle did. dialogue in both voices yes because yeah. i think he's saying the exact same stuff yep. after this point but in the kid voice not only that Chaz cheeto writes in and says post learning about red's real voice in chapter 10 i went back to gangaga and completed the yep, chicken side too. quest the remaining scenes of it all had red speaking in his true voice oh i'd imagine gosh. that they went through the trouble of recording two different versions of his dialogue for that quest and they similarly did the work of all earlier side content involving red it's such an odd thing i did the exact incredible. same thing exact same thing yeah did went back and did the chicken quest and it was in yeah. the cute cute chubby baby yeah baby boy voice i just I, it feels like the characters weren't reacting as much as they should it was just kind of like oh okay you know but it wasn't like oh, what is happening and i guess that's part of just barrett like, kind of barrett it, gave the most you know, but yeah. even then wasn't like this is a completely different character at this point yeah um so let's see uh some people liked it uh ross w says i love the juxtaposition of seeing a seemingly old and wise creature who turns out is really a teenager so it makes you see everything he says in a new light. Having him actually sound and look like a teen just isn't working for me. Look, I hear you. Yeah. Um, here we go. Let's see. Somebody had a... There's a lot of great points. Randolph Sparks. Red 13's new voice is such a massive down, downgrade. You bet your sweet bippy that if I could make my voice sound thayer, sexy, and badass all the time, I'd never use my regular voice again, especially when I was 16. I hear you. Hang on. There's one point I'm looking for that's going to be... Okay. John Skovic says, between the annoying new voice and a very boring forced dungeon when he already had my least favorite gameplay, Nanaki has shot down to my bottom, to the bottom of my list for party members. Mm. Aren't you supposed to like party characters more after their focused chapters? That's a great point. Also, it is a great point, but, and also I, I think then it kind of lends itself to like how they handle that transition because he becomes a completely... In a way, like his personality completely changes. He's just full. He, I mean, I mean, it kind of pays off him growling at everybody throughout the entire game. Like, I'm not a dog. I'm not a dog. And now yeah. he's just baby puppy boy. Please pet me, daddy. Like that's his entire energy now. <laughs> yeah, it's really odd. True. In the proto relic quest in the next chapter, the Nibelheim chapter. Yeah. When you're like rounding up the the black robes and you're following them, um, there's a po point where the somebody asks him to do something like. Uh, I don't remember what the ask is, but it's like some kind of like, you know, grunt work task. And he's like, oh, I should have I should have kept up the wise old man. Right. Shtick. right. Yes. They, it was you know, like nice. they wouldn't have asked me to do this. So. Yes. Uh, it was. Well, he's like, well, if you're bored, you can just uh, go ahead and do recon. Yeah. It was something like that. Okay, and he's yeah. Like, I should have just. Yeah. Uh, Josh says, so the reason Red 13 changes his voice is to seem more adult. 
Why does he go by Red 13 and not tell his buddies his actual name is Nanaki? Did I miss something? The threads of this lore are endless. Um, it is interesting. In, in Remake, I went back and watched the scene where they met him. And it is like, oh, I see the tattoo. Number 13, Red 13. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Tifa goes like, well, surely there's like, so if this is Hojo's, like, well, you have another name then. And then like an explosion happens and they get distracted. So like, oh, Tifa's okay. trying yeah. to like open it up. Um, Andrea and Angie... R writes in and says, I feel so vindicated. I cannot imagine this, what this person went through. They say, now I know for sure that it's pronounced Nanaki and yeah. not Nanaki, which is how ah, I pronounce it. That's how I said it, Nanaki, yeah. Which is how everyone else pronounces it. I named my dog Nanaki. <laughs> cool. Uh, which is a red Akita, by the way. And I've been forever <sighs> cursed to hear people mispronounce his name every time he is called for his turn at agility competitions. <laughs> And now oh. I can correct them with confidence. So to name your dog Nanaki and insist that it's Nanaki, that is that is a gamble, baby. Yeah, but that's very yeah, good. It really pays off. Nanaki is probably more true to like the Japanese pronunciation, maybe. I can see that. Nanaki yeah. is like... Yeah, yeah. I can see it. Um, I loved um, the environment art in Cosmic Canyon's great. Uh, Bugenhagen, that entire... When you're just like walking around exploring and like looking at all these trinkets. And it's like, here's the first ever Mako detector. I'm like... Well, that's going to be a side quest coming up soon. Uh, but like <laughs> the, the art in that place is so cool. Having the big like dragon skeleton, and all yeah. of like yep. all of the like weird vinyl albums, and then you go uh, into like the secret catacomb area or whatever. Like check out my hidden area, um, and I love like in there. There's just like a big picture, and it looks like a photograph from the '70s that's of Seto. It's like this Real cool. coolest yeah, cool. environment yeah. art. Nice. Oh my god, it's so cool. Um, Brian Stanley writes in. When I walked on the yellow walls as Red 13 in that quest, Barrett occasionally remarked, I only got two legs, you know. Yeah. Yep. This, over and over and over again. This yes, confused me. If Barrett had more than two legs, could he also walk on walls? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's what he thinks, apparently. Yeah. Uh, By the way, like, did they previously establish that Barrett and Red 13 didn't see eye to eye? They didn't really like mean? each other? No, I don't think so. Did you get that vibe? Because like, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like, like Barrett says at one point in time, like, just like when Bugenhagen was was saying, um, like, oh, you need to have somebody else, and like Glove's like, I'll do it, and he's like, oh, 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 oh. yeah, he's like, that's basically you too can't, easy. You, yeah, you can't, he's like, it'd be meaningless if you're the observer. Is yeah, so it's yeah. gonna be Barrett, and then and then rather or Nanaki was just like, ah, and and Barrett's just like, you can at least try, like, pretend that you don't like me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Oh, I guess it didn't sink in, but that's interesting, because they went on that little mithril mine, but they were quiet during the mithril mine section, so maybe yeah, that's what Yeah, yeah, that, well, that was the thing, like, yeah. Um, by the way, how, how spoiled are we to to have this game, to have this game, game be this in-depth on all these things that we remember <laughs> from? It is, I just keep thinking about it, like, every time I get a little bit fried by just how many hours it is, like, yeah. oh my god, they're just, they're spoiling me for a hundred hours. It's that's ridiculous. True. I want more. <laughs> <laughs> I want the world map. Uh, Bob Yule, did anyone try the X potion trick on the Gi Natak? It was the wow. one. It was a one hit KO in the original Undead. '97 game. Yeah, so I had to try it here, but it only does like a thousand damage to the boss uh, instead. The fact, okay, the fa- yeah, cool. that's wonderful. I did, Bob. I tried I that immediately. Did you did too? Yeah, because wow, okay, I just played good. that game with Grant. You know, streamed through sure, that section, yep. so we just did that. So I was like, oh, X potion and. I was a little frustrated. Like, wh- why not leave that in there? It's such a fun, goofy thing that if you yeah. use the healing item on the undead, it kills them immediately. It's such a fun idea. Yeah. But I understand. You got to make a, a whole game. Um, that whole dungeon <laughs> area. It's just not enough. I, I like the dungeon area. Like, the music, they're really laying into the, the choir and all that stuff. But it's, it yep. felt like a mini Zelda dungeon, which I was a way yeah. for. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yep, it was fun. Uh, Ronnie, hmm. end of the dungeon. Seto, everything. How are you feeling? Yeah, <laughs> this is this is one of those things where um, uh, it kind of gets you, you know, a little bit. Uh, this is this is one of those moments where uh, Grant actually <laughs> Grant texted me and just was like, uh, "Was the Seto um, scene was that emotional? Was that sentimental for Ooh. you? You know, it's yeah. just like, or he's like, or am I just going through it? Oh, with the new baby, <laughs> yeah, with the new baby, and it's just like." I think a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Like yeah. it's it it was emotional. I, I I would imagine it was probably more emotional for Grant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But it was. It, you know yeah. what? Here's. Do you think Grant liked Barrett 
put on his sunglasses for that because it was too much to handle. Ah, yeah. Which he did do. It's it's really he did. Sunglasses watch. We talk about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's so yeah, good. It's, yep. I, I hate, I don't want to be this person, but I was like, that scene still gets me in the original. Like, I love that whole Seto crying scene. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Um, and when it cut to red and the music is so damn good and he starts to like run towards the statue, like, I am Nanaki, the watcher of Cosmo Can't. Like that entire sequence, I was like, they're gonna they're gonna hit the music at a ten out of ten, and I'm gonna melt. Mm-hmm. And they didn't like mm-hmm. they didn't hit the music with like a gut punch in that moment. And they know what they're doing a thousand times more than I do, so I won't yeah. question it. But like the music, I was emotional going in, and I was waiting for like if they just they hit the drums, they hit it, yeah. it's gonna floor me. And it went from like oh softer musical impact than I thought. Yeah, you get the tears. And then I felt like it was such a quick pivot to Bugenhagen being like, I was wrong. Literally, now 20 seconds later, I'm the gi and I'm alive again. It's like, <laughs> yeah, and the what guy, is and this? And the is like, you should follow that guy. Yeah, yeah. But that was just like, <laughs> just see what happens, guys. Yeah. Like, if they were to hit the music and let you soak in that just for a second yeah. longer, it yep. would have, I like, tears were literally welling up, then they receded back. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jordan Kirk, it worked for them. Set a reveal in the cave of the Gi, got me just like it did in the OG playthrough. But could there maybe, oh, could there maybe have left the emotional resonance ring for a couple, for one more second? There we go. It's yeah. one howl. Then we interrupt this emotional broadcast to give you the new, admittedly cool Gi lore. Also, Gina Talk is the same voice. This is this is the good stuff. Gina Talk, the same voice as the remake reveal trailer. Wow. Because I was trying yeah, to think, it, was like, yeah, it sounds totally so right. familiar, but yeah. like Red was narrating the Rebirth kind of recap, but the first reveal trailer of like, they're back. Yep. And you're not going to believe what they're going to do this time. <laughs> or whatever the hell it was. Like, no, like that's the whole word cryptic- for word. <laughs> wow. And wait till they run into me. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, Christopher Reardon says, am I headed to Thirst Council Jail? Or is Gina Talk kind of a hot tamale now? <laughs> his voice, his mysterious undead nature, the way he tells Yuffie to be quiet are all kind of working for me. Yeah, because <laughs> Reardon, um, yeah, that, he, look, I don't want to tell anybody their sexuality is wrong, but yeah, that one's wrong. Um, <laughs> no! <laughs> I will give That's Gina Talk say. this. He, he is uh, one of the three best Queen's Blood cards. Oh, do, do you have him in your I don't know. Where do you find him? He might have been from a challenge or, or beating somebody, no, but we're gonna have to. He is one of those cards that is like a replacement card where you put it on top oh, of a card of yeah. yours that already exists, and he takes the power of the card that you replace and puts it on both the card above him and bottom of him. Dang. So if you put him on like a on if free at very, power twenty, yeah, exactly. You're you're putting 20 on top and 20 on bottom. I've won Hot tamale. I've won a dozen battles that I would have otherwise lost if not I, for my man Key. But by, by the way, Russ, what, what's what's your top score now of beating uh Link something Blood? like 72 to nothing on wow. a normal battle? Are you kidding me? Yeah, Gee can Gee can make it happen. For All right. Gee can well, make it happen. Yep, you have you have Gee, you have Ifrit. Yep. And you have Chocobo Moogle still. Yeah. Oh yeah. And um yeah, and the concierge uh, oh, from any. the haunted hotel puts four uh, enhancement spots out on the board, so he's really good. I, I, here's my, I have like none of those cards. Yeah. I, I think I have them. <laughs> here's my problem: is I love playing Queen's Blood, but like I'm not into deck building in any game. So I was like, just give me the pre-built thing. And so I've been trying to kind yeah. of work my way through that, but yeah. I, I just like I have a very very basic deck, but I've hit the point of like, okay, I need to have the replacement cards now. Like that's essential at this point in the game, but it's still yeah. like. I don't know the Shinra soldier with the whole cross thing. Like I like having those guys out. What? There. I've got yeah, one no, of them kidding. in my deck. Just one? sometimes okay. you just need a yeah, yeah, one you just, yep, you just guy really who can, yeah put some stuff out there. But yeah, uh, do do the enhancement deck have it created for you, and then yeah. just replace the cards you know are not great with the cards in your deck that you know are yeah. like five of them, and you'll be good to go. I, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Do you use Titan? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. Pretty pretty useful still. Yep. Mm. Um, so then this is where things get weird again, where the kid says, I'm alive. Come this way. And then come and says, Hey, yeah, come on over, baby. Go in there. And then I want someone to do a super cut. I'm sure it exists of every time Sephiroth appears in this game, because it is, it is hilarious how many times it's just like Sephiroth popping in for five seconds. To be like, Pretty soon, Cloud. Yeah, the black what? materia, Cloud. Give it to me, big time. Okay, bye. <laughs> it is, and this is, if I may, small criticism, like, 
we shouldn't forget a Sephiroth appearance. And at this point, oh, Roddy, right. how many times has he appeared? D- um, honest guess. Mm, 19 times. <laughs> That's what I That's insane. Say, but it's okay. like a blur. It's like uh, he's popping in and out so yeah. often. It's like whatever. But ever they need like an extra boost for like motivations here a little bit low. Just have Sephiroth appear in a doorway and be like, right this way, sir. Yeah. 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 And it works. Like we should go through that doorway. Right, right, right. So he appears in this, and so Cloud's like, well, I gotta go. Uh, and so you're going through and jumping in that boat to go to whatever the hell the Gi homeland. My, yeah, I think it's awesome. I think it's so weird. It feels like an entire section that we should have only discovered through concept art of the sections they cut after the game released very Th- didn't well it feel put. like yes, that yes, like, yes, yeah. you, you're taking time for a whole gi, gi yeah, side yeah. quest yeah but then the more i was thinking about it, i'm like no the gi are a really brilliant choice here because it ties everything together in a bunch of freaky ways like it's like red 13 story obviously for the gi backstory with his dad Yep. Uh, Yuffie because they tease and the her, materia and she's like I need that materia hunt yep, and her fatalist opinions okay there we go uh, ties in Aerith because the connection to the Cetra ties in Kate Sith because they tie into like you're also not alive buddy you're also not of this world yeah. uh, ties in Cloud because of the black materia it's just like this perfect Venn diagram of like yeah, of course we should expand on the gi. Everybody can connect to it emotionally. Yeah, but they, ties they, in Barrett because he loves to ride on boats. <laughs> <laughs> we such a boat guy. Uh, Surprised but, he didn't put his sailor suit back on. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. Be like at some point, he'd be like, "Should I put it back on?" And then you see the gi, just like ah. <laughs> <laughs> the gi, just was like, "Yes, <laughs> a noble soul." <laughs> but, cool uh, hook hand. But, but Who I, put I, it on. I would imagine that also because this is a an otherworldly spiritual entity that they are interacting with that has more knowledge than they do. And so in a way that, that being can consecrate pieces of knowledge that we may have suspected, but now do know. So like one thing that I I think about, (laughs) this doesn't really tie into what I just said, but I, I just need to say it. Because it, it it represents it's about maybe, Last Jedi. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Uh, it's just the freaking moment where they're talking about the Cetra, and Era goes, "I'm the Cetra. Am I intolerant? <laughs> yeah. It's her main yeah, move. Yeah, yeah, she's like, oh, am back. I a dumbass? Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, am I intolerant? It ties yeah. back to the beginning. I mean, just chapter. And one, what are they? Yeah. And what are they? Gonna, he like sits there and he just like stared at her. And he's like, "No, nope, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be. Stop talking." <laughs> he has his own dialogue option. Uh, yeah, I was. Look, I think that section is super cool and weird and funky. And I loved it. I was. It didn't overstay its welcome. No, too, that's which true. I appreciated. I was about to fall out of my chair because Grant, friend of the show, I remember him. He he texted me because he played through all these chapters and he texted me before I got to the section where he said like he's like where are you at? I'm like I started chapter ten and he goes a lot of cool stuff coming up. And so then that's 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 the poison in my mind of like oh my god there's gonna be some mind-bending stuff so when this boat was heading they're like let's talk about the gi and the history of the gi and the cetera i was like is this gonna be a time travel sequence and we're gonna go back to that fantasy cetera thing that we saw in the shinra museum tour i was fully prepared for like we're going back there and then it's just like here's a bunch of fiery arenas and you fight some guys <laughs> and learn a little bit it's fine but i was building <laughs> up in mind with like oh my god this is gonna be flashback to fantasy so Final you, fantasy took, world. you took the words a <laughs> lot of cool stuff <laughs> yeah, and you thought, brought it in you whoa when it's building Wait. up we're getting on a fantastical boat about to see some fantastical stuff that involved the gi and the cetera no, back again in the day. again yep. again go back to the source of what what grant said is a lot of cool stuff coming <laughs> up <laughs> and your brain went wild it went that's, too wild that's, yeah. it went too wild you saw Yuffie standing at the prow of that boat like Washington it, crossing yeah, the yeah, Delaware yeah, yeah. and you're like here we go baby <laughs> so good and then you get there and they have their own little bench and their own little vending machine which, yeah. which uh, I appreciate it yeah I think that's really handy. and an Echo and the Bunnymen song starts playing it sounds like <laughs> but I was I was uh, in love with that idea and of course this game's so much smarter than I could ever be but when they are talking about the history of the Gi I was like I genuinely was thinking like wait what did the Gia know the Cetra? What does that overlap? And then it's like, oh, of course, that's the entire premise of this is the idea that the Cetra had to contain the Gi and then they got it out of control after they died off and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, Ricky Maru writes in and says, I love getting the context for the black materia with the Gi and the Cetra. It makes me feel for the Gi as we know what they know why they want it, but at what cost? 
Barrett still trusts Cloud in these moments, even with him acting strange. He says he'll always be there for mm. Cloud, and it's something I never would have expected with how little trust they had in Remake. Also, Aerith at one point says, Kate Sith properly is catch she. Did anyone else catch that? I didn't catch that. No, I didn't. In this section. No, Apparently, Rick yeah. and Rue got that. That's nice. Wow, interesting. That's cool. I do like how hard the Ghee go in asking, like, hey, just get that black materia for us. They're Are like, you going to get that black materia <laughs> yeah. or they're they're not? Like, they're like, Aerith, we will stop hating your people. All you got to do is help us destroy everything. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Did, um, Ron, did black materia have a connection to the gi in the original? I don't no. remember that at all. No. It's a oh, smart okay. idea. It's a really cool idea to have it be like, okay, black materia, you're going to give it to Sephiroth or you're going to give it back to the gi to have like some tension of like, all right, Sephiroth wants it. If he doesn't get it, where else would it go? The only yeah, the in the original game is the only thing that we really know is that Sephiroth is after the Black Materia, and that's why we're after the Black Materia. Right. Okay. Didn't have anything to do with Gee. I could be totally wrong, but yeah. I, it is. <laughs> it's another. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's another case of this game being great at building up the tension on something. As you find out a little bit more and a little bit more about the Black Materia, if you don't really know what it is or don't quite remember what it is in my case yeah Mm -hmm. you're like oh this seems is this something we should be fooling around with and then you get more and more of a picture of it being like some kind of ultimate destructive power yes the more you get there and and uh the party ends up being like yeah we'll we'll do that for you guys but maybe not Uh, I gotcha. It's like and the, then the whole vision of like cloud with the black feathers and everything was separate. Yeah. I love that cool shot too. And he's like, no, seriously, don't give me that black material. Yeah. <laughs> I think oh. like that they're they told me like in their domain, and the guy, he's just like up, like up just some stairs, and they're just like, okay, so we're not gonna give them the black material. Yeah. <laughs> But we're going to tell them that we are. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but they like walk off and the guy's like, everybody was the black material, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, All so, right, I'll give you a little boat ride. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question that might get into spoiler territory so you can just shut it down if so. Sure. Um, does Sephiroth already know about the black materia or is he learning about it as the party is? Uh, I've, he, he knew about it. He knew? Is he... Is he been slowly leading the party in this direction? Oh, now that is with open like we should probably ropes. save that. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll save that for Patreon exclusive podcast uh, discussion. Um, so uh, I like this uh, the section for that where it's like, all right, next day, now you're back in the cave. You go back that shortcut, all that stuff to get back to Cosmo Canyon. Um, and Bugenhagen, he has an interesting note where he's like, hey, like I know you guys are. Following the Cetra path, he's like, don't. He's like the Cetra. He's like, they're they're a Starcross people. He's like, it's not it's nothing right, but yeah. bad, bad news to to deal with anything with the Cetra. Like, get out of there. Which is such an interesting note for someone who his entire planetology religion is kind of based on the disciples and the lessons that's a from very the Cetra. Yeah, stuff. That's, that's it's, it's interesting. But didn't he say also? It was just like, but nah, th- th- that was about. Uh, maybe I'm getting two things like kind of crossed up. But didn't he say also? It's just like, well. Like seeking out the temple, yes. Ain't, like there's a lot of risk there, but I also can't right say if there's a lot of reward there. Like I don't know what the reward is, so it could still be worth it. Like something in there. Yeah, I, I think I, that, I think that's all tied together. Yeah. Um. So that is the next lead is Kate Sith being like something about a temple sounds from I need to access the Shinra mainframe to learn more about the temple because I think that's where we're going to find more about the black materia yep yeah um, and that kind of is moving things along here and then you go and do a bunch of side quests uh, in the chapter 10 region and fly some more Joker posts yeah we got to uh, talk about well obviously the Zach interlude is happening in here too. It's huge. But yep. let's talk about these side quests. The proto relic mission in this one, gears and gambits. Oh How, my god! Did you guys get into Robo Chad? <sighs> that was a situation of like this feels like kind of like rejected Fort Condor stuff. I'll do it a little bit. Um, yeah. So did I did the bear. Min- I did. Yeah. I um, ended up doing all the hard mode. On did you really? Well. What are you talking I about? Know. Are you kidding me? Ninety nine oh hours. My god. Ninety nine hours. I got plus twenty party xp for that <laughs> it might not have <laughs> did been you do it. the hard mode fort condor just the first one <sighs> just yeah, the that first was, that was really tough too yeah but uh i liked i like gears and gambits it was pretty fun I, yeah you could 
you could win it just by having the uh, Gambit's auto set. Like, I'm not a Final Fantasy 12 guy. I'm I don't like the Gambit yeah, stuff. Sure. But having like an auto uh, set version of it was yeah. perfect for me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then the uh, the story scenes from this Proto Relic that Quest, was just where you've so got the, the crew from the Yuffie DLC coming in. Yeah, and it made and they escape Midgar a piece of cake. Yeah, yeah. they're just hanging like out. That. Yeah. And it made me wonder, are we going to see Avalanche HQ at some point in, in not, maybe not in this game, but in the next one? I think I, so, especially if they're like allied maybe with Wu Tai and yeah. the fact that they're like, that's all intertwined. I think if it's going to be Wu Tai Midgar War for part three, I yeah. think that's, I think that could be a okay. part of yeah, it. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. Yeah. And then we get a ton of scenes with uh, the old. The splinter old cell of Avalanche in uh, Seventh Heaven yeah. Yeah. hanging out. Uh, building their bonds, you know, yeah. uh, helping Wedge with his self esteem. Great scenes. <laughs> I love that. I, I love yeah. that. It, my favorite yeah. scene, too, was it was when uh, Jesse was like giving a noogie to, to Biggs. Yeah. And then he's like, Uncle, Uncle. And yeah. started, but she's just like sloppy drunk, being super yeah, yeah, yeah. silly, like attacking him, like that type of stuff. It's like, you can't. Yeah. You it, can't put a price on that. You do it at seventy dollars, but on <laughs> PS Five exclusive. But yeah, the scenes really give you like some nice good times with these characters. You thought you'd probably never see again. Yeah, I will note every single one of these people eats pizza with a knife and fork. <laughs> <laughs> I would drop the plate on them again uh, <laughs> just smart. for that. Yeah, they had it coming. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, yeah, Charlie Hunter. So, Raj, should we drop that plate again? <laughs> Is there any way you can raise it up with the corpses attached to the bottom of it and then drop it once more? Um, yeah, Charlie Hunter loves that we get closure with those characters, getting able yeah. to see all those folks uh, one more time. It is super sweet. Um, and then, you know, having the Chinese lanterns, like, send off mm-hmm. for, for them. And the that fact that, like, awesome. yeah. we get to see um wedge like going on that mission to the shinra hq is so cool and right i mean that was effing know, devastating like you get to see the blood draining mm-hmm. from his body after he falls and you get to see yeah. the whispers like coming around him like yeah down messing him up as he's yeah, falling absolutely around. It's, devastating. it's wild you know the two sandwiches thing i think we had enough of that but he's giving them away to calm people down so yep. it's classier i feel like mm-hmm. uh, tyler wrote in said i didn't catch this says i never or i really enjoyed getting to see wedge and the avalanche HQ, hq storming the shinra building since we never got to see their perspective and remake two of the avalanche members in the back of the truck with wedge mentioned matt and lucia who are the other two members of Glenn's squad in Ever Crisis. Oh, uh, that's ap- who Matt is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It appears that they both work for Avalanche AQ- HQ during the events of Remake. I thought it was pretty messed up that the Whispers waited for Wedge to climb the stairs all the way to the top of the Shinra building just to throw him Just to traumatize. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't you just stop him at the bottom? <laughs> yeah. You think, yeah. You that's when nice. I should have known that the Whispers were, in fact, uh, Freaking evil. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I was sweet, too. Uh, mm. The scene where you can hear Wedge being like, I'm okay, Barrett. You guys heard that, right? And then Nadeke's like, then, you're hearing things. And yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. People like, come on, man. <laughs> like, you gotta defend the spirits. But I guess that's his character now. He's, he's young, naive, stupid guy. Yeah, but guy. do you have to say it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so you get the proto-relic from, uh, from this mission. Yeah. Gilgamesh uh, says a haiku in this. Oh, okay. And one of his five syllable phrases is burning desire. That's four four syllables, right? Or is do you say desire with three syllables? <laughs> hey look, Ross, this burning is the deepest dive, but I, know. Uh, I don't I don't know. <laughs> if there's any any venue for it, it's this right now. <laughs> That's five though. Desire, is that how you say yeah. it? Okay. Not how desire. Say? That's how Gilgamesh pronounces desire. it. Desire. Yeah. Hey, Grant, Grant D writes in. <laughs> no, that's, th- that's three. Grant D writes in and says, uh, my favorite part of this chapter was the photo side quest with Aerith. It's a very sweet character moment. Uh, side quests like this are my favorite part about Rebirth. It's just a dumb kill three guys and snap three pictures on a side quest, but they give you such a sweet character interaction throughout. Side note, I couldn't tell if this was quest related or not. Maybe it's the radio towers, but as you complete more in each zone, the musical themes add more instruments. I don't think I noticed oh, that before. Really? Um, I, I'm totally with you. Where it's like, okay, take a picture of the constellation, whatever. I feel like I'm at the right angle. They keep hinting that it's not. I, it seems right to me, whatever. I'll just turn it into those hacks. But then it was like, the second you're taking the photo and then it's like, Aerith. Take a picture of Aerith. Yeah, and Aerith's game. just like praying <laughs> off to the side. You can take a candid photo of Aerith. It's like, 10 out of 10. Again, 
that is exactly what I want. It's yeah. so sweet. And then you get to take a selfie with Aerith, which is it's always weird to think about like anachronisms in Final Fantasy VII because yes. that is not a thing that existed when the game came. And out. Michael B writes in that in Advent Children they had flip phones, but now in so seven they knew the word selfie. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's a very confusing oh, silly thing. Yeah. Uh, Ray Lawaza writes in. Finding out that the life springs have been dying in Cosmo Canyon really put into perspective the line that Nanaki said to Aerith back in Chapter 2, that even though nature may seem to be going strong, it is in fact barely holding on. Yeah. On a perhaps related note, while exploring Cosmo Canyon, you find an old wooden shipwreck called the Celestica, which seems to suggest that this region may have had a large body of water a long time ago. Mm. It would be fitting that even looking back to the ancient history of the canyon, Nanaki has always had a reminder that nature is delicate. Yeah. That's beautiful, Rilawaza. And then also... At, everything ties back together but there's that scene of them in seventh heaven talking about like oh the salt from cosmo canyon is the secret ingredient in the cosmo canyon yeah, drink because yeah, it used yeah, to be yeah. an ocean and then yes. ties back oh, to yes. the side quest in calm I where know. tifa's like secret ingredient you're missing bartender it's, it's salt, salt. Yeah. and mm-hmm. we'll tell you why later and why that connects to everyone being sweet and the fact that they all had a pack that they're going to cause go to cosmo canyon together someday <sighs> she didn't so specifically good. say that it was cosmo canyon salt so She's kind of setting uh, that guy up for failure. Yeah, he's just going to buy like generic just, sea salt. Yeah. Morton's. Morton's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So other Morton's things. Morton's actually that, a really cool guy. I don't know if you ever like saw an interview with Morton. He's, he's pretty sweet. Really? Morton's a guy? Morton's a she. Yeah. Down to earth though. Morton's a she. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Losing my mind over here. Uh, Nick Nick W writes in and says, getting access to the tiny Bronco meant flying back to Junon Junon <laughs> to go after the proto relic there. And with Yuffie in the party, you get a fun exchange with Red 13 about how she loves Fort Condor and is a master level player. Mm. Lovely little nod back to Intergrade. Intermission? Interlude. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thank time. you. Also the very important thing on this quest, um, at the end of that kind of life spring quest. <laughs> I, I had a couple tipping moments one of them was like during this whole sequence um, I think it's like after you finish this up and it's like hey you know Bugenhagen his first name is Geisel and he made that Mako detector blah 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 but then the part where you do all that and the Bugenhagen's like watch out head back to Cosmo Canyon the Gi are attacking again I was like all right, you guys. We're, I know it's on me for 100 percenting this game, but I gotta be done with Cosmo Canyon. <laughs> I, went back, I went back and did it, and it was all fine. But it was funny, like, and I don't know if it's a commentary and a self-knowing thing, but after you do that whole life spring quest in Cosmo Canyon with Bugenhagen, he's like, "Well, now you can ask me anything you want." And literally, there's two options. It says, "Ask him about the life springs again," or nothing yeah so, perfect so many questions i could have <laughs> yes yeah. Like, right. yeah a few important notes i think from the bugenhagen quest like he straight up says there's no such thing as fate and that we're the masters of our lives mm. Mm. he uh he speculates about the whispers and says that they may have shifted the live stream whatever that means right and that the planet is changing on an unprecedented scale which just kind of reiterates that he is now open to seeing things in a new light and he's not stuck in his old ways of being like the planet is so powerful nothing can ever happen to it right right nothing can possibly go wrong (laughs) and he calls he calls the whispers a malevolent energy and then reiterates that you have the power to change things much you know like Barrett is saying earlier, and which I think is an important part of this game as yeah, a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have forgotten something huge. Uh, Henrik, back in one Zach 92, says, Zach is so freaking boring. <laughs> every time it cuts to his parts, I get excited to see where the story goes, um, but nothing time, happens. It's just Zach weeks. saying, I hope Aerith wakes up. Sephiroth, <laughs> I will do it. And yes, sometimes he says no. <laughs> Maybe in the next part, he will say, no, Chadley, I will not marry you. Well, that'd be good. Um, every time that's I, ice, I, it is. Zach's every time that's it's just like I go, no, it's just because it's <laughs> just like sad. walk and talk through boring parts of the last game. Yeah. Okay. I thought this one was very important. This is actually it, it is. It is. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, this is where yeah, he actually talks to Biggs, and it's like, yes, what is going on here? Where and Biggs it does has like the self like awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Biggs has a self awareness to be like, I'm a minor character. In the story, why was I saved? I love why that. Why did the whispers save me? Yes. I, and know, like some, it feels like somebody once told me 
the, the world. world. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's somebody in particular. Yes. And they, I feel like they're hinting that it's Aerith. Yes. Um, huh. But that somebody is selecting people from these other dimensions and saving them. And so the yeah. idea was Biggs was dying on the tower and then the whispers came around and then warped him and he's safe now. Yes. Um, and, and they have that shot too of Zach with the bullet going towards his head and the whispers like. And yeah. yeah. Goes, oh, it's it's so cool. cool. It's super cool. Yes. And so it's like maybe Big was was saved to have this conversation with Zach that they're having right here because this is where Zach resolves to move forward and and try to take action. Again, yeah. theme of the game, yeah. you mm -hmm. can change fate, you can do it. Very good, yeah. Okay. So Zach is, says, it's up to us to find our own way. Yeah. Everyone's sitting back, acting like the world is doomed, but the future is not set in stone. We're not powerless. No fate but what we make, baby. Yep, exactly. Uh, uh, Kyle Lamb writes in and says, it seems like Biggs and Zach each have very different ideas of who Cloud is. Biggs describes Cloud as we know him from Remake, the badass Merc who helped blow up Maka Reactor 1. This is in direct contrast with Zack, who only knows Cloud from before he became a Merc and before he met the Avalanche crew. The only thing Biggs and Zack have in common is that they both have their internal clocks busted. What do you guys think of this Zack and Big stuff, and what do you think it's leading to? Uh, that, the Biggs is from our dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Zach isn't. And Zach yes. isn't. Um, yeah. But it is interesting. They're both like our internal clocks are busted because there's they're some time. synchronized. Yeah. yeah. That's the interesting part is like yeah. they're shoved together in a funky way. So here's where we're, we're going up a notch, everybody. You ready to shift this buggy into second gear run? <laughs> Laro A writes in and says there's an NPC at Cosmo Canyon that completely explains the life stream and the multiple worlds or universes. It's presented as just a theory, but it aligns with what I've been thinking. So we know that the life stream is formed of memories, and it's implied here that this quote unquote creates other worlds that we can visit. The NPC proposes that quote, our hopes and dreams also end up in the life stream. That's why I think Zach and Biggs are dead in the life stream, but we can also see people that are still alive with them. It's a world of memories and dreams. So it's self, it's an NPC in Cosmic Canyon. like, there's just a theory that I heard that, yeah. That the live stream, because it's people's memories, it includes their hopes and dreams. And if those hopes and dreams are that Biggs and Zach are alive, bam, that world is created then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I'm curious to see how much they're going to expand on that in the in the final chunk of this game. Or if that's just going to be some fan theory stuff for a while. But if the game is telling you that, that seems pretty, pretty clear. And that's a cool reasoning for why multiple universes are existing at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody liked Wedge anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so an, another another couple of things with Biggs yeah. in that scene. So uh, Zach eventually wins Biggs over, and he says the world is lucky to have you. Is what yeah. he tells Zach. Yeah. Yeah. Which to me, I think that is a portentous line, and I think it is. It means that um, Zach and his like we can do it like uh, outlook on yeah. life are going to be crucial to you know the meta narrative where mm. we are changing things for the better. Mm -hmm. So. I'm full in. I'm all in on that. The other thing is that uh, Biggs, in uh, re in reference to, you know, like other possible members of Avalanche, says they're idiots. I know, but idiots are what we need right now. Yeah. And I was like, this is Ben when he's putting together this deepest dive. Mm. <laughs> That's very sweet. That's very it's sweet. Idiots we need right now. We just need some idiots at this table. Yeah. And I'm Kyrie. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> That being, what was Kyrie like? What was your read on on Kyrie just like coming on being like, what what are you losers doing here? See you later. Kenny Two Slice has it for you, Ron. Yeah. Let's hear it. Patreon member. They say when Zach and Biggs follow the avalanche call and no one's there, Kyrie pops up and acts dismissive of the idea uh, she would want to join Avalanche at all. Yeah. She says she only wanted to see how many dumb people show up. But if you walk to where she was hiding, her backpack and stuff is left behind, giving the idea that she isn't being truthful. Yeah. I found this interesting as Kyrie is usually comedic relief, and this shows her wanting a purpose beyond that. But she's also oh, the only that. character outside of Cloud and Aerith we have seen exist in both timelines. Okay, like Elmira, that's right? Yeah. Uh, anyways, no, I, that's true. Yeah. I'm sure lots of characters exist in both, but I was curious that Kyrie is the one player C. I don't think there's anything more than that. I think yeah. it I know, yeah. also means that Zach and Biggs have the power to change things. Like if even Kyrie or I think Kyrie is how they Kyrie is mm -hmm. say her name. Yeah. Um, if even the worst person in the world 
Kyrie is <laughs> going to jump on board with Avalanche, that means that they do have the power to inspire people and to change things. Yeah. Fred okay. Novo yeah. says, a fun detail in the Zach timeline is that all the flowers are dying outside of Eris' house because she's unable to take care of them doing to be an oh, unexpected coma. Oh, that's very good. I'm sometimes confused about kind of the seriousness of that coma because the fact that they're still just lying there and then... <laughs> Zach just goes up and he goes, hello in there. Like, what? <laughs> what is this tone? What's, what's the one? You just watch. You can see Aerith just go like this. <laughs> just rubbing her eyes. <laughs> Checking her watch. <laughs> I like their, like, we only got one bed, so so Cloud, you're sitting. <laughs> this is a sitting coma for you. <laughs> I mean, we could do like a head to toe thing so there's nothing freaky. Yeah. Sitting coma. <laughs> Uh, I, I did like, I thought it was a cool touch that Zach touched Era's hand and it was implied that she could feel it in the meantime. Like, yeah. she like oh, has her yeah. water yeah, in the yeah, boat yeah. and she's like, something's up. She's got her hand in the life stream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dustin writes in and asks, has anyone in the party acknowledged the Sephiroth fight at the end of Remake? Nope. After playing <laughs> through the Zack section in chapter 10, I'm starting to wonder if what we're playing is the original game canon and the Zack timeline is the new canon where fate was defeated, though they are now linked. I, they talk, they, they did, said that like we saw Sephiroth in Midgar. Yeah, they they do mention yeah. the fight, but they, yeah. you're right. I mean, they don't talk about like the outside how crazy of calm, was like that? How, the devastation <laughs> yes. that has happened as a result of that occurring. But the radio has. Yeah, yeah, the, you're right. Yeah, the radio has yeah. a tornado. Yeah, um, I I feel like I could use more talk in this world about just like power levels, and it's just the Dragon Ball Z fan of me coming through. Yeah. But like. It is just so wild. Like, where's Sephiroth? Everybody is just, like, they are, (laughs) the party consists of superheroes, and it seems like no one is really acknowledging that in the state of the world. You know, like, the classic example is the Carl Prison, like, lock them up. Okay, what are you going to do? It's like, are these guys superheroes or not? Like, (laughs) One triple slash would take all these goons down. I know, I know. Joseph L. writes in and says, it blows my mind how flimsy the basic plot motivations are getting. It was established now 60 plus hours ago that Cloud and Tifa have a weirdly divergent memory of the Nibelheim incident. Yet that's not a reason to go to Nibelheim? The major issue between our main characters has been totally dropped and instead we get that one robe guy ends up showing up at Cosmo Canyon and says Nibelheim. Kate Sith says we must go to Nibelheim because there's no Shinra terminal in Cosmo Canyon. Excuse me? (laughs) I'm still loving the game, but the plot is a complete mess. It's just, it's just stretched so thin it's yeah. just yeah. yeah i think yeah, yeah. I, I i can't <laughs> yeah i understand that feeling for sure and i do think though that like nibelheim is the last place tifa wants to go and yes. that, that's and also probably cloud yeah. too mm-hmm. which cloud I, seems more neutral on it he's like yeah. yeah why not tifa it seems more like i don't really want to do this I and think, like the yeah. closer that she gets to nibelheim yes. she's like i don't i think I really that's don't the coolest thing is like chapter 11 baby heading to heading to nibelheim um that Tifa is like scared of it. Like Cloud, like stay close to me because I, yeah. I'm gonna have a tough time handling this. Meanwhile, she was just getting on like a, you know, getting on the river sticks with a <laughs> yeah. Gina talk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah. she's like, ah, no big deal. But it's like this town is really gonna rock her when she sees it. And I love how she's she sees like the first pillar. She's like, this is new. Yep, <laughs> something <laughs> weird. Tells it to me like this one. I don't buy it. Oh, yeah. I lo- yeah, I love that. Yeah. Before we get here, I just want to say I popped back to the gold saucer. Around this time. Okay. Um, because I wanted to see if a date would activate for me, and it oh. didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just don't think it's ever going to happen. Or that's yeah. what I'm going to do. Um, Nibelheim, uh, <laughs> did your skin also crawl, Ronnie? When you well, saw When Aerith? I didn't get a date? Yeah. Yeah. When, <laughs> in high school. Uh, what was the coolest date you went on in high school? <laughs> <laughs> Called out. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. One of the movies. Prom. Prom. The greatest date of all. <laughs> yeah. What was your and, coolest date? Cool guy? Oh. Does hanging out with your girlfriend count as a date? Yeah, I was going to say, like, like, did you actually, considering where we grew up, Yeah. did here's, you here's actually go on, like, a date that was beyond going to the movies or going to, like, a party? Tell me if this counts. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Because <laughs> my high school girlfriend was very cool, and she had a, a Jeep without a top on the on the top of it. Yep. And one time, we went on a road trip, but it was with our friend Ben, and we drove to the town of Litchfield. Yeah. And the three of us went to a weapon store, Tiger Lily's Weapon Shop, yeah. in Litchfield, Minnesota, and bought a bunch of throwing stars and swords. Yeah. But, like, 
being in a Jeep with a top down with your high school sweetheart, just buying a boatload of swords and throwing stars. I was like, this is, I think this is about as good as it gets. Ben, I still haven't had a date as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really good. And then really good. nobody hurt each other with the throwing stars. It was perfect. Yeah. Um, what I'm trying to say is, um, was it sacrilegious to you when Aerith climbed up on that Tifa water tower? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> back, like, off, it was, back off. It was a little bit of just like, well, I'm going to go up there. And it's yeah. just like, oh. that's pretty sacred. Uh, <laughs> For me, it was like, yeah. if I go up there after her, am I cheating on Tifa? A little bit. And also, I knew because I had already visited Tifa's home and I knew Tifa okay. was just like sitting in there. And then you go up, and then Diva just like sees you two up there, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Hi." Yeah. Did you? I don't know what your relationship is with, with Aerith, but I was kind of in a little bit of like, I'm trying to middle path Aerith a little bit because I want to prioritize Tifa. You know, not to the extent that these monsters are. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, we're in the exact same boat. <laughs> okay. Did you have that line too? Then where it's like you finish up your conversation, finish up your conversation with Aerith about just like, no, I was, I was looking forward to actually seeing Tifa through the window. I was kind of looking forward to, to wave into her and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And absolutely. then and this conversation ends. You talk to Aerith again. Yeah. And and you go, are you angry? Yes. And she just goes, mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. And yep, it was yeah, like, yeah. that was and like, you're like, at me? Yeah. And she's like, no, not at you. Like, at just yeah. everything, you know? Right, right, right. But that, yeah, that was like emotional core. Of yes. Like, every worst moment of previous yeah. relationship. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Are you mad at me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so what, uh, do you remember what specific option you picked for that one? Because that stuck remember. with me. And the one I picked was... Sounds like something I'd do. Right, yeah, I think yes, that's what it was. Yes, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, that I was, was like, it, yeah. well, this is might be like a funny thing to say that yeah. kind of defuses the situation. Yep. And it did not. It did not. It well, did Aerith not. was, I mean, she said like, she's like, man, if I were you, like, I'd do the same thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Riggles writes in, in the flashback, above Tifa's mailbox is one of the yellow flowers from the beginning of Remake. As we learned back then, these flowers represent a reunion. When you return to Nibelheim, they're missing. This minor detail is such a clear example of how they have returned, but it isn't the same. The buildings are back, but everything that made it Cloud and Tifa's home is gone. Yeah, yeah I love like going into Cloud's house. It's like, I'm the singing chef. It's like, <laughs> yeah. what, what is this? Who it's are so, you? yeah, it's so like in a way, it's very unceremonious and, and, and insensitive to... You know, I just like people like I grew up here and this is my home and it's like, well, not anymore. Now this I'm is the our chef. job site, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, so get out. But everyone is also so weird of like, OK, now I guess we're just taking care of the robe guys. This is kind of like, yeah, it's rehab also clinic, not like a nurse. You know, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but everyone's like a company the man. Like are company issued, which I thought was the craziest thing. Oh, yeah, Dude, yeah. it's it's an odd deal. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, you also if you go in the item shop there, the vendor literally says to you, "Hey, like this isn't your hometown anymore. Don't get too comfortable." Yeah. It was like right. really harsh. Yeah. You're like come on. I kind of wish things were like a little more different. Like I think is Tifa's house layout a little bit different. I think. I think I was trying to look at it and see the upstairs is definitely the same. Yeah. I'd love to see because it is weird that like Shinra would get it perfect. Yes. You know, like it'd be right. funky the if it was a little door. bit more like Blazing Saddles town at the end of like, ah, we tried to recreate it, but it's kind of slapstick paint. But I guess if they went through all that art assets and created the town, like it's just too expensive to do it slightly different right. for dweebs like me. <laughs> um, Ryan A says both Aerith and Tifa have very introspective lines this chapter if you talk to them a second time. There's an interesting dichotomy between them, with Tifa saying that she hates how much of a people pleaser she's always been and Aerith feeling unfairly treated her whole life and not wanting to lash out at those she cares about because of it. Lines like these feel like such a modern way of talking about nuanced feelings. Yeah, that, that Tifa conversation about her yeah. being and a the people delivery pleaser. on that line, she's so like, good. I've always hated that about myself. Yep, like the realest thing anybody said in this. Yep, 100% oh, okay. with you. Beaten down, Brian says the moments between Tifa and Cloud in this chapter have been some of my favorite interactions so far. Tifa realizing how Cloud was repeating Sephiroth's monologue about the naturally formed materia in the cave yes. and grabbing his arm to snap him out of it, followed by Cloud seeing Tifa struggle on the bridge and him placing his hand on her shoulder to help reassure her. They were small, subtle interactions but I found them to be very sweet and really showed these characters helping each other through the act of revisiting the locations of what were very traumatic, traumatic events for both of them. Yes, I... Yeah, I had that note as well. They they help each other out on that on the journey and it's yeah, it says so much about where the characters are at right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um 
Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. What do you got, Russ? I've got the uh, Queen's Blood, Blood players in Nibelheim. You've got a black robe. Yes. QB player. Right. Dale is his name, which yes. is great. Yeah, and he has like the nurse there, like helping him out and yep. stuff. And he's, he he uh, he mentions like the Queen's Blood queen dominatrix lady or whatever afterwards like right exactly you can go back and like play queen's blood against more people like wise 3.0 version 2.0 oh that's right they tell, you, they tell you to do that i didn't do that yet yeah, yeah. so you play you play wise do you want me to say what happens yeah we play? should yeah okay so you play him you beat him uh he's pretty easy actually and then there's a whole like scene where he kind of goes on the fritz Ooh. and like speaks to you like you know like in a horror movie or whatever sort of about how the queen shadow blood queen killed Ladrell Balmon and there's like a recording a holographic recording of a reporter finding the body what yeah that so you learn yeah the the uh the queen is still has power in some way Ooh. then you can go play Regina again oh the she best. is yeah. in Gangaga and she gives you more of the the backstory um where the Shadow Blood Queen uh, was like an ancient despot in this world. Well, the, there's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, okay. The Emerald Witch like rallied the people to like. Her name is the Emerald Witch. The, is the person who opposed the Shadow Blood Queen like rallied a rebellion and killed her, and then the Queen's blood after she was killed is what created all the fiends in the world. So it's like ah. this creation legend. Whoa. Yes. And so now the queen is trying to come back to life by possessing the life force of like whoever owns her card. So what? it, got, it awesome. gets really crazy. Yeah, that's sweet. All right. I got to continue with that. Yeah. For well, sure. Yeah. I, okay. Okay. I missed, <laughs> yep. I missed the first part of the conversation. Like I just got to the point where, um, Oh God! Have you the, played Wise 2.0 th- yes, version 3.0? Yes, yes. And then I, I, <laughs> well, I that's I, his name. I, I, yes, I, I, I took him out, and then I went to Gangaga and fought against a very like almost like sleep deprived looking. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Regina. Like, Regina. Yeah. Um, and that's the last one that I did. But but so we just learned about like the the Emerald Queen. Yep. And the other queen. But w- so how do you how did you get to How'd you learn all that? Oh, so those were cutscenes that played after you beat after you beat Regina. Then did you beat her? I beat not? Regina, but like that was it. Like that she's just it. like, well, she, yeah, she just did this thing where she's like, uh, forget I said anything. I'm just really tired. I've had a lot of matches. Oh, like, weird. I yeah. wonder if you have to then beat the other like normal people that you would be able to to rank up. And when you rank up, I wonder if I, I have bet to go. Like, that's yeah. when it the scene activates. Right. Mm. Um, and then in chapter. Eleven. Well, hang, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, oh, yeah. So, okay. So, there's Dale, the the QB playing black robe that you play. Yeah. <laughs> yes, which I loved. I lo- <laughs> yes, and then <laughs> there is the soldier in the back room Who's of just City a Hall. F it. Who's yeah. the truant? The truant. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I was like. Uh, my conspiracy brain kicked in and I was like, is this the second security officer who floated down the river? That, that was what like, what my brain. better yeah. way to be truant than by pretending to <laughs> yeah, drown? Yeah, <laughs> smart. I love, I love it. Faked his own death. All yeah. the are gonna he hang even out. said, when you beat him, he's like, you're the bigger fish, Cloud. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Water. Yeah, it's all get right it. There. Um, so, Mako Reactor, yep. heading up, there's a shot of Heidegger, a lot of Heidegger, uh, Shinra stuff. Um, and him saying like, oh, it turns out that Wutai has attacked the Nobel uh, researchers up there at the reactor. And so it begins. And then you go up there and see the Wutai soldiers are dead. And it's it's an interesting and it's really smart mirroring of like Yuffie now going on the quest to the Nebel reactor and being like, oh, my God, these corpses are everywhere. What have you done? And like yeah. the exact yeah. same way that uh, Tifa experienced earlier seeing her father dead and it's like they then hit that a little bit harder by having the flash of Tifa's dad being dead up there um, yeah what do you think is the significance of the conversation where Yuffie is like uh, Murasaki that's like a Wutaian last name oh I think I think what's interesting then is the conversation that comes from that which is them of her being like I never considered that people would move from Wutai 
to yeah. Midgar. Like, I just thought it was just obviously that they're the bad guys. You shouldn't go there. And I think it's more of that kind of blurring of like, yeah, good, bad. What does it really mean? Because they're like, okay. And right. then she talks about like, well, people from Midgar went to Wutai. I got that because that's how we got Glenn and all those guys yeah. Yeah. leaning the interim government. So I understood that was a thing. But like, maybe Midgar's not that bad. If people from Wutai were voluntarily going there, like, okay. I think that's yeah. the point of it. Yeah. It's like her, she's kind of moving a little bit beyond her childish black and white view of the world. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, then you're going in there and you fight the, uh, diabolic variant. And is it too much? Like he looks like the classic test tube guy who falls out that Sephiroth stabbed. Absolutely. Like, do you think it's yeah. meant to be that exact yes. guy or just, okay. I think it's more okay. fun if it is that exact guy that he's just been hanging out up there for five years. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's just like, I don't know, could be, you know, right. but when you look at the actual design, it's like, oh yeah. Yeah. Be. Um, then you control the other party. The B Led team. by Kate Sith. Yep. Heading up. Uh, Lewis K. Positive note. Says, as a Glaswegian. I'm sorry for blowing that. It's That's Scottish, it apparently. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, I really was gearing myself up to like to dislike Kate Sith as hearing the accent in media nine out of ten times is like nails on a chalkboard. Uh. But they hit the nail on the head with this little bastard. His animations <laughs> really suit the tone of the accent and the localization team absolutely nailed his expressions, etc. Well, that's fact, good to hear. He says stuff like, get in there, my son, to Cloud, and that was quite a scrap. Post fights definitely signal they had a good Scottish person do a once over on his scripting. I really love cool. his little walk animation too, and he's got a different animation for turning on the computers with Moogle versus without. Notice that yep. great guy. Yeah, you know, we talk about the greatest voice actors. I mean, Kate said the fact that he's so charming. Like he's he's got me. Hook line yes, yeah, yeah. and a lot of that stuff voice acting it's so fun this seal of approval is pretty cool too I, yeah. I would I would have no idea whether he was being accurately yeah. Glaswegian or not and this is this is particular but I think that level of specificity I think going back to Sid for a second I think what's bumping me a little bit is Sid Sid feels like the most American ass character in the original Final Fantasy 7 uh, and in this, his animations and his mannerisms, it's so Japanese. And it just, it doesn't fit. Okay. It's kind of like how we noticed that with Tifa, we talked about before. It's like the animations aren't quite fitting this year. Yeah. And Sid, it's just like nails on a chalkboard to me. It's just like, he's doing Japanese poses and he's supposed to be like this hard drinking Southerner. It just, it, anyways, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, You're C. right, it isn't. John C. writes in <laughs> and says, so last week on the deepest dive, uh, I said how I love that the dungeons were expanded out and uh, I was ready to be signed up for all this. Well, that case of dungeon <laughs> was rough. Um, yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, Fiori says, I actually shouted, which scared me because I don't shout at the box throwing mechanics in the Kate Sith section. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. Mr. Hipshot says, Kate Sith moves so slow. The crap just kept stacking up for me in this dungeon. I made a 30 second clip of throwing the Mako box into the generator and it got 8,000 views from a YouTube channel with no videos. <laughs> Every comment saying they hated this part of the game. I love the rest of the game though, says Mr. Hipshot. I was all on board for the Kate Sith stuff. I think him rolling like a Goron, super fun. When he's yeah. in the vents, it's all crazy. Look, the, when you summon the Moogle, it goes slow as hell, but you get the idea. They want to keep you as the cat. Yep. Those box throwing mechanics unforgivable did you do what the touchpad or did you try to do it the other way i tried to do it the other way okay touchpad you think is better no <laughs> as yeah, somebody I, who I tried, did the touchpad exclusively I tried both oh you did oh yeah. I, I did i did a combination of the two i prefer the uh the, the thumbsticks oh god that yeah. was a lot of fun it's it's like <laughs> it's already a tired like rpg thing to be uh, dump down a trap door and then mm. have to go through a whole dungeon just to get back to where you were. Totally get it. Totally get it. We just didn't so need you're to do already it on thin times. ice when you do that, and then yeah. and then to have this box nonsense was a little too much for me. That section in particular of trying to throw it in like that thing that would go over and drop it. Like I did that so many times. Like, okay, so then I looked online. Just the secrets you have to stand on this other box off to the ledge in order to make that work. Or where were you guys standing when you actually got the? box in the basketball hoop As i actually did that like first time really yeah i don't know like yeah I oh just, it took forever for me i it took me a while i just stood as close to the railing as i could yeah and was, you might be able to throw it a little longer with the touch screen i'm not oh, sure that'd be interesting yeah because i just could not get in there rory gladstone says was the solo case Sith section a troll to make him the most hated character again this yeah. is the part that's frustrating because personality wise perfect 
so much better. I, I like him. I don't just ironically like him like I did in the original game. Yeah. Uh, combat, I think he's awesome. Yep. And then they just crap the bed with A this. little bit, It's yeah. the most dirge-ass section. And it's just the, yeah. the box throwing. Oof. That said, it is fun to roll through that big room where there's a bunch of boxes. They know what we like. Like, that yeah. was fun. Just give you a bunch of high I potions also had, through that. What was the... Um, what do they call them? Like the justices or um, like the adjudicator? The adjudicators. Yes. Yeah. The, so those were really were, hard. Yes. So those were really difficult. Like that was the point where I'm just like, I'm not grasping this character as well as I I I, I should be because yeah. these two adjudicators are 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 kicking my ass. Um, it, it, it was I again. It went back to I couldn't get the ATB charge enough to do enough damage, and yeah. so I spent like. Like it was just this battle, and I feel like that battle took me like five minutes to do. It just it, it felt like it's just like clearly I'm missing something here, but I couldn't tell you exactly what. Yeah, you have to equip a lightning materia, and then because they're like the type of enemy where if you do magic to them, then you can hit them, or yeah. if you if you hit them a while, then they become immune <laughs> yeah. to that. Right, right. But the yeah. the yin and yang battle after that was one of the harder ones for me in really? the game so yeah, far. Yeah, Jurin is with you. Jurin 7X also thought it was really tough. I, that one didn't stand out to me that much. The adjudicators, I thought, especially the room where there were two adjudicators. I don't yeah, know, it was the two time. adjudicators, yeah. yeah. Two adjudicators. Uh, Collision says, I really liked how that boss, the yin and yang boss, it was locked behind an actual safe as a nod to the original in Shinra Mansion. You have to oh, enter yeah. that safe code, so it's nice to just okay. have it written on the wall in this one. I, I also really like that it was the same code. Like, when you saw it, it's just like, of course. Yeah. Of course it is going to be this code. Yeah. Okay. I think we're talking about two different things. The main boss that you have your party back is after the safe code, right? Yes. And you're, you're, you're right. You're right. It is right after the two two head head head. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Um, and also, I <laughs> I realized I lied. Um, no. I did die, and it was the, the yin and yang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yep. It was I, the physical... It was when the, the 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 physical damage one came out. He just destroyed me. Yeah. One time and then yeah. Had a hard time dodging with Kate Sith. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I eventually just put like my best summon on him and then summoned it and then just dodged until the yeah. summon killed it. Yeah. Feels like a cop out. No, yeah. It's all, it's all good, man. Uh, we've got Bob Buell. Oh, I mean, well, before we get to this, I mean, you're going in Shinra Mansion. Open up the room. You're the your Vincent's theme rolling around. How you feeling? <laughs> didn't we we skipped over though that one boss fight? You want to talk about that? No. Not really. <laughs> well, I tried, I tried to, <laughs> we skipped over the mini game of throwing crates on the elevator ride up. <laughs> that mm. sucked. Yeah, also, I did I not was... get a good result on that one. No, and no. it shows in your quest log. Oh, oh no, really? I, instead I did of like five a check mark on like, the uh, discovery thing, it's yeah. got like an X. Oh, Makes okay. you feel bad. Yeah. Uh, shout out uh, positive things for the case of the section. Uh, I like the music. And it has like it's pure Danny Elfman, like kind of yeah, tranquil yeah. and fun. Also, sure. Kate Sith's music in the training VR stuff is perfect. It's, it's very much Vegas. like Las Vegas music. It's, it's really fun. Um, also, I like that when you see AI Hojo, like, mm, welcome to my freaky mansion, Marr! all that stuff. Like, I love that. Like it cuts in a funny part where he does his classic, like just as he's getting to like highest level, it just cuts <laughs> yeah. away from a yeah. stupid, obnoxious laugh. Like you can get the idea for yeah. this guy, man. Yes. Um, now so, Ronnie. Yeah. Would you like to talk about, uh, Oh, the Forgotten Specimen is that boss fight you were talking about there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and yeah. then it was cool then to be Kate Sith running down a hallway after that and like seeing Cloud and the rest of the crew like, oh, crap, it's Cloud standing yeah. in the hallway. Like, it's just fun to see yep. from a different perspective, you know? And then you go see your dear friend Vincent. But you get to see Vincent. Who dares disturb my slumber? I think you mean, who dares disturb my slumber? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my first thought is like, how can we take this guy seriously? A character whose opening line laying in a coffin is who dares disturb my slumber. And then again, it's rebirth. I got to have faith in it. 10 out of 10 twist. Then when he's futzing with that key card device and like trying to bang out and carries case with like helping him out. And he just has a moment. And he goes on his shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then Vincent struggling with his technology just goes, Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay. Yes. So if he's just another Damn it. super flat, like detached cloud level buffoon, like that uh-huh. is such a good note for him but then when he's like in his coffin again you can hear him like snoring yes like, they just they undercut his quote unquote coolness by immediately his, yeah. within seconds which yeah. we've played through all of the dirty dirge 
They are, oh, they're, they're trying to make him seem as cool as possible. And the fact that immediately they're like, look, we know we know what this guy's all about. Yeah, like, yeah. We know and, he's and absurd. Just, he's yes, a vampire and, in a coffin. And, right. That and, is a great observation because I don't remember much about the dirge. But I do what? remember it taking Vincent extremely seriously. Yes. Yes. And the fact that they joke around with him immediately immediately in this yeah. has to be intentional for that exact reason. Yeah. He seems like a in a way, he does. He seems like a, a lovely character. Like like there's yes. a lot of potential here now. And again, I say I, I will say the same thing with Sid. There's just so much potential for like how this character uh relates to the the rest of the 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 party, particularly because immediately they just say like you know, we only got room in this party for one, like, what how do they say? Like, sulky character, like, mm. like standoffish character. And, and, and Klaus is like, yeah, for real. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about me? Yeah. You know, I just love that. Yeah. I, I love it's so yeah, odd that, like, Vincent's such a bully for towards Kate Seth. Like, he grabs Kate Seth, like, chucks him across the room. I love him. that he got caught with the, by the face. Yeah. That was the funniest thing mm-hmm. in the yeah, world yeah. to me. And, and then they have that exchange where, uh, <laughs> where what was it where is it yeah cloud says to him he's like save it i've had a pretty shit day yeah. and vincent's like what a coincidence so have i <laughs> like, those yeah. two just like matching shittiness yes. levels back and forth to each other is such a fun idea when vincent is carrying kate sith back out of the room into that big area i was like if he throws him back down that goddamn trap door, <laughs> it's gonna be the worst punishment i can imagine <laughs> Oh, we truly yeah. uh, let's see Bob Buell says after all those terrible gears and gambits proto relic side quests I wish I could have told Vincent that Chadley was our real foe <laughs> <laughs> remember you can choose like he's like who is your foe and it's like Sephiroth Wutai or Shinra it's like oh, I mean obviously yeah. Sephiroth but it's like yeah. oh wait a minute like what What mm-hmm. if you said Wutai would, I'm curious how he would have reacted uh, yeah it would have been kind of interesting but yeah it, but was, it's like, it was one of those things where like I didn't want like I know this right and it's nice that Kate Seth too is like I know. I've read your file, dude. Like, you're a yeah. former Turk. I know you. There's something with Sephiroth in your yeah, past. Yeah. Just, I don't want to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. A nice little uh, burst of exposition for the people who are like, who the hell is this guy? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Villain Mac says, the Vincent fight was the most challenging for me so far. He hit hard and Kate Sith was not the right fit for me. How'd y'all handle the fight? I thought it was awesome. That's so fun just to have him transform immediately and everyone would be like, what yep. is yeah. this dude? Like Frankenstein style and the shadow on the wall. It's so so good. cool. It was really good. Yep. I think I used about eight Phoenix downs. <laughs> nothing that wrong fight. with that. There's nothing that was, wrong with that. That was a wild fight. I, I, I struggled with that one. It felt like most of my attacks were just kind of bouncing up. It was like one of those things where like every time that like cloud hit, yeah. You know, it's yep. like a sword of feeling. bounce off. Oh, like, yeah. oh my god. Okay. So he was uh weak to fire, right? I can't remember. I think he that is. Sounds right. Which makes this a battle where you can just be Yuffie and uh mm, and strafe Yuffie. around the room and uh, oh, sure, sure, sure. while having your fire uh nin- ninjutsu weapon on him. Right. And it'll just slowly chip away at him and build up his stagger bar. Oh, perfect. So if, between that and Aerith uh, healing people and stuff like that, I got through it without a whole lot of... Yeah, I, I didn't have a huge problem with him, but it was it was super fun to see. Yeah, but the looked so cool. He was... Yep. Guy, guy, and then guy. he's like, and I'll be here. <laughs> and he slowly slides the <laughs> yeah, guy. I, know. Yep. Like, I was bummed out. Did I miss something? So in the basement area, you can go and you see like the S cells tank and Cloud freaks out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But I missed because it felt like I had I freedom. Didn't walk Could the I have other gone? way? Yeah. yeah. I was like, which way is going to trigger the story scene? Yeah. I think yep. it'll is be it the po- left way. So I went the right way. Is it was possible around. to go to the library? I don't know because it's such a big Sephiroth right part first? in the original I, game. Yes, yeah. I did. I That's went to the right, and, yep. and that was, and then it, you know, it triggers like Vincent's like, like I, did you, I didn't say you go in there. But in the yeah. game where they've thrown Sephiroth at you a thousand times, like this is the scene this where Sephiroth like, throws to do the material yes, and he flies, and it's so cool. And it's like to not have that in this is really interesting. Yeah, but maybe we just know Sephiroth too well at this point, <laughs> including the part later on in this section where Sephiroth actually encounters Gilgamesh, which is cool to see those two next to each other and he actually says he goes a wayward soul he's all yours talking to cloud then so it's like yeah so that ties to maybe that idea of sephiroth knows about the other worlds and stuff if he's like familiar with the idea of gilgamesh being a wayward soul lost between dimensions yada yada, yada. yeah I didn't sephiroth was that. at his sassiest there he's like how yeah. about this guy are you ready to fight him right yeah. right right um then we go to Shinra mansion and this is where 
a certain certain character is dropped on a motorcycle from an airship. Oh. We see our dear boy Roche. Rest in pieces. Sefer Roche, uh, and he's got the the gray streak. He's got the yep. SC4 yeah. tattoo. Hoping for StarCraft 4 to come out someday. Uh, <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. And Ronnie, how are you feeling about our dear boy Roche in this scenario? You know, it was it, it came right after uh, having a rough time with Vincent and mm. kind of thinking to myself like, I don't know if I have the the the, the fortitude right now to take on a a, a super Roche. Yeah, super, one on one always yeah. feels tougher too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and super Roche was he did have his fair share of you know dodging and 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 I, like I did find the fight to be a little bit more challenging, maybe even a little bit more frustrating because I just like I, I find that I get myself. It, I, I, I get more frustrated if I feel like my my attacks aren't landing, if I yeah, see more yep. dodging. Yep. Uh, but was able to, to, you know, to take him down not too difficult. Um, and then it feels like it's the tragic... It feels like it's the tragic end to um, a very beloved character. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fight itself... I was I was struck like oh this is this is gonna be harder than I thought but it's like oh that's right it's like his first fight in remake like just focus on counters and like you'll be you'll that be okay did it. yeah I do love that the fight stops when he's at like five percent health yeah and Cloud is like trying to talk him out of it and he's like no we're going right back into battle mode for the game yeah yep. it's like you feel like you had a chance there to to uh, help him avoid his fate and it, yep. it just didn't happen and Chase no. Klein he says I'm not sure this was intended in the Roche fight or not but once it pushed to the phase where Roche says to Cloud paraphrasing I don't want your pity the fight resumes but it seems like Roche wasn't fighting back at all like yep. he was forcing Cloud to put him out of his misery yes and Demosphere says that Roche had a similar move set to Sephiroth at this point using meteor attacks even sporting the silver gray hair Ooh. has me wondering if it's possible that in part 3 we come across more enemies who act like Sephiroth maybe even a Sephiroth army of some kind Wow. Sefer Rufus, Scarlet Troth. Scarlet Troth is definitely <laughs> coming out to play, so please get ready for that. So yeah. Harry, Harry so, Kane writes in and says, um, if they have to make a comedic character like Roche tragic, it needs to actually be tragic. And instead it felt rushed. I know he was a pain in Cloud's ass and he's worried about himself, but it was really disappointing to see him express almost zero emotion about Roche basically dying. This is a really depressing end to a story, but mostly because it squandered all the potential it had, both to be emotionally affecting and to help humanize the black robes. Also, how is Cloud having episodes but mostly functioning, but Roche went from fine to black robes so quickly? <laughs> yes, that did happen all very fast. I think Cloud, you know, caring about him a little bit was was shown by like the that battle scene that I mentioned where he's like trying to talk him out of it. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is a, it is a quick abrupt end yeah. to our beloved Roche. They did have a black robe all ready to go for him, didn't they? It just like it magically <laughs> appeared. It's like okay, yes. that was something that I just like. It's like a bunch of pack if, animals descending on him, but they robed him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we think these look neat, and then they all shamble away. <laughs> Yeah. Which makes me feel like we should do a low energy roast chant in his honor. I f if a funeral dirge yeah. uh, of a roast chant. Um, <laughs> oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> Look around, you want to kick it off? Roast, 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 wailing on the coffin. <laughs> Take me! Inject me, Hojo! Me, Inject Rose. me! Uh, it's that's a sad end. I I was hoping for a little more. You know? It's not the end of Roche. If he's technically roaming around. <laughs> we'll see him it like It ain't the end of Roche. We'll, we'll I, see I, him in the group, like yeah. at some point, right? Like <laughs> I'm here too. He'd be like <laughs> Roche, Roche. Motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. They win. <laughs> <laughs> he's just walking around but he's doing a motorcycle Revic. rev. <laughs> Wait a minute. Look at that guy. Uh, yeah, and so he says black material after he puts on the robe. There we go. Um, so then there's the shot of Glenn interrupting the broadcast uh, with the uh, mic and camera so bad they can only be compared to Ronnie's mic and camera from the Deepest Dive on Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh, I thought it was funny. It was funny. Um <laughs> So he gives his big announcement, uh, and then I was so fascinated by this. I, I I don't know what they were going for. Where he's like, and now introducing Viceroy Saruf, yeah, yeah, yep. leader of Wu Tai, and then he goes like this, and then it's just like an empty podium, and then it cuts to like Rufus and everybody in Shinra HQ, and they're like, we'll never know who that person's real identity is. Where it's like, 
Well, isn't he introducing? He just yes. What is the broadcast that if it's well, not? Well, the thing. But they're also <laughs> acknowledging on? that, like, doesn't Scarlet say at some point, like, this is not a good look for them, right? Like it's not a good look for them that that just like this person's not even showing up. Yeah, right. Like, is, <laughs> it's are, is it like Saruf is the friends we made along the way? Is that what? <laughs> I, I don't what know. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with that. And Saruf, Rufus, is it like? Uh, oh, is it? So you're saying Saruf um, is on fire? Yes. Is that? Are we saying oh, so Rufus? Oh, on fire? No, I think that might be something with that. So, yeah. what was, it, was Rufus as confused as everybody else in the HQ? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. But I was left with like, is this like some kind of fake broadcast? Well, I've, I mean, obviously, Glenn and and Rufus are in, in cahoots. cahoots. Oh, yeah. there's cahoots. Yeah. Um, and then Rufus. But I, it's and Rufus and. That that feels right. So it Rufus, does. I think yeah, that's exactly it's just what's going on. Weird. Um, but, but then again, like, yeah. Rufus is just saying like, hey, promise lands are top priority, everybody. Uh, tip top shape. Um, and Sung does talk about Glenn in that section. He says like, oh, he's ex-soldier, PO class, kind of experimental. He's like, he was sent to Red Orb and then defected, which is Ever Crisis content, which we, yeah. of course, oh. we know everything about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're big fans. Resident um, expert. <laughs> Resident <laughs> expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh writes in. The, the Nibel variant of Chocobo has been an absolute game changer. Oh, I loved it. Yep. How did they not have every other type of Chocobo have the water jet boost ability? It actually makes traversal tolerable and even fun when you're on the water. Yep. Totally if agree. If you turn around yes, and see Ross, the rest yes. of your party doing this. Like yeah. Like j- water jet packing in coordinated. It is you, so oh. stupid looking. And look, when you shift direction, they're it. all like awkwardly shifting direction. Uh, yeah, you got to look at it. Yeah. Jimmy says the Nibel Chocobo has the best peeing mechanic in a video game since Death Stranding. <laughs> uh, Liam S. is a big fan of that Tifa uh, quest line with the cat. I guess the mm. ending of like playing Eris theme on the piano yes. really got me. And like the full orchestra in there, like playing Eris themes, like Tifa playing Eris theme it's for like, her yeah. cat. It's like, it's so sweet. And then like the string quartet does the victory mm-hmm. fanfare afterwards. Yep. Yep. And it just goes Gosh. on. It's so sweet. Uh, Analog Relay uh, says the proto relic story in this chapter is great, but shoving the black robes was absolutely ridiculous. This in a in a game filled with like, are you kidding me? Um, this was this was up there. Like the quest is follow the black robes, and they're just walking along the road at four miles an hour. You and can it's like, well, shove you can, them. <laughs> Questionable. You can shove what does them? not help <laughs> out of the fight. Like I, it was just. Absurd. And my yeah. favorite is then there's a moment where Red 13 just goes like, this is sad. Yeah. And I was like, but then yeah. he, he's like, he was, but he's like, we're not just talking about like, oh, the smell, they're all the same. Yeah. That's yeah. what he was talking yeah. about. But it's like, oh, that's just so bizarre. Uh, the Juan one says, please tell me you guys did the proto relic in Nebel. Um, first, we finally get to see, the, see the fate of Broden, the yep. innkeeper from chapter two. <sighs> Unfortunately, he became one of the robe men. But two, yeah. most importantly, we get the image of Sephiroth and Gilgamesh standing next to each other. That was so weird. That was, yep. that was super weird. Sorry, I jumped the gun on all that. Um, I was uh, seeing the little floaty things around the water, like the little yellow floating item things. Yeah, I was like, did oh, you get a- all those? I was like, oh, that's a cool idea, whatever. And then I was like, oh, crap, of course it's going to be a quest. And so I went back and I got 47, I think. Oh, no. I couldn't find... Did you get them all? I got them all. Is there some hidden spot? I can't... Because I scoured that freaking place. There's some of them that are, you know, how, like the islands have the little areas that you can go in yeah. to. Yep, I got those. And fly around. Yeah, there's some that I thought were hard to spot just by where the camera is positioned. Okay. So it might be worth going back into those areas and just doing like a full 360 when you're floating up in the inside water areas. Right. Right. So, yeah. I got to look around maybe a little bit more, but I got the megaphone for Kate Seth. Okay. The other one was like, I think the final prize was like an earring. I'm like, I don't, yeah. maybe I'm not prioritizing material enough, but like I, the earrings, I haven't really. No, that, yet. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it takes your only accessory slot. So yeah, it seems like I, I accessory, know. you know, yeah, I'll just put that materia on my character yep. and do an accessory that gives yeah. me something that materia can't. Yep. Yep. And I have so many materia slots for like the equipment I'm using at this point. Like the only one that's kind of tempting is yep. I got the Chocobo bangle from that race. And I don't know if you saw that one, but it, it gives, it has like three materia slots, but it uh, builds AP at three times the rate for all materia in that. Right. And so that was the only one I was like, ooh, I should drop down and use that and just have like limited materia, but it's just going to be speed rolling through that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the best way to roll. level up your materia then. Also, I wonder, are they linked? Is there a way you could put the AP booster in there as well? Oh. Just for like, 
six <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> now you're playing Bellatro. <laughs> <laughs> a different game, I guess. Uh, and the big thing, teasing, hey, you can go to this side quest where you can talk to the Chocobo Sage, which it's weird. He's normally later on in the game. Go and oh, talk okay. to him. He's not a floaty purple ghost. He's just not a, a floaty purple ghost. He's just an old man in a yellow robe. Just who's a dickhead. Getting Billy to do his <laughs> chores. Or is there a secret wisdom in this after all? Yeah. Because he trained uh, Sam and Will yeah. back in the day. I kind of got to the end of that quest and thought that there was not a lot of secret wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> he was just really wanted his pool cleaned. Yeah. It's, I did like swimming in his pool. That's like a fun bit oh, of role yeah. playing in it. I just jumped in the pool and like took a lap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but it's fun to, you know, raise him or whatever if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, then at this point, getting back on the tiny Bronco, it's like, uh, we're really, we're really overloaded here. I don't know if we can oh, do it. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, Vincent stepping in and one more. Also, I'm wearing a bunch of metal. I hope that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Cloud then, goes, try to screw us over and you're a dead man. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm just like, Vincent, you're going to say anything about being a dead man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that Sid's just like, this guy bothering you? Want me to give him the boot? <laughs> uh, really. Uh, yeah. And then Sid also, they take off because it shouldn't be possible to carry all those people in one, in one plane. But Sid can do it. And he says, this baby's made by an expert and piloted by a professional. And then the plane's engine explodes. <laughs> yeah. Both of them explode. Yeah. Yeah. First plane. one, then the other. And so Vincent getting on the tiny Bronco made the engines explode. <laughs> That's what we're taking away it's from just, this. It's too much, you know. He's, He's incredibly gotta, dense. He's added so yeah. much weight that the engines can't handle it. I you got to remember so. that Barrett has to take six Gatling guns with him yeah. everywhere that he goes. So, Yeah, I guess. Sure. Uh, and then, yeah, it's not. So in the original game, it did not happen this way. Um, in the original game. No, it didn't. Shinra shoots it down. I'm trying to remember why it crashes. I think Shinra shoots it. I think you're right. I yeah. Think, yeah, Shinra shoots huh. it. Um, yeah. So now it's a completely different game. Not because for... everyone was too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also just weird to have the full party together, like on the plane. It's yeah, so exciting. I know. Having I a know. gossip session, it was kind of, it was really fun. Yeah, I, it was cool. I thought all the interactions were really fun at that point, and the cherry on top of the whole thing was Sid pointing and laughing at Yuffie lying on the ground after the leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we're in chapter 12. Ronnie, what'd you think of chapter 12? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're here. We're here. We're here. Uh, let's see. Uh, How are our relationships doing? I've got red and um, Tifa maxed out. I, I, meaning I, the I, circle is full. I yeah. I, I, I have them all in all of them are in blue right now. Okay. Yeah. Still, yeah. Can I be honest? Is there somewhere in the menu where you can look at this? I see, like when I do something nice, I hit like, L one when you're on the field. Oh, I completely forgot about that. We learned that in Calm. I haven't done that since. Oh, okay. Um, so I should I should actually look at that. Maybe everyone yeah, really yeah. hates me. I have actually been. <laughs> Everyone's just, I just a red and frowny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to to go to Ross's game in another <laughs> universe. Actually, can we go now? <laughs> uh, Joe Chefkinski writes in and says, "If anyone's curious." I looked up what Benison means. Oh, like, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Benison. Planets, Benison of the Planet. Yeah. yeah. It's just a synonym for blessing, it turns out. Oh, okay. In the first three pages of Google results, I only found two references that weren't links to dictionaries or a proper noun. One was to King Lear. The other was to the Beggar's Benison, which is a sex club with branches around Scotland in the 1730s. Hell yeah. Well, Ronnie, you know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> know about it. <laughs> Yes, hello, I'm Ronnie. I'm here to have sex in Scotland in the 1730s, and I'm hoping for a good time. Don't disappoint me. Where do I go for that? Do you think you could successfully have sex in Scotland in the 1730s? <laughs> me? What would that... Yeah. What be like, would that genuinely be like? You guys ever heard of Kate Sith? <laughs> <laughs> no? Kate <laughs> Kiss me, sailor. Um... I, I had really had an epiphany where the item transmutation in this game, I feel like there's so much of basically all like the advanced bangles and all that stuff. It's just a yeah. wall of red. I'm like, should I be doing so I guess I can go try and find this stuff. Like, I feel like I'm not, I'm at level 15, I think, for that stuff. Mm, okay. Do you know what you guys are at for I'm at whatever the max is because I've done <laughs> oh, literally. 14, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of stuff I haven't quite gotten to yet. But. I appreciate that you can just upgrade the bangle as it is already equipped. That is nice. On your, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yep. um, but I my I was trying to get more potions because like the miss potions I do like every once in a while when I don't have oh, in my party for prayer yeah. and stuff. But I kept hitting this roadblock of not having enough sage. And I was like, God, I'm running around trying to find all this sage. 
And then I realized, oh, you can just buy sage from the Chocobo range. Oh, I've just yeah, been yeah. loading up on that. Like, okay, now it's just game on for potions. That's a lot better feeling. Yep, Do yep. you guys have like missed Giga potions yet? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I've missed Mega. Miss Mega. Yeah. Yep. Those are cool. That's a fun idea. Yes. Yep. The Cosmotite you can buy at the Chocobo vendor as well, but it's oh, 10,000 gil mm. yeah okay. so maybe you do want to do that uh, bird flying quest <laughs> <laughs> these these have to be fake names but madam madam m investor 69 writes in <laughs> and says that's we're, me we're pretty far into the game now and i have close to 100k gil i can transmute my own potions and armor all weapons can be found in the world and inns are completely free what is gil for <laughs> <laughs> yet somehow i only have like Usually I'm, I'm I'm between like twenty and fifty thousand. I don't Around know. There, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think exquisite um, beast hides is the answer because you uh, need more of those to uh, transmute stuff than you're going to get in the wild. Yeah. Mm. Um. I I I had one big spending spree where I bought a bunch of Garm bangles. In yeah, Evil Hides. I, they were yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got to the the top of the reactor and they had like the vending machine discounts. Like, come get your Garm bangles. <laughs> like, God damn it, Garm. <laughs> I thought the Hippocratic Oath yeah. was applied to this. Yeah, I know. Do no garm. <laughs> Russ W. Wrightson and says, Having gotten this far into the game, I think it's safe to say that the visuals and presentation in every region are gorgeous from top to bottom. There's a small missed opportunity to not have a day-night cycle in the game, though, just to add to the splendor. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? That there's yeah, no day-night cycle? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, then yeah. we could find out if the gold saucer was actually gold. But we won't be able to. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have Ian S. writes in. says, last session, Ronnie lamented being himself. No, lamented on the apparent <laughs> lack of Klim Hazard and Rebirth. Well, he yeah. should be happy to know that along with other limit breaks, they're all here and are present in Remake. For those curious, uh, he has a whole chart about Klim Hazard, his Ascension, Dolphin Blow, Dolphin Furry. They're all there oh, for level two. Oh, interesting. Okay. He says, those are just the ones that made in the Limit Breaks do not include those who are made regular moves like Braver. Kind of makes me wonder if part three will include slash introduce the OGs level four Limit Breaks. I think that makes sense for yeah for the evolution of how that's going. Barrett, yeah, I'm uh, getting close to you know getting the point where I can unlock the... Uh, level three limit breaks in this game mm. yeah and you know you need to make it to the top of your board yeah mm-hmm. upgrade board but i think those are going to take like two extra notches to activate probably mm. so yeah. it's like you're going to have to do two different synergy abilities um to activate that i think yeah i think it you're right feels like it's yeah. gonna be hard to do yeah uh, i'm in the camp of with that whole foley system i feel like i just need to like reset it's like i i it I haven't been that logical. I was like, oh, HP 200 up. Okay, sure. Uh, attack no, five, whatever. a good one, though. Um, but I, I should probably rebuild that before the end of the game to try and MP optimize a little bit more. MP up by three. Yeah. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. Yeah, there's some really good stuff for, like, Barrett. You can get, like, enters battle with regen. Oh, cast. yes. Absolutely. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's... I was like, this is better than anyone else's yeah. abilities you can get from here. Oh, wow. Um. Hey, I hate to say it, that's it for community questions. Uh, we've hit the bottom of the barrel. Uh, anybody have other thoughts that we haven't hit for chapters 9 through 11? I still don't think Nibelheim is on an ocean in the original game, but maybe I think it it's, apparently it's close because it, it's yeah, got to be close. You get to see the overhead shot here. We're all we're all here, folks. Yeah. Hey. Huge thank you to everybody who played along. Everybody who's watching this far. Huge thank you to everybody who wrote in patreon.com slash minmax with two n's for all the stuff we missed uh this conversation is only possible no other outlets doing this they're all scared this conversation is only possible because it's so unreasonable because people like you watching right now go yeah this is this is a pretty this is a pretty unique form of content oh yeah for covering rebirth so you can support it directly and unlock the podcast version again by going to patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. This is our main thing. This is how we operate as an outlet is folks saying, yeah, I guess that's kind of cool that they're doing this. So again, jump in patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. Jump in the $2 tier to submit a comment for the grand finale. We're collecting your comments April 10th for everything else in the game. We're covering the entire rest of the game. I don't want to say the chapters just in case you want to be surprised about when the game ends. Sure. Okay. Um, but the rest of the game, there's not too much left. Um, but that is going to be April 10th. We're collecting those. And if you are a Patreon supporter at the $5 tier, uh, you also unlock the podcast version of this discussion where we're going to be diving into some spoilers here to talk about the original Final Fantasy VII. So if you want to hear some things to reflect on here through the lens of the original Final Fantasy VII, you can support us on Patreon. Unlock that right now. But as for us, 
hey, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Stay tuned if you're a Patreon supporter, but there's plenty more to talk about, but really appreciate it. Ronnie, how you doing? Good. All right, here we go, folks. Roche. 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 <laughs> Baby's wailing upstairs. <laughs> Did you know that you can more than double the amount of podcasts from MinMax every single week by supporting us at the $5 tier on Patreon? You don't have to listen through the browser or anything dumb like that. You'll get access to a private RSS feed if you support us on Patreon. You put it in your favorite podcast app, and then bam, you can listen to our weekly bonus podcast party chat, the podcast versions of The Deepest Dives, MinMax interviews, Max spoilers, and you get the MinMax show podcast a day earlier than everybody else. So please help support independent games media. Head over to patreon.com slash minmax with two ends.